Hey there, audiobook enthusiasts! Welcome to the audiobook collection. Today's upcoming audiobook is a special shout out to one of our amazing Patreon backers. If you're keen on personalized requests, consider becoming a part of our Patreon community. The link is in the video description below. Your support is truly appreciated, and I'm grateful to have you with me on this exciting audiobook adventure. And hey, if you're looking for a bundle of 300 plus novels, swing by my Kofi shop. For just $35, you can snag a Google Drive link to an audiobook treasure trove. Additionally, if you want to show some love to the original author of this novel, check out the author's credits discreetly provided in the description. Your support makes a difference? Thanks for being part of this literary journey with me. Chapter 71 Chapter 71 After explaining to All Might everything that Luna had uncovered about both Shoto and Bakugo, the number one hero was both horrified about the Todoroki family and stunned by Bakugo's vast past of abuse and bullying. All Might looked down with a frown on his face and sadly sighed to think Enji would do something like this. I know he can be reckless and very brunt but to have abused his family like this over his obsession with me. All Might sadly shook his head. I should have known something like this was going on with you young Midoriya. I'm sorry for not noticing and allowing it to keep going even here in Yudare. Izuku shook his head no you don't have to apologize All Might. Harry has shown me that I myself am to blame for this. I never complained nor did anything to stop him either. I just decided to take it because I foolishly believed that he would make a great hero. Izuku then shook his head but after Harry spoke to me and explained how my mindset didn't make sense when it came to Kukun I realized how wrong I've been about him plus his examples of what a hero should be made me understand that Kukun is just not hero material, as sad as it is but I think that deep down I have always known that Kukun was more of a villain than a hero. All Might nodded to his student and patted his head in support, he then turned towards me and asked what are you planning on doing Harry? I'm sure you just won't stand there and allow these sorts of things to go unpunished. Harry nodded and huffed well Nizo will make sure Shoto gets professional help, that kid needs some serious help to get rid of all that baggage he's carrying, I'll take care of Miss Rei, she doesn't deserve the lot she got in life, then I'll deal with Endeavor soon enough, that bastard will pay for what he has done, if there's one thing I hate the most is child abuse, as for Bakugo well I think having him join the general studies classes after I take his quirk away will do some him so good, if he wants to that is, I really could care no less for what he chooses to do after I'm done with him, all might sighed but nodded nonetheless he then turned to Luna what about young Aoyama? Have you found anything about him Miss Luna? Luna shook her head I'm still investigating but I will tell you this, someone has been manipulating his personal information so that's setting off some very serious red flags, right now I'm looking for his parents but for some reason, they seem to be always traveling out of the country but don't worry I'll find out something soon enough, meanwhile Shoda is keeping an eye on him for anything suspicious. All Might and Nizo nodded, Hermione then hummed and looked up Harry can we have one of the Digimon look for any sort of digital modification done for Aoyama? Harry nodded and then pointed his open hand to the side realize? Ebiman. A Digimon that quite frankly looked very alien-like appeared and then nodded at Harry who smiled Hello Ebiman, can you do me a favor and assist Hermione with anything she might need, stay with her and be her assistant as well, please. Ebiman nodded and then turned towards Hermione who had taken out her cell phone and pointed it at him, Ebiman nodded and then turned into data that flew straight into Hermione's cell phone. Hermione turned her phone over and looked at the screen, Ebiman was right inside the home screen and sitting on top of an app, Hermione smiled I'm looking forward to working with you Ebiman. Ebiman nodded while Nisa chuckled what are you planning Miss Hermione? Hermione turned her head towards Nisa and grinned if someone is modifying personal information then a Digimon might be able to find and track a data trail. I nodded in agreement while Nisa nodded as well I see. That does sound like a good idea, everything is done digitally now of days, so with Ebiman we might be able to find out more information about who and why young Aoyama's personal information has been modified. Everyone nodded and all might turn towards Harry well, what is it that you want to speak with me about Harry? Nisa told me over the phone that you were looking for me. Harry nodded and then sighed, he stayed silent for a couple of seconds trying to organize his thoughts a bit. Today I had Midoriya begin with training with his quirk and learning how to control it. All Might nodded and smiled at Izuka well. Congratulations on reaching this point in your training young Midoriya, I know these few days were really tough on you but you worked really hard. Izuka nodded and smiled at his favorite hero, All Might then turned his head towards Harry but then noticed his frown and got worried Harry, what's wrong? It's a great accomplishment that young Midoriya has reached this step in his training right? Harry nodded yes and I'm very proud of him but I saw something rather disturbing about his quirk and quite frankly I'm a little stumped on what it could be, I've only ever seen something like this in my original world, and only the evilest and darkest of people would do something like this. Now that had everyone's interest and concern, Harry is not one to be easily perturbed but whatever he had seen had bothered him greatly, All Might frowned and then spoke what did you see Harry? What could possibly disturb you this much? Harry frowned and then sighed inside Midoriya's quirk there are seven soul shards who are restricting and somehow controlling the quirk. Both Luna and Hermione gasped in shock upon hearing what Harry just said, both of them are well aware of the implications of someone being a vessel to a soul shard could do to them. Izuku and All Might frowned not understanding the scope of the situation but watching the reactions of Luna and Hermione they could guess that it wasn't anything good. Nisa however was able to somewhat understand some of what all of this could mean. Soul shards? 
That means that inside of one for all there are seven souls or rather seven personalities controlling the quirk. Do they influence the user? Can they take control? Now that was a disturbing thought for both All Might and Izuko who paled upon hearing Nizu's questions, Hermione was the one who answered Nizu a soul shard or otherwise known as Horcrux is some of the evilest type of magic someone can use. Someone using a ritual and the act of murder can rip a piece of their soul and place it in a vessel. This would grant the caster a type of pseudo-immortality but it's magic and as far as we know, no one in this world has the potential to. So how? The soul shards have been known to be able to control or influence others as well or even possess a person. Luna hummed perhaps a quirk? There's quite the variety and types of quirks out there. Who's to say that someone hasn't been born with a quirk that has the ability to rip pieces of their soul and place them inside something else? Harry tiredly sighed I had the same thought as well Luna but seven soul shards? Voldemort went insane splitting his soul that many times, who and why would they even do this? Nisa turned his head toward Harry Voldemort? You mentioned him before, he's the evil wizard who murdered your parents and later came back to life to try and kill you right? Hmm so that's how he was able to survive, I wondered how he was able to do that but since you didn't elaborate I didn't want to push but now, knowing this I can understand why you didn't want to talk about it. Both All Might and Izuko were very concerned about all of this and All Might didn't waste any time asking a question but what does all of this mean for young Midoriya? I've never even knew about this and I'm sure my teacher didn't know either or she would have told me. Harry turned his head towards All Might so you don't know either? Damn. I was hoping you would know something but I guess this must have happened before you and your teacher's time so you wouldn't know. I can easily deal with the soul shards and modify one for all to work without their input but first I think we'll have to talk to the souls inside the quirk, I want to know who they are and what they're doing in there. All Might, Izuku, and Nizo turned to look at each other and nodded in agreement, Izuku stepped forward I trust you Harry sensei and I also want to know what these souls are doing inside my quirk. Harry nodded and turned towards Luna who nodded at him and summoned her keyblade, she then raised it towards the ceiling, Nizo's entire office was then engulfed in darkness, Luna then let her keyblade go and it disappeared in a flash of darkness. Nizo looked around his office in curiosity, seeing this Hermione answered his unasked question it's a special type of barrier made out of pure darkness, if the souls try to escape and touch the barriers they will be consumed by its element. Nizo nodded I see, better safe than sorry huh? Hermione smiled while Harry then spoke, alright I'm going to rip the soul shards out of one for all so get ready just in case everyone. Everyone nodded and stood ready for anything, Harry closed his eyes for a second and brought up his hand best you relax and try to keep calm Midoriya, what I'm about to do, might look extreme but I promise that you will be safe. Izuku nodded and stared at Harry with eyes full of conviction and trust, Harry grinned at his student and then suddenly pushed his hand inside his chest, all might tensed for a second but Izuku just rose an eyebrow huh? That feels weird. Harry chuckled as he grabbed hold of one for all, he was a bit surprised that the quirk actually fought him a bit but Harry squeezed tightly and then pulled it out. The room was then suddenly engulfed in a rainbow colored light for a few seconds until the light then settled down on the orb in Harry's hand, all might and Izuku stared in awe at the orb that represented their quirk while Harry placed two fingers on top of the orb. Suddenly he pulled his fingers away and seven orbs of light were suddenly pulled out of the orb containing one for all. The orbs of light flew around Nisa's office in a panic and actually tried to fly back to the orb but Harry quickly slapped them away causing the orbs to slam against the floor and then take on humanoid forms. Suddenly the orbs became semi-transparent people who were on the floor groaning in pain from Harry's slaps, however, one of the souls caught the attention of All Might causing him to suddenly yell out Nana Sensei. Harry frowned and stopped All Might from approaching Nana Shimura with a raised hand. He then turned his head to the souls in the name of my title as Master of Death, I Harry James Potter order you souls of the departed to stand up and not move. All seven soul shards immediately stood up ramrod straight though some of them struggled a bit. Harry then placed his hand on one for all and began to modify it for Izuka's use. One of the souls and a young man with white hair and green eyes suddenly yelled out stop. You can't do that. But Harry just ignored him and began to change one for all whom it seems like the quirk can actually kill its users if it is transferred to someone who already has a quirk so let's get rid of that, then. Oh there are multiple quirks in here, jackpot? Let's just unlock all of those, then I'll add perfect control to help you control all of these new quirks plus my blessing as a dragon god for good measure, and done. Harry then smiled at the orb containing one for all and then pushed it inside Izuka's chest, Izuka's eyes widened as he suddenly felt and got all the info he needed to know about his quirk. The green-haired teen suddenly activated his quirk and began to easily move around while engulfing his entire body in energy and green lightning bolts. Harry grinned at his student and nodded looks like we can skip training to control it now and we can focus on the fun stuff, I hope you are ready Midoriya. Izuk stopped moving and nodded at his sensei. Now that he can fully control his quirk he was very excited to learn to use all of the new quirks he got and to learn how to fight with Harry. Harry then turned towards the souls who couldn't do anything but watch as Harry changed and modify how one for all worked, the young man who had spoken suddenly did so again what have you done? This quirk is the only thing that can defeat all for one, Izuku isn't ready for its full power yet. Harry frowned and then walked up to the young man and glared at him the dead have no say in the actions of the living, why were you and these other six souls inside one for all? 
Six of the souls frowned and glared at Harry refusing to answer his questions. Nana Shimura however just stayed silent. In all honesty, she thought it was a good idea to explain everything to Izuku rather than wait for later but she was outvoted by the rest of the souls. Harry stared at the souls for a few seconds and then closed his eyes so you refuse to speak? No matter I'll get the information I need from you one way or the other, I don't need you to speak. Harry then placed an open hand in front of his face, and a strange and suffocating pressure began to hit the souls, Luna and Hermione knowing what Harry was about to do immediately created shields around All Might, Izuko, and Nizo to protect them from Harry's increasing spiritual pressure. Suddenly Harry clawed down his face and a white dragon-like mask formed on his face causing the soul shards to widen their eyes in both shock and fear. Harry then let out a terrifying howl full of malice that actually made All Might and Izuko take a step back, Nizo's eyes widen and he actually jumped out of his seat. Harry then stopped howling and grabbed hold of the soul shard of the white-haired young man and proceeded to devour it savagely to the shock of Nizu, All Might, and Izuko. After eating the soul shard Harry stood up straight and sighed releasing a stream of steam from his mouth as he began to go through all the memories he got from the soul shard. I see, Yoichi Shigaraki, the first wielder of one for all, and the rest of its past wielders, to think that all for one would have created his biggest enemy, by giving his little brother a quirk, how ironic. All Might and Nizo instantly turned their heads towards the still unable to move soul shards in surprise but Harry went on their job, was to make sure All for One was unable to take one for all, and grant their quirks to the next user if he was compatible enough, but they're no longer needed, and most of them had been dead for many, many years. Harry then moved his eyes towards the soul shards who tremble upon staring at his yellow eyes surrounded with a deep black you souls will no longer intervene with the living. All for One will die, but you will not burden my student with your so-called fate, be gone into the afterlife. Five of the souls grunted and looked like they were struggling to fight whatever was happening to them until they suddenly screamed in pain and began to fall apart in small bright white lights. Nana Shimura closed her eyes and waited for the pain but when she didn't feel anything she slowly opened them and took a look around, she saw Harry place a hand over his mask and then grip it tightly until it began to crack and then shattered. The ominous pressure that had befallen her suddenly disappeared and she was once again able to breathe easily, she then saw the other two girls wave their hands, and the barriers protecting Toshinori and the ninth shattered along the one protecting the big rat bear thing behind the desk. She then watched the young man who had just eaten the first tiredly side and then move his gaze towards her making her flinch. I saw your life within Yoichi Shigaraki Nana Shimura. You were a good kind woman who made many sacrifices to be a good hero. You died before your time because of all for one, so I'll let you say goodbye to your student and stick around for a while. Harry then turned his head towards Izuku let's go kid, there's a lot we have to train you on now that you have full control of one for all. Izuku nodded and Luna then wave a hand taking down the dark barrier that she had put up over Nizu's office, Harry turned towards her and Hermione and gave them a smile I'll see you, girls, at home later. He then turned towards Nizu and gave him a grin I'll take care of Bakugo today so you can move him to the general classes if you want starting tomorrow. Nizu nodded and grinned back at Harry, then the dragon god began to walk over to All Might and slapped his back hard causing him to grunt in pain go talk to your teacher, I'm sure there's a lot both of you want to talk about and don't worry about time, I'll let her stay in this world for a few days so enjoy. All Might teared up a bit and nodded thankful for this chance to speak with his teacher, Harry then began to walk towards the door with Izuku following close behind. Nana was speechless, she didn't understand why she was given this chance but a giggle caught her attention and she turned towards where it came from, Luna smiled at her and then said you look so confused Miss Nana, Harry must have seen something he liked about you from the memories of that guy's soul he ate so just enjoy your time in this world. Nana nodded and then sighed I am thankful it's just, he's scary as all hell. Hermione, Luna, and Nizo laughed at the fact that Harry had terrified what amounts to a ghost, Hermione then spoke up next sorry about Harry but when it comes to souls of the dead he takes his title very seriously. Nizo hummed you mean what he said when he ordered the souls not to move? I believe he said something about the master of death, I believe you also mentioned that during class 1A's test right? Hermione nodded and Luna then spoke that title is quite literal you know? He's the master of everything that pertains to death, he quite literally has control over the conceptual being known as death as well, that's why those souls couldn't move after he had ordered them not to. Nizu nodded and Hermione then spoke up again he can also manipulate everything that has to do with the soul, I believe that's how he's able to modify quirks, you know Miss Nana if you ask nicely he might bring you back to life as well, I don't think he would say no even though he doesn't like to bring back people who had been dead for a long time. Nana hummed and looked up in thought I'll think about it, what he said to the rest of the past wielders makes a lot of sense to me, the dead have no business with the living. All Might then steps forward to his teacher Nana Sensei, Nana turned her head towards All Might and grinned at him why the long face Toshinori, have you forgotten what I taught you? you have to always smile. All Might chuckled and then nodded I haven't forgotten, there's a lot I have to say to you Nana Sensei but I think we should go see Gran Torino too though. Nana smiled and nodded that sounds like a good idea, maybe I'll give the old man a heart attack. All Might chuckled and shook his head let's try not to do that, he might actually die if we do, but by the grin that Nana had on her face, All Might knew she wasn't going to listen to him but he couldn't help but smile at his sensei while Luna, Hermione, and Nisa smiled at the fact that both of them seemed to be having fun. 
Harry took Izuka back to the training room and began his next seven months of training under the time dilation of the room. One month passed during that one hour Izuko spent with Harry and he had made quite an improvement in using his new quirks and learning a more specialized fighting style. Of course that same day during his time with Class 1A's lesson time, Izuka was very nervous, he knew that as soon as Harry stepped through the door and into the classroom Kukin's dream will be over and he just didn't know how everything would go down. Suddenly the bell rung and Shota-sensei stepped inside along with Harry, Shota sighed and then spoke up Bakugo, our background investigation on you has shown us that not only are you not mentally stable for hero work but you also have some very disturbing villain-like tendencies, you will be taken out of the hero course and if you so wish you can be placed on the general courses. Everyone in the class gasped and Katsuki stood up completely enraged what? What the fuck do you mean I'll be taken out of the hero course? I deserve my place here. Harry stepped forward and Katsuki actually flinched you have abused your quirk, you have actually used it to harm those that couldn't protect themselves at the time, and what's worse, you don't even understand what you did wrong, you're not a hero Bakugo and you never will be. Katsuki stood up and growled at Harry in rage fuck off, asshole, what do you know, you're nothing but a loser who can't recognize talent. Harry narrowed his eyes and then disappeared in a blur and appeared right in front of Katsuki, the ash blonde teen twitched and then looked down only to see Harry have his entire arm inside his chest. Everyone except Harry's personal students panicked but Shota suddenly yelled silence, and no one move. Harry then pulled his arm out of Katsuki and in his hand was now a bright red orb, Katsuki gasped and fell down on his butt looking up at Harry in shock. Harry then put the orb inside his inventory and glared down at Katsuki let's see how much talent you have now that you no longer have your precious quirk. Harry then turned around and Katsuki finally snapped, he stood up and roared while pointing his hands towards Harry fully intending to blast him to pieces d. But nothing happened shocking not only Katsuki but the entire class, suddenly Katsuki realized what Harry's words meant, and with crazed eyes, he stared at his hands why you, what did you do? Harry turned his head and gazed at Katsuki I took your quirk away, now leave I'm about to begin my lesson, and quite frankly you no longer belong here. Katsuki just stood there frozen while Harry walked to the front of the class alright everyone today we're going to the USJ to do teamwork exercises now let's go, the bus is waiting. He then turned to Shota let's go Shota, we have a lot to do today. Shota nodded, Harry then stepped through the door while the class followed behind in silence, Shota then turned his head towards Bakugo and spoke at first I thought Harry was being too harsh but then I found out about the abuse you put Midoriya through, if it were up to me, you would have been sent to jail on criminal charges Bakugo especially since you attacked fellow classmates with your quirk but Nizu already put you on the general courses, as of right now you no longer have a place in this class. Shota then began to walk towards the doorway and then suddenly stopped, he then turned his head and gazed at Bakugo I don't want to see you here when we come back. With that said Shota left the classroom and Bakugo just stood there staring at his hands in shock, he could no longer feel his quirk nor summon up the all too familiar explosive sensation that he would feel when he uses it. On the way to the USJ both Harry and Shota explained to their students exactly what was going on and told them exactly why this has happened to Katsuki, of course, they kept Izuka's name out of the explanation. Needless to say that all the students were shocked about everything Bakugo had done in the past was an understatement. Pretty much everyone couldn't believe that someone as talented and strong as Bakugo could be so cruel to others, especially to those who couldn't defend themselves. The rest of the day everyone was down and somewhat still in shock so Harry and Shota for the first time ever went easy on class 1A. After school, Harry left his students in the hands of Luna since Harry had something else to take care of today, of course, this left his students quite scared because they had trained with Luna before and despite being so sweet and caring, in battle she was very merciless. So Harry left his students in the care of Luna while they begged him not to go all the while the Master of Darkness smiled at them with an overly sweet and sinister smile. Rei Todoroki was sitting up on her bed and looking out a window with a sad expression on her face, she was feeling very lonely right now and was missing her children but she knew that there was no way to go see them and even if she could she knew she didn't deserve to see them, not when she couldn't protect them from their father. So she had no choice but to just sit here wondering what her sons and daughter were up to right now and hope that they were happy. Suddenly a pillar of jet darkness erupted from the ground startling her, from the deep darkness stepped out a tall young man with black hair and the brightest green eyes she has ever seen, so bright in fact that they look like they were glowing in the dark of her room. Harry looked down at Rei and stared at her in silence for a few seconds feeling bad for her, Rei however seemed to draw to some weird conclusions. Are you the devil? Are you here to take me to hell? Harry frowned and stared into Rei's grey eyes I am known as a demon lord but no miss Rei, I'm not here to take you to hell, you don't belong there, I'm here to give you your freedom back, my name is Harry Potter. Rei stared at Harry in silence for a long time until she suddenly spoke again but, I don't deserve freedom, I hurt my son Shoto, and I couldn't protect Toya either I dash. Rei then broke down in front of Harry and began to sob, Harry feeling bad for the poor woman stepped forward and patted her back no miss Rei none of that is your fault, everything is the fault of Enji Todoroki but don't worry, he'll get what's coming to him soon enough and you'll be able to meet with your children, I know everything that happened and I can assure you that none of it is your fault. Rei continued to sob but nodded letting Harry know she heard him, Harry stayed there soothing and accompanying Rei as she finally vented all the emotions she had been forced to bottle up for so long. 
After a while REI was able to finally calm down and she then turned towards Harry what do you mean by giving me back my freedom, and that NG will get what's coming to him? He's practically untouchable, he's the number two hero you know. Harry smiled at the white-haired woman and began to explain Niza the principal of UA will allow you to hide out in the academy in my house actually, so you'll be staying with me, my girlfriends and daughter at least until I take care of NG. REI nodded and Harry went on I will personally punish NG Todoroki, I could care less that he's the number two hero or about his reputation, he going to pay for what he's done, I hate child abuse and what he has done is just monstrous. REI widened her eyes in shock and surprise, she then frowned when she realized something you were abused as a child, is that why you want to help me and my children? Harry nodded yes my childhood wasn't a good one, luckily someone extended their hand to me and I was able to change my life, now I have a big and loving family, sure there's a lot of chaos and craziness going on when we're together but I wouldn't change it for anything in the world. The way Harry smiled when he said that told REI that he loved his family very dearly, she hadn't missed the fact that he said girlfriends not girlfriend but she wasn't surprised, harems were somewhat normal but all of this told her that Harry genuinely wanted to help her how are you going to make NG pay? Harry grinned at REI and began to speak I'm going to beat the shit out of him and then take his quirk away. REI stared up at Harry with wide eyes but how? He's very strong you know? He's the number two hero for a reason. Harry nodded and then spoke up well since you're going to be living with us for a while I might as well explain what I am, I wouldn't want you to panic when you see me do something crazy. So Harry told REI everything, what he is, the world he came from, his powers, the supernatural, and the fact that he was the most powerful being in this world right now. REI listened intently and even though everything Harry told her sounded impossible, the fact that she couldn't see any indication that Harry was lying made her accept what he was telling her a dragon god, a real dragon like in the myths of old. Harry nodded and chuckled you sound like my daughter when she found out that I'm a dragon, she's particularly fond of my dragon form too, and always asked me to give her a ride. REI for the first time smiled, since she was little she was always fond of fantasy stories, especially ones that had dragons on them, she had once used her quirk to try to imitate a dragon's fire breathing though she ended up blowing snow and ice instead. Harry grinned at her when he noticed she looked very excited do you want to ride on my back? I can take you back to UA that way. REI turned her head towards Harry and was about to agree but then she remembered why she was in this psychiatrist's ward I don't think I should. Harry stood up and then turned towards REI I know you feel guilty and you blame yourself for what happened to Shoto but that wasn't your fault, I'm making sure Shoto gets some help as well and I'm helping you myself once both of you are ready you'll be able to see each other, Shoto does go to UA you know. REI got excited about the fact that she will be able to see her son and nodded at Harry, she decided that she'll put her trust in Harry and my other son and daughter. Harry smiled Niza will inform them where you are once I deal with NG, they'll be able to visit you anytime they want. REI nodded and then got out of bed, she then walked up to Harry then okay I'll leave with you Harry, I'll trust you, and I want a ride. Harry chuckled when she saw that REI was blushing and nodded at her he then reached a hand over to her and grabbed her shoulder. Suddenly REI found herself high in the sky, she panicked a bit but she noticed that she was floating in the air, and calmed down, she then turned towards Harry who grinned and then took on his dragon form. REI then stared in shock at the massive gold and silver dragon in front of her, Harry suddenly telekinetically moved her and sat her on his back. Harry then spread his wings and with a big flap he took off flying towards Yue with his passenger watching the sky in excitement, down below in the city, everyone looked up to the sky when they noticed a massive dragon flying in the clouds. Heroes and civilians, all looked up in shock and pointed at them but both Harry and REI who was having fun didn't care and just continued to enjoy their trip toward UA. Chapter 72, Chapter 72 After Harry returned to his home with REI, Luna immediately began to help the poor woman with her trauma and unstable mind, using legilimency she slowly and carefully helped REI move on from her guilt and painful memories. It won't be an easy or fast process but with Luna and Harry helping her go through all her bad memories and the good company of the people living in Harry's house REI Todoroki will eventually recover and move on. Harry got very attached to REI and the little bundle of cuteness would spend a lot of time with REI who was more than delighted to play and speak with her, both Luna and Harry knew that instinctively both Harry and REI must know that they had suffered a lot, as a result, they seemed to want to help each other. This was good because both would be able to support each other, Nizu also visited that night and met with REI to let her know that as long as she lives in Harry's house and in UA grounds, Endeavor won't be able to ever get to her. This made REI relax and tear up in relief, Nizu also told her that Shoto will be going to therapy as well in order to get him the help he needs and that he will be moving into the UA dorms to get him away for Endeavor. This, of course, made REI very happy and even though she still thought that she didn't deserve it she still wishes to be able to see her son someday. Harry told her that once he dealt with Endeavor and Shoto felt ready, he himself will bring him over to meet with her, of course, he will also be informing both her other son and daughter where she is after Endeavor no longer poses a threat. REI couldn't express how happy she was and just hugged Harry and Airy while crying, Harry just patted her back and let her vent while Airy hugged her tightly. 
Himiko also got somewhat attached to REI but like a cat, she just gets close whenever she wants attention, but REI is happy to just let her do her thing, Luna, Susan, and Hermione were doing everything they could to make sure REI felt safe and had everything she needed and this included showing her what they could do so she would know that nothing will ever happen to her while they're around. The poor personal students of Harry had the pleasure read misfortune to face these three members of Kyoto's elite squad and boy did they hate every second of it. Luna, Susan, and Hermione are kind and gentle women but when they battle they were merciless and Harry's student had to be healed of many injuries after facing them. REI was very impressed and thankful for the way everyone was very supportive of her. This is how REI Todoroki began to live with Harry Potter and the girls and for the first time in a very long time, she felt safe and secure. The days went on as usual as Harry focused on his personal students to prepare them for the sports festival, especially Izuka who had a lot to learn and many quirks to adapt to now. His classroom lessons moved on as always though the class was still a bit shocked by Katsuki's sudden removal from the hero course. Two days after this had happened Katsuki's mother appeared and demanded to know why her son's quirk was removed, Harry, Nizo, and Shota showed her all the evidence of what her son had done. But the thing that had hit Mitsuki Bakugo the hardest was the fact that her son had told Izuko to jump off a building so he could be reborn and hopefully get a quirk then. Mitsuki had known Izuko since he was a toddler and she couldn't believe her son would be this cruel to one of his friends much less another human being and that was only the tip of the iceberg. Her son had used his quirk to harm not only breaking the law but also doing something a villain would have done. Nizo and Shota told her that Katsuki was lucky they didn't arrest him, or worse, Harry could have decided to punish him more harshly. So Mitsuki left Yue disappointed and heartbroken about what her son had done and now she didn't know if she could ever face her friend Inko ever again. Katsuki ended up being forced to attend the general courses by Mitsuki while Nizo forced him to go to therapy to try to get him out of that toxic mentality he seems to have. Not that Harry expected all of that to do any good, to him Katsuki seemed like the type of person who would never change unless something forces him to but in the end, it's not like Harry cares if he changes or not. A couple of days later class 1A got a bunch of unexpected visitors who actually blocked the doorway, who were they? Well, the class of 1B and some general course students decided to check out the competition. However Izuku, Okako, Momo, Suyu, Eijiro, Mina, and Toru had extra lessons with Harry and didn't want to be late so they tried to pass through but no one wanted to get out of their way. Even Pony, Ibera, and Kainoko tried to help their friends in training but they couldn't do anything about their classmates who didn't want to move out of the way. Too bad that Harry decided to go get his students since he wanted to talk about some new techniques that he wanted to teach them, only to be blocked by a bunch of students. So he waited a bit and patiently listened to everything that was said, he finally had enough after Niato Minoma, Tetsu 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 and another kid he has never seen before who looked like he needed a nap desperately mouth off to his students who were trying to pass through. So Harry waved his hand and pushed everyone away from the doorway with a telekinetic push which caused the students to all become a pile of limbs and grunts of pain. Harry then spoke up loud and clear to everyone instead of wasting time standing here everyone should go and train, the sports festival is soon approaching, grow up, and stop acting like cocky children. Harry then turned to his students and nodded at them, he then turned around and began to walk away with his students following close behind, the rest of the students who were blocking the door could only groan in pain after such an aggressive push. The rest of class 1A just sweat dropped and silently left having already gotten used to the way Harry was, besides their sensei had the right idea about training and all of them had been doing so already. Another change was the spirit of Nana Shimura roaming around the campus and scaring the living days light out both the students and teachers alike, not that it was her intention to scare anyone, she just has a tendency to forget that she's a ghost. Even All Might had been jumped scared at times when Nana would visit him during his classes to watch him teach, resulting in the number one hero screaming in surprise when she would appear out of nowhere. No one judged him for that since they all have been scared by Nana at least once except Harry who always seemed to know where she was at all times, Harry had also met Nana and to her surprise, the young girl was able to touch her and interact with her. This allowed Nana to hang out and play with Eri, at times both of them would roam around the school to watch what was going but no one minded Eri since she's a very well behaved girl. The days went on and a day before the sports festival would begin Harry had gathered every one of his personal students inside the time dilation training room, to give them one more final test before tomorrow's trial. Everyone was very nervous, they all knew why Harry gathered them up and even though they have been training hard these past two weeks they still didn't feel like they made that much progress. Still, everyone decided to do their best and try to come on top, in whatever test their sensei will have them do, Harry, of course, noticed this and smiled at his students alright everyone, I see that all of you are ready for today, now for this test, I'll be taking off the gravity charm on you guys, this way you'll fight at 100%. Everyone widened their eyes since they had forgotten that Harry had placed them under a gravity spell at the beginning of their training so when Harry waved a hand they immediately felt the difference, Izuka stretched and cracked his bones oof I feel so light. Harry grinned at his students as he watched them jump a bit and run a few times around the area, this reminded him of the time when he trained with both Gaku and Krillin under Master Rashi. 
After letting his students get used to their new lighter weight Harry then spoke up Okay today you'll be facing Luna, this time however she'll be facing everyone as the master of darkness, you guys have faced Luna before, sure but she wasn't being serious with any of you and you were also facing Susan and Hermione at the same time, needless to say, that this time everything is going to be different is an understatement. Everyone gulped, the fact that they now knew that Luna was holding back during their fight against all three of Harry's girlfriends made everyone very nervous, that day was hell for everyone but it seems that today it was going to be worse. Harry chuckled because he can tell everyone was afraid and they should be, Luna was terrifying when she was fighting as the master of darkness, she could do things with the dark element that even he himself couldn't do you have 5 minutes to prepare and plan. His students nodded and immediately gathered around Izuku to plan how they were going to face Luna, Harry fondly smiled at them but turned his head to the side when he felt a dark corridor open beside him. Out of the pillar of darkness came out Luna, Nizu, All Might, Nana, and Hermione who had decided to come and watch how much have Harry's students improved. Harry smiled at his girlfriends and friends hello everyone, came to watch the test I see. Nisa grinned and nodded I couldn't miss this chance to see the results of your training methods plus I am curious as to how powerful young Luna really is. Nana just cheerfully smiled and said, I want to see how much Izuku has improved. All Might nodded letting everyone know that he also came to see how much Izuku has improved. Luna giggled and shrugged, Among Kyoto's elite squad I'd say I'm about the fourth strongest just for the fact that I have complete and total control of the element of darkness. Hermione hummed and then nodded that makes sense. I think the other three would be Milim, Erish Giggle and then Jean, Milim because she was already frighteningly powerful before arriving in our world but after training and receiving skills from Harry she had become a literal monster, the fact that she's a Dragonoid and a Demon Lord just proves that, Erish Giggle is a goddess of death and has learned everything Harry knows and Jean can wield cosmic fire and can still access the Phoenix Force from Hope. All Might, Nana, and Nisa seemed confused but Luna explained further Milim is another member of Harry's harem, one of the original three, in her world she had already lived for thousands of years and has access to some very unique and powerful skills, skills that were already capable of destroying continents in a blink of an eye, now she can destroy solar systems with a wave of a hand. Both All Might, Nana, and Nisa gaped while Luna went on Erish Giggle is a goddess of death, one powerful enough to bring calamities to the world and that was before she started to be prayed to by everyone in Kyoto, she also took it upon herself to learn everything Harry knows, something no one can boast to ever try, she's also a member of Harry's harem. Nisa, Nana, and All Might were just stunned at all the information they were receiving while Luna continued on not caring about the mental condition of her friends and Jean was originally a very powerful telepath and telekinetic but having an ancient cosmic force sealed in her granted her some very amazing abilities. Among those abilities there is the ability to manipulate cosmic fire which is one of the hottest types of flames in existence, she can also breathe in the vacuum of space and is capable of incinerating entire planets, now she's far more powerful thanks to Harry's training. All Might and Nizo turned to stare at Harry while Nana giggled, Harry then raised an eyebrow at them confused by their stares what? Both male adults sweat dropped but it was All Might who was the one who answered Harry's questions my friend, you either have the biggest balls I've ever seen on a man or you're too stupid to want to be in a relationship with these girls, they're scary Harry. Hermione and Luna giggled because it was true, each and every girl in Harry's harem was terrifying, Harry just sighed you make it sound like I had any choice, to begin with, at first it was just three and before I knew it the harem just grew and never stopped, all of them just decided to jump in but, I do love them all, both Luna and Hermione blushed but smiled, all the girls in Harry's harem just sorta forced themselves into the harem and ambushed the original three when they met them so they would be allowed in but thankfully everything worked out and their home is full of loving and caring people. Sure there's chaos and destruction all the time in their house but they are a family and they wouldn't have it any other way plus they all knew Harry loves them all, no matter how quirky and extreme the girls in his life are. Both Nizo and All Might nodded while Nana just grinned at the girls and said oh so you girls tamed the dragon god huh? Both Hermione and Luna turned their head toward each other and stared into each other eyes until they began to laugh confusing Nana, All Might, and Nizo. Luna then stopped laughing and said, no none of us have tamed Harry hee hee, that achievement belongs to Morgan, Hope, Himawari, Yuzo, Karen, Samire and now Eri. Harry would literally give them the world if they ask. Harry blushed a bit but didn't deny anything Hermione shook her head and smiled those girls are his sisters, niece, and daughters, it's quite adorable how protective he is with them or how much he spoils them. Nizu, All Might, and Nana grinned at Harry who just huffed and rolled his eyes just wait until you meet them, I want to see any of you not fall to their cuteness. All three laughed not knowing how truthful Harry was about those girls, some of them could tame the hearts of almost anyone, at first sight, especially Morgan, and Hope, those two were dangerous because of their cuteness alone. After laughing and having a bit more fun at Harry's expense for a little while longer, Nisa then walked up to Harry's side and spoke as he watched the kids discuss their plans how do you think they'll do. Harry moved his gaze towards Nizo and then moved it back to his students they're obviously not going to win but this test is for them to see what they're capable of now, all of them have been training inside this training room with a time dilation of 1 hour equals a month for 2 weeks, while being under the influence of a gravity spell that increases as they adapt to the new increased gravity, right now physically they're the strongest humans in the world and can even outmatch all might in, his prime just with their new physical prowess and new fighting styles.
Nisa nodded in understanding while Nana and All Might widened their eyes in shock upon hearing that the kids that Harry was training were capable of beating All Might in his prime now. Harry however went on all they're missing is actual experience with hero work, battle experience I can provide with the help of the girls, and I, myself constantly fighting them forcing them to adapt and learn while facing someone way out of their league, it's actually quite funny how they don't seem to understand or even imagine the sort of strength they wield now, especially Izuka who has been training for an extra hour with me in the mornings every day. Nisa hummed and stared at the kids for a long minute in silence what do you recommend? Harry closed his eyes to think for a while but then spoke up right after after the sports festival you said that the students will go and work under a hero agency right? Nisa nodded while both Nana and All Might turned to them to pay attention I see, then after that I'll be taking them and the rest of the class into the instant dungeons and give them missions to fulfill to help them grow and get more experience fighting big numbers of enemies, so I want you to choose a couple of teachers to go in the dungeons with them to supervise them while I control the instant dungeons. Nisa nodded and seemed very intrigued about what Harry was planning this will be sort of VR training no. Harry opened his eyes and turned to look at Nizo in a way, however, they can get hurt or even die in the dungeons. Nana and All Might gasped, Nana then spoke isn't that sort of harsh? Their kids remember. Harry nodded I know but they chose this path, unlike my friends who became heroes through tears, blood, and pain they chose to want to be heroes and I'll make sure they're prepared for anything this world could ever throw at them. Nana and All Might frowned but they understood why Harry was doing this, Nizo nodded alright, it's better that this sort of situation happens here where we can help them go through them and learn from them than out there once they start doing full on hero work. Both Nana and All Might nodded in agreement to both Nisa's words and Harry's sentiment, it might seem harsh or even cruel but Harry was preparing the kids to be the best they could be, he wants them to be ready for anything in this hard path they chose to walk. Harry stared at his students while thinking back on everyone he knew who was a hero, each and every one one of them were put in that position to be heroes and they bled, cried, and died to protect their world and their loved ones, some of them had some very harsh lives and they still chose to fight and protect. But with the exception of Izuka, none of his students had a harsh life, they all live happy and cheerful lives without any tragedy, they were completely unprepared for how cruel the path they have chosen can be, and that's why he's going to help them get stronger and stronger, just like he did with Kyoto and the Avengers he'll make sure they're ready for anything. Though he will also make sure they rest and have a lot of fun, he was a master of the turtle school of martial arts and like Master Rashi once taught him he will make sure his students work hard, study well, and eat and sleep plenty, that's the turtle hermit way to learn after all. After five minutes have passed by, Harry stepped up to his students and smiled at them are you guys ready? The young heroes in training nodded, even though they were nervous and even a bit scared they felt ready to face anything Luna might throw at them, Harry nodded back at them alright then all I can say right now is do your best, cover each other's back and don't hold back. With that said Harry walked away and Luna stepped up to the front of Harry's personal students, she turned her gaze towards each and every one of them, she then closed her eyes, and held out her hand. In a flash of pure black darkness her keyblade end of pain appeared on her hand, causing all the students to actually flinch, Izuka frowned since he had never seen Luna use that weapon before what is that? She didn't use anything like that before. Suya gulped and then said, it looks like a key Kuro, there's something wrong about it too. Ibera stepped up next to Izuka there's this dark feeling to it, it's hard to explain but just looking at it gives off this dangerous vibe. Izuka nodded, Momo stared at the weapon and hummed I wasn't even aware that Luna had a weapon but what is it? I don't think I've ever seen anything like it. Himiko sighed that's a keyblade, Harry, and the girls showed it to Eri the other day, from their explanations all I got was that they're sentient magical weapons. Okako turned her head towards Himiko Harsensei has a keyblade as well. Himiko nodded too actually but unlike Luna who is the master of darkness, Harry has the title of master of twilight, Hermione then told me that another girl in Harry's world has the title of master of light. Ajiro fist pumped how manly? Those titles sound so cool, I wonder if I can get a title like that someday. Mina nodded vigorously it would be cool but just what exactly does it mean to be a master of light, darkness, and twilight? Pony hummed maybe they can freely manipulate those elements. Kainoko shook her head I don't think so, if it was just that then they would have been called the master of elements, I've seen them use more than just those three elements. Toru tilted her head that's right, last time we fought the girls they were blasting us with all kinds of elements, Harry too, when he fought us he used water and lightning. Izuka shook his head maybe it is symbolic, anyways that's not important right now guys, we have to prepare to react to whatever she might do, with that weapon out we just don't know what she can do now. Everyone nodded, Luna just giggled and smiled at them are you guys done? Next time don't talk too much in battle, some people might not give you the courtesy of waiting while you hash things out. Everyone sweat dropped but nodded in agreement, they really shouldn't have done that, Luna continued to smile and then opened her eyes. However everyone gasped when they saw that Luna's grey eyes had turned yellow, Luna's smile never left as she rose her keyblade above her head. End of pain then began to glow in darkness and Luna's shadow began to grow, from it a bunch of small ant-like creatures began to sprout off of her shadow causing the young student to grow nervous. Luna then pointed her keyblade toward the young heroes in training and the small ant-like creatures launched themselves at them causing each and every of Harry's personal students to jump away in a hurry to avoid the flood of dark creatures. 
Izuku activated his quirk in midair using his newly developed technique he named full cowling, engulfing his body in 15% of one for all, green lightning enveloped his body, and as soon as he landed on the ground he disappeared in a flash of green lightning. He reappeared above the ant-like creatures and yelled dynamic entry he then came down with a flying kick that crashed on top of a dark creature. As soon as Izuku's kick collided with one of the dark creatures his attack exploded in a green lightning storm taking out some of the creatures around him. Harry chuckled because he had trained Izuku in the strong fist style and Izuku took the style like a fish in water. Thankfully he didn't inherit the flames of youth otherwise a lot of people might be traumatized in this world. Back in Kanaha both Lee and Guy were training together, and suddenly both of them stopped what they were doing Guy sensei? Someone out there has begun their path to the flames of youth. Guy nodded and then threw a thumbs up towards the sun whoever you are, go and fan those flames into a burning inferno of youth. After the lightning storm subsided, Izuku immediately moved and ran at full speed toward Luna. The master of darkness smiled and waved her keyblade toward Izuku. The rest of the ant-like creatures immediately reacted and got in the way of Izuku's path but then both Himiko and Momo appeared beside Izuku and nodded at him. Izuku grinned and let them get ahead behind them Okako was standing with both of her arms outstretched while Eijiro was in front of her, Luna noticed them and immediately understood what they did him so Okako got rid of their gravity and Eijiro threw them so they could get ahead of Izuku, that looked kind of fun hehe. <laughs> both Momo and Himiko landed right in front of the creatures and began to attack as fast as they could to clear a path for Izuku, Himiko moved fast, slicing and dicing every ant-like creature before her. Momo as soon as she landed waved both arms wide and released a big number of grenades that immediately exploded on impact flash freezing the dark creatures, it seems like she was able to create cryo grenades now. Izuku just ran through them and shattered them reaching Luna within a second, he then jumped and span a few times at high speed and then unleashed a devastating spin kick toward Luna's head. But Luna blocked it with end of pain however the impact pushed her back a bit but Luna then used the momentum made by Izuku's attack to spin on her toes and dodged Toru who had turned invisible and was about to sneak attack Luna with a kunao made out of light. Luna then kicked Toru away and immediately crouched to avoid a high-speed water wave from Tsuyu, however, Luna was then forced to roll forward to avoid Ibarra's vines from catching her from below. It was here that both Izuku, Mina, and Pony attacked her while she was rolling forward hoping to score a hit, that was how Luna found herself about to be hit by a pair of horns, a glob of acid, and an air cannon. But Luna's just sweetly smiled and stabbed the ground with her dark keyblade unleashing a pillar of pure black darkness that consumed the attacks, within the pillar of darkness Luna waved her keyblade and the pillar of dark energy then coalesced into many orbs of darkness which then shot forward at high speed towards everyone. Ibera immediately rose a stone wall and a few of the young heroes jumped behind it to avoid Luna's attack while Izuku, Himiko, and Toro avoided them with their agility alone. Nizu hummed impressive, it's like Luna is an entirely different person, her entire fighting style has changed plus those creatures did wonders to throw off the kids. Harry nodded those creatures are called heartless, usually they're very hostile and dangerous beings that hunt down living beings for their hearts to create more of them but when Luna summons them they become completely docile and listen to her every command something that I can't do. All Might, Nana, and Nizo turned towards Harry in surprise Hermione giggled Luna has this crazy affinity to darkness that not even someone like Harry can even accomplish. All Might nodded it's still shocking to find out that there are things that Harry can't do, I kinda expect him to be able to pull off just about anything. Harry chuckled and shook his head I can do a lot of things but I'm far from capable of being able to do anything, everyone has their own talents after all. Everyone nodded since each and every person is different and each one has their own talents making them unique, still it was nice to hear that there are things that even Harry can't do. After Luna's attacks finally subsided Izuku then yelled out is everyone alright? Everyone shout out in confirmation while Izuku nodded to himself and then stared at Luna who slowly got up and looked around, Izuku frowned what a crazy reaction time, it's just like when we fight Harry sensei. Tora then walked up to Izuku and became visible yeah, she's super fast and those attack pack quite the punch. Both looked around and all they could see was destruction brought about by Luna's dark attacks, then they saw Himiko run up towards Luna and throw knife after knife as she ran forward. Luna however just spun her keyblade like an airplane propeller and deflected the knives, Izuku and Toru nodded and immediately took off at high speed toward Luna to support Himiko. Luna saw them coming so as she spun her keyblade she then pointed a finger at them and launched a dark fireball toward them dark furga. Toru got in front of Izuku and created a shield of light that blocked and protected them from the fiery explosion of dark flames, Himiko finally reached Luna and jumped over her head while still throwing knives at her. Luna stopped spinning end of pain and swung it to intercept and deflect the knives, Himiko landed and began to swing her knives to try and cut Luna but the master of darkness easily dodged them. Luna then swung her keyblade towards Himiko who tried to jump back but she wasn't fast enough, but before Luna's attack could strike her Eijiro appeared in front of Himiko and blocked the attack with an arm with his quirk activated. A loud clang echoed through the training ground, Eijiro successfully blocked Luna's strike but some of the hardened skin on his arm cracked from the force behind her swing, but Eijiro growled and grabbed hold of Luna's keyblade surprising her a bit. Ibera then took advantage and with Kainoko's help both of them attacked at the same time hoping to trap and hold Luna down with Ibera's vines and Kainoko's mushrooms. But Luna then opened her other hand and the end of pain disappeared from Eijiro's grasp and reappeared in Luna's other hand, Eijiro not expecting that maneuver lost his balance a bit. 
Luna then leaped up and rocketed down three times generating shockwaves of darkness dark break. The dark shockwaves not only sent Himiko and Ajiro flying back but also destroyed Kainoko's mushrooms and Ibera's vines. After the third shockwave, Luna sighed and turned her gaze towards Okako and Kainoko and now Okako got rid of Ajiro's gravity and Kainoko sent him flying towards me with a wind blast, that was quite fast too hehe they caught me by surprise for a second there. Luna giggled because the kids were already quite powerful on their own but they seemed to have also gotten smarter and more clever as well. Harry saw that as well and smiled at the progress his students had made while Nizu, All Might, and Nana nodded in pride at how much the teens have grown in these two weeks. Everyone fighting Luna side and stared at her cautiously, Luna then spoke did everyone notice already? All of them nodded, throughout the entire fight, they noticed just how strong and fast they have become especially since they didn't have the gravity spell on them anymore. But through the fight, they noticed they were able to react faster and hit harder as well, the fact that Izuka was able to push Luna back a bit and Ajiro was able to block her attack was proof of that. Though they now also knew that Luna was holding back a lot too but the fact of the matter is that they're fighting on a completely different level now. Not only had their speed and strength increased but so had their skill with their quirks and their control over it, even those with new abilities had shown massive improvement and mastery over them. Luna nodded and then put away her keyblade which disappeared in a flash of darkness, she then smiled at everyone as her eyes went back to her all familiar grey ones good, now you know how much you have improved and what you can do, you're ready for tomorrow. Everyone relaxed but Momo decided to ask is that all? It felt kind of fast. Harry chuckled catching everyone's attention battles are usually like that, I bet you guys were expecting an epic battle lasting hours and such right? Everyone nodded but sweat dropped at the same time since that was exactly what they expected, Harry grinned and then said well most battles usually last minutes if not seconds it is the fact that you guys are moving at such high speeds that time sort of slows down for you. Nisa then spoke up I certainly I'm impressed with how much everyone has improved under the tutelage of Harry, I expect a great show from everyone tomorrow at the sports festival. All Might and Nana gave everyone a wide smile and a thumbs up while the kids blushed and cheered under their praises. Harry then spoke up alright this small test is officially over, I want you guys to rest up for the rest of the day for tomorrow. Everyone nodded to their sensei glad to be able to rest while Hermione waved at everyone okay guys, I want everyone to gather around me so I can hand you a miracle gel for your injuries and fatigue. Everyone immediately ran towards Hermione and called out to her for one of the gels that not only tasted awesome but also heal anything, Hermione giggled in response to their excitement wait. There's enough for everyone no need to push, hey everyone calm down. Harry, Nisa, Nana, and All Might chuckled while watching the teens fight over each other for a gel, Luna then walked up to Harry and said that was fun. Harry smiled at Luna yeah I noticed that you were having a great time, it's been a while since you fought like that right? Luna nodded yup but I don't mind, it's been fun taking it easy but I got to say, it's going to be a fun and interesting sports festival tomorrow. Harry nodded and grinned because no one was ready for what their students can do now, he can't wait to see what happens tomorrow. Chapter 73, Chapter 73, the rest of the day Harry's students spent it hanging out and relaxing for the sports festival and even though they were very nervous and anxious about tomorrow they couldn't help but also feel excited to show everyone what they can do now, even Ajiro and Mina had improved in their hand-to-hand -hand combat and control of their quirks they were definitely anxious to show their new skills and it showed today in the match against Luna, Izuku was enjoying a cheeseburger while sitting on a park bench while the rest of his fellow trainees ate something or talked amongst each other about their battle with Luna, while everyone was busy talking or eating Izuku was busy thinking about their fight against Luna, he couldn't help but to whisper, we've gotten very strong, even though it came out as a whisper Okako was still able to hear him, so she turned her head towards him with curiosity shining in her eyes Deku, Izuku turned his gaze towards Okako and smiled oh it's nothing, I was just thinking how strong we've gotten this past two weeks alone, Harry sensei wasn't kidding when he said that we would become the strongest in this world. Everyone nodded and even though they didn't have a chance to show everything they could do against someone of Luna's level they could still tell how strong they become. Toru hummed before taking a turn to speak Harry sensei sure has changed a lot for us huh? I mean look at me, you can see me and I can make cool things with light. Everyone watched with smiles on their faces as Toro made an orb of light and began to change its shape into many different forms, they were really happy for their friend, Pony brightly smiled yeah, and now I can speak and understand any language. How cool is that? Everyone nodded in agreement and if they were honest with each other they felt a bit jealous of Pony because being able to speak and understand any language was a very useful skill to have, so you then put a finger under her bottom lip and spoke up water manipulation is a great skill too and it matches my frog quirk Kuro, plus having cold resistance is great Kuro. I no longer hibernate when it gets too cold, Kuro. Everyone nodded at their friend who seemed happy to not be longer affected by the cold, Momo looked excited Harry sensei is also very smart, and he has so many talents that I don't know how he keeps track of them all. He also has some very impressive materials from other worlds that I can now create, and he has given me so many ideas for my quirk, it's all very exciting. Kainoko grinned I like the fact that he's both harsh and kind to us, he's always pushing us to improve and get better but he always takes care of us, at the end he heals us and even feeds us. Mina fist pumped man Harry sensei is a great cook, it's not fair really, maybe I should ask him to teach me how to cook. 
Everyone looked up and salivated a bit, even though Susan was a great cook, Harry's was just legendary plus he always makes such exotic dishes that it was always a treat to eat with him, a dragon god that can cook, who knew? Ibarra nodded Harry Sama really is a good person, a bit cruel sometimes but I think that his experiences in other worlds made him like that, it's sad how he calls himself a monster. Everyone looked down, they knew that Harry must have done some very horrible things during his long journey through so many worlds but they could never see him as a monster, not when he has helped them so much. Himiko who decided to go with everyone to hang out took a bite out of her popsicle and then spoke even monsters have hearts and Harry has the biggest one I've ever seen, he gave me a chance when no one else ever did, I don't care if he thinks he's a monster, he's my hero. Everyone turned their heads towards Himiko and smiled at her, Harry and her were very honest to them when it came to her past and what she had done but none of them judged Himiko, how could they? when it was her quirk that was driving her insane. Okako then grinned and a black aura suddenly burst out of her body making everyone lean away from her oh I'm so fired up for tomorrow. It's going to be our debut? I'm going to punch you in the face tomorrow Deku. Everyone gaped at Okako and Izuko gawked in shock and couldn't help but to ask what? But why? Okako just shrugged and smiled at Izuko I don't know. I just feel like I have to slow you down somehow, you're kinda scary strong Deku. Everyone sweat dropped but nodded in agreement since out of all of them, the strongest? fastest, and smartest is Izuku, they all knew that he was going to be a very big challenger tomorrow, Izuku however slumped and tear up a bit at having his crush wanting to beat him up already that's just cruel Eureka, everyone laughed and eventually Izuku joined everyone in their laughter as well, he knew Okako was just joking, or at least he hopes so, after hanging out and talking about normal teenager stuff everyone left to go home and prepare for tomorrow, each and every one of them had a big smile on their face as they headed home, tomorrow they're going to show what they can do and this is their first step toward their paths to their future as heroes, in Death's domain, Death herself was smiling and watching over Harry's new students with a little bit of pride, like them she knows that Harry is a kind and caring individual. She more than anyone is very well aware of everything Harry went through and the reasons why he sometimes seems to be so cruel and uncaring. He more than anyone in the world wanted to hold on to what he loves and never let it go, it's the reason why he always helps his loved ones grow strong and powerful enough to face anything. Deep down he doesn't want to lose anyone ever again, Death knew that and supported him wholeheartedly plus her beloved master always took his job seriously, which made her very happy, now she had five souls that were finally able to move on after being stuck in the land of the living for so long, so she was very happy right now plus tomorrow she gets to to watch her master's students show off their new skills and she can't wait to watch them destroy the competition tomorrow is going to be very fun fu fu fu. The next day arrived soon enough and every student in UA gathered in the stadium prepared for the big event, each class was sent to a waiting room to wait for the sports festival to officially begin. Inside the room given to class 1A, most of the students were tense and nervous about the upcoming challenges. The sports festival is a very famous and big event in Musudafu, so big in fact that it can be compared to the Olympics it was a lot of pressure being placed on the young teens shoulders but that in itself is also a test. As heroes, they have to be able to handle stressful situations like this all the time but there was one group who seems unfazed by everything around them. These teens were the ones who have been training under Harry and they were calmly speaking amongst themselves, after all, why would they be nervous or anxious about this event when they had faced Harry in battle so many times already? In all honesty, the sports festival seems sort of insignificant after having to face a dragon god in battle and try to survive, so all of Harry's students were cheerfully speaking amongst each other about the challenges ahead of them without a care in the world. Of course, they sort of annoyed everyone else but no one said anything to them, until Shoto stood up and walked up towards Izuku. Izuku sensed him coming his way and turned towards Shoto who stopped a little distance away from him and stared at Izuku in silence. In another time, perhaps another universe, Izuku would have just stayed silent while feeling nervous and intimidated by Shoto but this time he was a completely different person after training and learning from Harry. After all, he spent two weeks with Harry in the training room training which equals 14 months thanks to the time dilation of the room, 14 months of time spent with the dragon god Harry Potter. So Izuku picked up a few things from his teacher and friend, one of them is how to stand tall and proud against anything, so Izuku spoke up to Shoto if you're not going to talk and just stay there standing staring at me like that can you at least do it where I can't see you? It's quite creepy for you to do that Todoroki. Shoto frowned not expecting the dismissal, after Principal Nizo had forced him to begin to go to therapy, Shoto was shown that he lacks quite a bit of common sense so he was well aware that the things he does sometimes aren't normal so, in a way he understood what Izuka just told, that doesn't mean he liked it though. Everyone gaped at Izuka's words, everyone had noticed how much he had changed over the last two weeks, and not only him but Momo, Okako, Tsuyu, Eijiro, Tora, and even Mina seemed so different now but still, they couldn't believe what he just told to one of the biggest competitors of today's event. All of Izuku's friends and he himself seemed so confident now and they had this air of experience around them, it was hard to explain but they sometimes felt like these seven were living in a completely different world from them. Shoto, however, had something to say to Izuku out of everyone here you're the most dangerous, but I'm still stronger, I know there's some sort of special connection between you and All Might, so I'll be aiming for you Midoriya. Izuku silently stared at Shoto, while the rest of the class watched this confrontation with anticipation, Izuku suddenly stood up and walked up to Shoto it's true. 
You're a very talented and powerful opponent Todoroki but you're far from the strongest here. Izuku turned towards his fellow trainees and grinned at them, in response they all stood up and walked up to Shoto who actually stepped back when he saw that look of confidence on their faces, Izuku then went on each and everyone in this class, class 1b, and the other classes as well will be giving their all so don't think you've won yet. Shoto looked around and watched as everyone in his class looked at him with a grin on their faces agreeing to Izuku's words, he then turned towards Izuku who grinned, he then decided to pull a Harry and activated one for all to the maximum percentage that he can safely manage right now which is 20%. The effect was immediate, a shockwave was released from Izuku as green lightning danced around him, all of this made Todoroki take a further step back and cover his eyes. Everyone else who wasn't a part of Harry's extra class stared in shock at Izuku's show of strength while his fellow trainees just grinned and stood tall beside him. Shoto finally took a look and stared with wide eyes full of disbelief at the power Izuku was displaying but not only that, the confidence in his eyes was the thing that stood out the most, Izuku then widely smiled and said also don't underestimate me Todoroki or you might just get a nasty surprise. Harry who sitting in the stands with his eyes closed suddenly chuckled catching the attention of Susan, Luna, Hermione, Himiko, and Eri who turned towards Harry. Eri then pulled on his shirt causing Harry to open his eyes and turned to look at his daughter with a smile yes Eri. Eri tilted her head and then asked what made you laugh daddy? Did you see something funny? Harry once again chuckled and patted her head causing Eri to brightly smile at him yes, it seems like my students picked up some bad habits from me. Susan, Luna, and Hermione turned towards Himiko who shook her head and then shrugged I don't know what Harry is talking about, there are a lot of bad habits we could have picked up from him though so I'm not surprised though, hey, Harry couldn't help but complain, but the girls ignored him and just giggled at his expense while Eri patted Harry's head to cheer him up a bit, Izuku then reined in his quirk and the energy and green lightning dancing around his body dissipated just in time for the announcement for the classes to begin to head towards the stadium resounded throughout the room. Izuku turned towards Okako, Tsuyu, Toru, Mina, Eijiro, and Momo, all of them nodded at him and Okako then fist pumped let's do this. Her fellow trainees smiled at her cheerful attitude and began to walk out of the room to go and face whatever the school had prepared for them to face. After walking out of the room everyone headed outside to the stadium, Izuku and his fellow trainees found Pony, Kainoko, and Ibera and they immediately went to them to talk. Of course, some of the members of class 1b didn't like the fact that these three girls were friendly towards class 1a but they knew better than to say something or upset the girls who are students of Harry. By now everyone in UA knows or has heard of Harry Potter and how harsh and hard his lessons are, so no one, especially classes 1B and 1A wanted to earn his ire. Still, Manoma glared at the small group as they finally reached the entrance of the stadium and while the sounds of the excited people began to echo everywhere everyone began to walk out towards the outside where the public present to watch the sports festival cheered loudly as they watched the young heroes in training begin their debut. Suddenly almost every man in the stadium cheered loudly as the R-rated hero Midnight stepped out from who knows where while whipping around a flogger-style whip and began to explain how the events will be chosen since she was chosen as the chief referee for the freshman stage of the sports festival. Luna stared at Midnight and tilted her head in curiosity, mm, that whip looks like fun. Harry who was drinking some soda, choked up and began to aggressively cough while Eri began to pat his back. Susan and Hermione laughed while Himiko grinned and said kinky. After Midnight explained how the events will be randomly chosen, she then whipped her whip and with a crack, the preliminary event was chosen the first event will be an obstacle race, how exciting. All the students narrowed their eyes and mentally prepared themselves as they began to stretch and warm up for the race. A few minutes later everyone walked up to a wide and dark gate that will lead towards the prepared obstacle course, Midnight seeing that everyone was ready began the countdown 3, 2, 1 go. The moment Midnight whipped her whip and the crack echoed through the now silent stadium full of people watching with anticipation for the race to begin, the young heroes in training shot off at high speed the moment the gates opened. Both Shoda and Hisashi were in the commentator box, Hisashi grinned and then loudly spoke through the mic and there they go. Just who is going to win this obstacle race? What do you think Eraserhead? Who will make it to the first place? Shoda who looked tired and annoyed just sighed and then spoke if I were to make an educated guess I would say that any student attending extra classes with Harry Potter will win. Hisashi rose an eyebrow and then spoke oh. Such confidence? What makes you say that with such conviction? Shota moved his gaze towards Hisashi Sai. Harry is a monster, it is logical to think that he would train his students to become monsters themselves, either way, this race is going to be full of interesting things, honestly, I can't wait to see what those future little monsters can do now. Shota actually grinned which creeped out Hisashi and made him sweat dropped, he then turned towards his mic and said there you have it, everyone, this sports festival promises to be an exciting one. With that said the public cheered while Niza cackled, All Might sweat dropped, Nana laughed nervously and Harry grinned knowing full well how accurate Shota's words were. All the students participating in the sports festival shot off running as fast as they could, however, all of them tried to push each other away causing some to become stuck by the giant doorway leading outside to the obstacle course. Shoto feeling confident suddenly froze the ground and caused many students to become unable to move, he looked back and stared at everyone having a hard time trying to escape his ice. However his eyes widened when not only Izuku ran past him, his body engulfed in energy and green lightning as he ran past him but also the rest of his fellow trainees ran past a shocked Shoto. 
Sui was engulfed in water as she seemed to be swimming inside and moved in at an impressive amount of speed, Okako just pushed herself forward with her enhanced gravity control at high speed. Soon after both Momo and Toro ran past Shoto, Toro was moving in a flash of white light while Momo had created some thruster boots and was using them to move forward. Next both Kainoko and Ibera were propelling themselves with their own elemental manipulation, Kainoko was blasting a constant stream of air behind her and Ibera was actually manipulating the earth beneath her to move herself forward. Shoto had to actually cover himself with an ice wall so he wouldn't be blasted back by their elemental bursts next were Mina and Eijiro who grinned at Shoto as they moved past them. Mina was skating on the floor with her acid at high speed while Eijiro just ran forward, everyone in the stadium stared with awe and shocked expressions at how fast these teens were moving. Shoto narrowed his eyes and then began to run forward to try and catch up to Aizuku and his friends, the other students began to also run forward to try and not end up being in last place. Hazashi gaped as he watched Harry's students easily avoid Shoto's trap and actually run past him whoa. Is everyone watching the same thing I am? Just how are they able to move this fast? Shota tiredly sighed and then spoke, and ladies and gentlemen those are Harry Potter students whom I mentioned a few moments ago, and as you can see I was right. Hisashi sweat dropped at his old friend but, just how did Harry train them to be this fast? Look at them eraser head. They are blurs. It's almost like they have speed quirks. And the public agreed, Izuku and his fellow trainees were moving at such high speed that all they could see is blurs, suddenly Shota received a text and he took a look at it and actually chuckled well I just received a text from Harry explaining just how he trained the kids. Hisashi and the public actually began to give Shota their undivided attention, everyone was curious as to how Harry had done this, Shota then grinned and said he said and I quote push UPS, sit UPS, and plenty of juice end quote. Everyone sweat dropped and the entire stadium suddenly yelled out at the same time liar. Harry tried not to laugh as the entire stadium was raging at him got to thank Vegeta for that one later, it's still gold. Harry watched her father who seemed to be very happy and to be having a lot of fun which in turn made her happy which led her to giggle and smiled at Harry who patted her head while still trying not to laugh. Luna, Susan, and Hermione were giggling while Himiko was laughing at the public who still looked annoyed. Izuku and his friends laughed because only their sensei would do something like troll the entire stadium for shits and giggles. Suddenly they reached the first obstacle, a bunch of villain bots of all shapes and sizes now blocked their path, everyone recognized these robots as the ones they had to fight for the entrance exam and they even had zero pointers as well. However Harry's students weren't the same teens who took the entrance exam anymore, no, now they were far stronger than anything these robots could ever handle and it immediately showed when Izuka quite literally ran through them and a zero pointer while screaming dynamic entry. Okako quite literally dense her way through the bots with such ease and finesse that it shocked everyone watching, she even destroyed some of the bots by slapping them as she danced around them and then crushed them with her gravity control. Tsuyu herself ran through them as well, the water engulfing her body was being moved around her at such speed that it acted like a drill of sorts, the bots just didn't have a chance against her. Toru just vanished and no one saw her until she reappeared past the bots and continued running, she was moving so fast while being invisible that the bots couldn't locate her at all. Kainoko used her wind to fly above them while Ibera tunneled her way across them, they met up at the otherwise far behind the villain bots. Momo used her thruster boots and created thruster gauntlets to maneuver herself around the bots while not losing any speed, inwardly she was both very thankful and glad that Harry had taken her to meet his friend Tony Stark and that he had shown her some of his Iron Man designs and some other things to see if she could replicate them with her quirk. Turns out that yes she can, though it does take quite a bit out of her to do something this complicated with her quirk, Mina hooped as she skated around the bots and melted their legs while Ajiro ran through them easily with his quirk activated, he quite literally became a cannonball with how fast he was moving with his quirk on. Hisashi groaned and then pointed at Izuku and his friends oh, come on, you can't tell me push UPS, sit UPS and plenty of Jews can make anyone capable of doing that. The public nodded with Hisashi's sentiments, Shota however just shrugged you shouldn't underestimate what everyday healthy exercise and balanced diet can do for your body. Hisashi and the public gaped at Shota in disbelief at what he just said, Shota just shrugged and continued to watch but everyone could see a small smirk on his face. Nizu was just having the time of his life and was laughing his white fur off while both Nana and All Might stared at him while sweat dropping. They both wonder who exactly is having the most fun right now, Nizu, Harry, Shota, just who is enjoying all this chaos the most right now? The answer is none of them, Death was the one having a blast watching Harry mess with so many people at the same time. She was having so much fun and giggling so much that everyone in the land of the dead wondered just what was death doing that she was having that much of a good time. Though no one was daring enough to go and find out, anything that can entertain death this much has to be something no one would want to mess with right? In Izuku's house, Inko Midoriya was watching her son shine and show how strong he has become, she was so proud of her son and even though she didn't like the fact that he was training so hard every day she can still felt pride in what he has accomplished. She could see the results, the happy and prideful smile on Izuku's face told her that her son was not only having fun but was also proud of what he has achieved and she herself couldn't agree more you look so cool Izuku. Inko continued to watch her son show the world who he is with tears and a big and proud smile on her face as she cheered on her son. 
Shoto arrived a few moments later at the first obstacle inwardly cursing how much of a lead Izuku and his friends had against him, the fact that they also slowed him down just aggravated him more. But he didn't have time to think more about Izuku and the rest of his friends, the moment he stepped close to the villain bots left they instantly locked on him and tried to rush at him. Shoto however just waved an arm and froze the villain bots defeating them in a single move and blocking the way for the rest of the participants who were slowed down enough to give him an advantage. Though that advantage didn't mean anything right now since Izuku and the rest of his fellow trainees had reached the second obstacle. Hisashi heavily sighed and then began to commentating and some students have reached the second obstacle, the fall? Just what are these students going to do to pass it? Shota shrugged more than likely something overly showy. Hisashi groaned more than they have already shown? What else can these kids do? Just what is Harry teaching them? Shota just shrugged, he himself wasn't sure what Harry was teaching them or how he was training them only one who knew exactly was Niza and he wasn't one to tell. Izuku upon reaching the second obstacle activated his new quirk black whip and began to whip himself across the second obstacle. Harry sensei had told him how this quirk seemed very similar to something a friend of his was capable of. So Harry showed him his memories of Spider-Man swinging around the tall buildings of New York with an ease that it inspired Izuku to try and do the same with black whip and Harry helped him by creating all kinds of different terrains inside the training room for him to practice with. All of that practice showed itself here when Izuku began to swing his way across not even slowing down. The fact that he would pull himself forward to increase his speed gave him quite the advantage. Next were both Suyu and Okako who both used their quirks and new abilities to easily cross the fall while Toru jumped and moved around like the shinobi she was taught to be. Momo also passed this obstacle with ease thanks to her thruster boots and gauntlets, Kainoko used her wind to fly over the obstacle and Ibera used her vines to pull herself over. Mina and Eijiro arrived soon after and just began to jump from platform to platform with ease, Shoto arrived and used his ice to cross over as fast as he could. Hisashi pointed at the kids and yell out what the hell? What kind of quirk does Izuku and the rest have? The number of things they can do is getting ridiculous. Shoto shook his head and huffed do you think it would be a good idea to explain and tell how their quirks work when any villain could be watching this right now? How illogical. Hazashi actually had the decency to look abashed by Shota's words since it made sense what he had just said, so he silently went back to watching the race. In a shady bar in a well-hidden place, Tamura who was watching the sports festival growled and slammed his fist upon the bar goddammit. I guess they aren't as stupid as I thought they would be. Kurojiri nodded while cleaning some crystal cups it makes sense for them to not give out any information, especially since we just attacked them two weeks ago, they must know that we would be watching. Tamura just nodded and continued to glare at the television in rage while in a monitor close by all for one was also watching the sports festival those kids, they have multiple quirks, so I was right about this Harry Potter having a quirk similar to mine, his, however, seems more stable, those kids seem to be capable of controlling those extra quirks with ease, there is also no sign of physical distortions or deformities star. Izuku and friends reach the final obstacle of the obstacle course, a minefield but this doesn't even slow them down, the moment they arrive at the minefield they began to run around the mines as if they knew where they were planted. The public now hyped and excited about the skill and ability shown by this group of very talented young people, loudly cheered at all of them as they raced forward. Izuku and his fellow trainees had big wide smiles on their faces as they raced against each other for first place, to them this was just another day so they were having fun. Shoto finally reached the third obstacle and began to run as fast as he could to try to catch up to Izuku and the rest of his friends but even he knew that would be impossible with the lead they had on him and that just caused him to be upset. However, he didn't have any time to ponder when explosions began to sound off behind him, Shoto curious as to what was going turned his head to try and see, only for his eyes to widen in shock when he saw his fellow classmates of class 1A being so close to catching up to him and then he remembered what Izuka said to him in the waiting room each and everyone in this class, class 1B, and the other classes as well will be giving their all so don't think you've won yet. Shoto growled and began to pick up speed trying to get more distance away from his fellow classmates, they all have been training with Harry during his lesson so it made sense that all of them improved but this much? Either way, he wasn't going to lose his spot to anyone else, and soon Shoto began to run as fast as his legs can carry him while also freezing the ground. Hisashi cheered along with the public how intense? Who is going to get first place? Izuku and his friends are going full throttle out there. Shoto nodded and then spoke, yes, it seems that they're giving it their all and it's not only them, the rest of class 1A and 1B seem to be catching up to Shoto who's doing everything he can to keep his lead. Hisashi turned towards where the rest of the students were running and attacking each other to try to claim a spot in the next stage of the sports festival hot dang, this is getting insane everyone. Harry smiled and looked on in pride as his student raced forward as fast as they could, these two weeks had been hard on them but they all did their best and more to improve and it showed. Their strength, speed, quirk control, and even their reflexes had increased by a wide margin and today they showed just how talented each and everyone is. Especially Izuku and Toru, those two had trained the hardest out of everyone, Izuku always felt like he was so far behind his fellow classmates, and in a way he was right, the few months he spent training before even joining UA weren't enough to shorten that gap. But then Izuku showed them how dedicated he is to the path he had chosen, today he shined and everyone in this stadium saw it. 
Torutu, being invisible for most of her life left her with a big desire to be seen, to be recognized, and not just be ignored so when Harry began to train her she did her best to improve and become stronger. Today she showed the world that she was here, that you couldn't just ignore her and that made Harry very proud of her. Harry cheered loudly at her friends along with Himiko who was also cheering at the top of her lungs for her fellow trainees while Susan, Luna, and Hermione smiled at Harry watching him smile towards his students with a soft and proud smile on his face. The public cheered loudly as they continued to watch everyone racing towards the finish line of this obstacle course. Izuku and his friends finally saw the doorway leading towards the tunnel to the end of this race and all of them began to go even faster than before. Eventually, they reached the entrance and everyone in the stadium suddenly stayed silent watching with anxious anticipation who would come out first and claim the first place for this race. On the other side of the long tunnel, Midnight watched with anticipation to declare who would be in the first place. This entire race had been very exciting and interesting to see and everyone had done their best so that made her very thrilled to see who would win. Suddenly she saw a blur skid to a stop just outside the doorway followed soon after, by a few more, everyone cheered and celebrated the winner while Midnight rose her arm and then loudly said and the first place is. Chapter 74, Chapter 74. Everyone stared in silence for a second as they look upon the one who won the first place on the obstacle course, Midnight grinned and then loudly named the winner which in turn made the public explode in celebration and the first place of this race is Toru Hagakure. And indeed the visibly tired and out of breath girl looked around everywhere and silently watched with wide eyes as everyone in the stands loudly clapped and cheered for her. Toru the girl no one ever saw, the girl that was always forgotten, and the invincible girl no one ever noticed was being cheered and clapped to by everyone in the stadium. Tears slowly began to drop from her eyes as she continued to watch the public celebrate her victory and chant her name, suddenly she felt someone grab her shoulders which made her turn her head to see who it was. Only to stare in shock as Harry had appeared behind her and was smiling proudly at her, she turned around to face him and then noticed her fellow trainees clapping and smiling at her as well. Toru looked up at Harry and earnestly began to sob and cry as she hugged her sensei tightly, Harry chuckled and hugged her back and soon enough the rest of her friends hugged her all around. Midnight actually tear up watching the display of affection and camaraderie and the public cheered louder than before. Back where Harry was sitting with the girls, Eri, and Himiko, were loudly calling out to Toro while Susan, Hermione, and Luna raised their hands into the air and began to send multicolored sparks of magic high into the sky. In the commentator box, both Hazashi and Shota were also cheering and smiling at the girls who won the obstacle course. Shota had known of Toro's concerns about not being a good hero because no one would see her or even know about her, growing up invisible must have had quite a negative effect on her self-esteem. But Harry noticed it and immediately fixed it, now that same girl who was full of doubts and low self-esteem was now glowing. Nana and All Might cheerfully clapped to the amazing race that they just had seen these students go through and the way they supported each other even if they were rivals in the sports festival. Niza grinned and nodded, he can see the results of Harry's way of teaching, the way the kids challenged themselves and still supported each other despite this being a competition showed him how Harry's emphasis on teamwork works wonders for the kids' growth. Harry patted Toru's head causing the crying girl to look up at him, Harry softly smiled and cleaned her tears away while he said good job Toru, you showed the world that you're here, that you exist and that you will become a great hero so like Nana always says, give them a big and wide smile. Toru teared up again but nodded, she then turned around walked away from Harry and her friends, and began to wave at everyone in the stadium with a big and wide smile and the public went wild. Izuku smiled and walked up to Harry and stood by his side she got us good in the tunnel, she did a flash attack and blinded us all. Harry chuckled and shook his head while Okako walked up to them he 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 I tripped and then everyone tripped on me and that's when Toru-chan took off in a flash of light and won. Everyone groaned since all of that was embarrassing to them, the fact that they all tripped and couldn't get up quickly was not only shameful but painful as well. Sometime after Shoto finally arrived but he was quite angry and embarrassed by his loss, not only he didn't get first place but he ended up getting 11th place instead. He narrowed his eyes and glared at Izuku and his friends but Harry turned his face to the side and glared at him causing Shoto to flinch and looked down knowing that it was best to not say anything while Harry was there. Soon after the rest of the students began to arrive but right now no one really paid any attention to them since the public was busy celebrating Toru's victory. After a while, everything calmed down and Midnight was able to finally list everyone's placings and who would be moving on to the second event okay. As everyone now knows the first place is Toru Hagakure, then followed by second place Izuku Midoriya and third place Tsuyu Ajui. Everyone listened intently as the R-rated hero continued to list the placings 4th place is Momo Yeo Ruzu, 5th place Mina Ashido, then we have 6th place Pony Tsunatri, 7th place Kainoko Komura and 8th place Ibarashi Ozaki. The girls waved at the public who cheered and smiled at them while midnight went on then we have 9th place Ajiro Kiri's Hima and 10th place Okako Yurika. Ajiro fist pumps the air and Okako grinned and scratched the back of her head, she was the last one to get up since everyone had tripped with her body and landed on top of her in a dog pile though she was very happy that Izuko was the one the landed face first on her chest thought that memory caused her to blush. Izuko noticed her blush and he himself also blushed remembering the soft pillows he landed face first on. Harry noticed the two teens blushing and immediately understood that something had happened in the tunnel which made him grin at the both of them causing both Okako and Izuko to turn their heads to the side to ignore Harry which only served to amuse him more. 
Midnight went on and 32 more students made it to the second event while the rest had failed to advance and were told to continue training for next year. The kids were then given some time to rest and recuperate from the obstacle race since some of them got injured or are just plain exhausted. These students went to go see Recovery Girl in order to be at their 100% for the second event. In the Midoriya household Inko was crying for her son in pride and in relief since the event was too much excitement for the poor woman but she was also happy for her son. It had been a while since Izuko had smiled like she just saw him do for his friend a few moments ago. He seems so happy and strong now and a part of her was a little sad. Her son was growing up and that left her feeling a little lonely. However, she did notice him staring at the cute brunette and blushing which made her feel hopeful that her son would soon get a girlfriend. If that girl becomes his girlfriend then that means she'll be getting grandkids. Hopefully soon. So Inko Midoriya began to plot to help give her son a push in the right direction. Perhaps she should ask his very scary sensei. She had heard that the young teacher has a harem so perhaps he can give her son some advice. Well, she's just going to have to make some time to go visit her son's sensei and his girlfriend's gasp. If Izuku gets a harem then that means, more grandchildren for her to spoil? Yes, it's the perfect plan but she needs to act quickly, she's not getting any younger so she needs all of this to happen fast. And so Inko began to slowly and sweetly smile, a smile that hid the dark and evil intentions she had towards her poor son's love life fufufu. Back in the stadium, Izuku who was in the resting room with his friends suddenly felt a disturbing chill run down his spine. Besides him, Okako also felt the same chill run down her spine and both of them began to shake and pale as if Harry himself was going after them. Harry was back in his seat eating a hot dog when he suddenly stopped mid-bite and looked around seeming somewhat disturbed. Harry noticed her daddy was acting strange and turned towards him to ask him what was wrong daddy. Harry turned his head towards his daughter and looked down at her yeah Harry. Harry looked up and then asked, what's wrong? Harry smiled at his daughter and patted her head it's nothing Harry I just felt like someone was plotting something fun that's all. Harry tilted her head in confusion but nodded nonetheless and went back to eating the popcorn her daddy had gotten for her when he went to get his hot dog. Harry chuckled at his daughter and then went back to eating his hot dog I don't know why but I feel like I will be having fun at someone's expense soon. Watching from the stands well hidden away to not catch the attention of anyone, is Endeavor the number 2 hero but he was very unhappy right now, in fact, he was so aggravated that he was having a hard time not bursting into flames. The reason why he was in a bad mood was that everything in his life as of late was becoming very troublesome, first, his wife Rei had disappeared from the psychiatrist ward he had her locked up in and no one knew how she had escaped nor where she was. He himself went to investigate her room but there was no sign of forced entry or even a struggle, it was almost as if she had disappeared from the face of the earth. But that was unimportant, a week and some days ago Shoto had been moved into the UA dorms and he wasn't even allowed into the campus to visit him for some reason. The big rat Niza had just told him that he was not allowed to even approach his son while he was living inside of UA but refused to tell him why. All of this made him very suspicious so he began to investigate and found out the rat had been doing some very suspicious movements as of late, to start with Niza had single-handedly closed down an entire school and had the teachers and principal so blacklisted that no one will ever allow them to go near a child for the rest of their lives. He had destroyed them not only career-wise but publicly as well, all the teachers and the principal were arrested and sued for so many reports of child abuse and negligence that they won't ever finish paying up their fines in this lifetime much less be able to find work. The only thing about all of this that bother him the most was the fact that he couldn't find out why. Why would the principal of UA go out of his way to destroy a bunch of teachers from a local school? Why is he keeping his son away from him, and does he have something to do about REI's disappearance? He didn't know why but all of this was giving him a feeling of foreboding that was slowly eating at him. But all of that was just made worse by the fact that his son, the one who would one day surpass All Might hadn't gotten first place in the first event. Not only that, he had gotten 11th place? 11? If only his son would stop being so stubborn and use his fire he would have gotten at least second or third place. Though he had to admit that the brats who got the first 10 places were very impressive and very strong, if he heard right the commentators had said that they were being trained by a teacher named Harry Potter. Perhaps if he throws enough money at him he can convince him to exclusively train Shoto yes. I'll have to meet with this Harry Potter and convince him to train Shoto, he did wonders with those brats, someone like Shoto would benefit the most out of whatever training method he was using on these brats of his. Enji Todoroki had decided to talk to Harry soon, especially since he has seen him when he appeared behind the girl who got first place, letting him know that Harry was present at the stadium today. Endeavor would regret ever speaking to Harry later on this day and it would be the start of many other regrets that would soon befall him from the consequences of his cruel and heartless actions in his obsession with All Might. Like many others he will know firsthand how much Harry hates child abuse, he will experience a dragon's god rage. All for one was laying down on his hospital bed as he thought back on what he just saw happen during the first event of this year's sports festival how. Just how do those kids have multiple quirks and not get mutated like the Nomu? How can they function normally? Does this Harry Potter have an enhanced version of his quirk, star? These were some very disturbing thoughts that all for one was having, it should be impossible but everything leads to Harry Potter having an enhanced or even an improved version of his quirk. 
Their little spy had also told them how Potter had taken away a male student's quirk so fast and without harming or leaving the boy in a coma, which further proved his theory of the existence of a better version of his quirk existence. This makes things more complicated to his plans, if he's not careful he could lose many useful pawns to Potter but that green-haired student intrigued all for one the most. He alone seemed to have more than two quirks unlike the rest of his friends who had two, he might be able to fool his fellow students and teachers but he noticed the very familiar quirks belonging to his past nemesis all might pass down the torch. Izuku Midoriya, enjoy my brother's quirk while you can because I'm coming for you soon ha 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 ha. Rei was watching the sports festival from the big TV in the living room of Harry's room, with her was Mr. Goop who was also watching the events with her. The shiny metal slime with the manliest mustache she has ever seen had been a constant reminder of how crazy and wild her life had become since she began to live with Harry and his family. The things they had shown her were straight out of fairy tales, magic, devils, angels, yokai, dragons and so many other things that Rei had never even dreamed of ever being able to see. All of it was amazing and she was loving every second of it. Harry had even given her his blessing as a dragon god and a bunch of other things. He even empowered her quirk increasing its power and range of things she could do with snow and ice. She even joined little Airy in her magic lesson with Hermione and she was very invested in learning everything she could about magic it was something she was growing very passionate about. Thanks to Harry's blessing, the skills and perks he had also given her, she had de-aged, now she was back to looking like she did when she was in her 20s and the woman part of her loved it. Living here with Harry, the girls, and Airy had given her a feeling of peace and happiness that she thought she would never receive, and at some point the thought that she didn't deserve such things had plagued her mind. She still felt guilty at everything that had happened to her and her children, the fact that she couldn't protect them as a mother should have continued to hunt her even now, but thankfully Luna and Harry were helping her with her mental issues as well, she can now think clearly and sort out all the emotions she felt. Honestly, it was just one more thing to add to the pile of things she is very thankful to this warm and caring family, who chose to help her for no other reason than it was the right thing to do. There were times that she wished she was a part of this family for real, having been bought by Angie from her parents and being forced to marry him right after had left her without ever experiencing what it felt to be in love. But watching how Harry and the girls would act around each other and how much Harry loves them made her wish that Angie would have tried to be like that with her. Perhaps life would have been more bearable then but no Angie didn't know the meaning of the word love and with his sick obsession with All Might he would never do so. Still, she was now happy and excited to someday soon see her sons and daughter again but now watching how her son was acting during the sports festival made her frown. The fact that he was using his quirk without any care that he could severely hurt his classmates reminded her a lot of Enji and she didn't like that and then she saw him glare at Izuko and his friends. The same glare she had seen on Enji's face every time he would hear anything that had to do with All Might and that worried her a lot. Her concern must have shown on her face since Mr. Goop slid himself up to her side and to her surprise he spoke slurp. Leave everything to Izuko and his friends slurp. I'm sure they'll help your son soon slurp. Rei stared at Mr. Good and even though she was thankful for his kind and supportive words she couldn't help to exclaim you can speak. Mr. Goop just wobbled and then continued to smile at Rei with the same goofy smile that's always on his face, which caused Rei to sweat drop because it seems like Mr. Goop had no intention of answering her question. Back in the stadium, everyone was now ready to begin the second event which Midnight was about to announce for everyone to hear now the second event will be. A Calvary battle? Everyone will team up in a group of two to four students? and the entire event will last 15 minutes, the objective is to steal the headbands of opposing teams. While Midnight continued to explain how everyone will have to accumulate points by stealing headbands from other groups, Izuku and his friends got together to plan what to do next. Suddenly Midnight announced something that surprised everyone and the headband of the first place holder of the obstacle course will be worth 10 million points. Everyone turned to look at Toro who jumped when she noticed she was the center of attention but soon after she then grinned and cheekily waved at everyone not seeming one bit worried about the giant target of her back. Her fellow trainees grinned at her and nodded, then they got together again and began to plan, Kainoko, Ibera, and Pony were going to team up with each other. Izuku, Okako, Tsuyu, and Momo teamed up while Toro, Mina, Eijiro, and a girl named Mei Hatsum from the Department of Support teamed up, apparently. She wanted to show off her inventions and being with the first place holder will get her lot of attention from support agencies. Toro was more than happy to let Mei use her to grab attention plus some of her inventions seemed very neat and useful. Both teams decided to follow Harry's example on the importance of teamwork while working together and covering each other's back, that way everyone will be able to move on and face each other in the third event. In the commentator box both Hisashi and Shota watched everyone create a team and plan how to take down Toro, Shota noticed right away how some were especially aiming at Toro's or Izuku's team and shook his head it seems like everyone wants to aim at the 10 million points too bad they won't succeed. Hisashi turned towards Shota and then said oh, what makes you so sure? This time it will be 4 against 38, how can you be so sure they won't be able to get those 10 million points? Shota once again shook his head they're going to be facing Harry Potter's students and we all just watched them perform exceptionally well on the obstacle course, the fact that everyone not only seems to have forgotten that fact but also forgot that they're very powerful is too illogical. Hisashi and the public sweat dropped, sure what he said made sense but the way he delivered those words just made him sound so sure, still, he did raise some very important points. 
The students who were competing were now not too sure about going against Toru, Izuku, and their friends. The fact that Harry's students were all maliciously grinning at everyone made their doubts increase. Shoto was the only one who wasn't intimated by them but the same couldn't be said about his teammates who looked very nervous. However, Midnight told everyone to get ready because the event was about to start and all the students got in position, both Izuka and Toro were on top while their friends were the horses, Ibarra and Pony ended up as horses as for their team while Kainoko was on top. Soon after Midnight cracked her whip and announced the start of the second event begin. The public exploded in excitement as chaos was brought to the stadium, Izuka's group immediately go to work. Okako used her gravity manipulation to lift every off the ground while Momo used her thruster boots and gauntlets to move. Meanwhile, Izuka would be blasting and getting headbands with Black Whip while Tsuyu will be using her water attacks to push anyone that got to close away from them while also using her tongue to grab headbands. Tora's group opted to stay on the ground and moved around with May's hover boots while Ajiro acted as a wall and Mina was attacking everyone with her acid. Tora would use her light manipulation to blast and shoot anyone who tried to get too close, since she had the 10 million points headband. Her team didn't need to get more headbands. All they needed to do is keep everyone away and they can accomplish that easily. Ibarra, Kainoko, and Pony were also working together to not only keep other contestants away but also get more headbands, Kainoko blasted and kept everyone away by creating a big sphere of sharp wind around them. While Ibarra used her vines to steal headbands and Pony just shot at everyone who seemed to try and do something to go through Kainoko's wind sphere. Shota grinned and nodded his head in approval as he watched his students safely keep everyone away from them while still being on the offensive. Hisashi gaped and then said, Whoa, see that listeners? Izuka's, Tora's, and Ibarra's team have become mobile fortresses? Amazing creativity and use of their quirks. Shoden nodded and then said, Not only that but they're also covering each other's back, an amazing display of teamwork. Hisashi raised an eyebrow and looked closely, he then noticed how these three groups were blasting or pushing contestants away from each other in tandem you're right. But why? This is a competition, what's the point in cooperation against your rivals? Shota shook his head you seem to forget that the sports festival was originally a way for young inspiring heroes to showcase their skills, every hero agency out there will have them working with others so showing not only their power but their ability to work together in a show of teamwork is a great way to get more offers, it is a very logical thing to do. Hisashi looked down for a second but then nodded since that made sense you make an excellent point Eraserhead though I do wonder where they picked up such amazing teamwork. Shota nodded they got it from Harry Potter, as a teacher Harry's lessons focus on control, skill, and teamwork, this is why not many joined his after-class lessons, either they foolishly believed they could improve on their own or believed that they don't need something like teamwork but as you can see it's a very good thing to learn. Hisashi nodded, he can imagine that many students were too prideful to even consider taking extra lessons from Harry I see, they must be regretting not accepting those extra lessons now ha ha ha. It quickly became evident that no one was going to be able to take or even get close to these three groups and so everyone stopped trying and began to instead get headbands from others. Of course, there was only one group that was still trying to get either Tora's or Izuka's headband. Shoto wasn't about to give up in trying to move on to the next round by taking down Izuka or getting Tora's 10 million points headband. His group consisted of his classmates Tokoyami, Ida, and Siro, together they tried to get close or crash against Izuka's and Tora's group, but Izuka's group just stay up in the air while Tora's was a mobile tank making it difficult to get close much less steal a headband from them. Eventually, Tokoyami tried to use his quirk Dark Shadow and sent it to try and get a headband from Izuka's team but Tora's blasted it with light bullets causing both Tokoyami and Dark Shadow to scream in pain. Siro sent his tape to try and get Tora's headband since she was distracted but Momo threw a flashbang grenade in the tape's path and when Hanta pulled it back he was blasted by the flashbang grenade exploding on his face. Having no other choice and seeing as two of his teammates were down Ida used his secret technique recipro burst to push his entire team close to Izuka, and Shoto took advantage of the close proximity. He jumped while using his ice to push himself up to try and get Izuka's headband. But Izuku saw Shoto coming and got ready, he then gathered energy from his quirk and the green bioelectricity that's always around him when he has full cowling activated, Shoto saw Izuku preparing something and in a moment of desperation, he activated his flames. But Izuku flicked his finger towards Shoto while yelling lightning cannon. A big mass of wind and green bioelectricity shot out of Izuku's flick at high speed, not only colliding against Shoto's entire body but also exploding in a small lightning and windstorm. Shoto screamed in pain as Izuka's technique shocked and sliced him until it burst sending a paralyzed Shoto through the air, luckily Siro recovered enough to catch him and put him back on top. Shoto's team immediately backpedaled to get away from Izuka's team while Shoto glared at Izuka in anger for not only repelling him but also making him use his quirks fire. Izuka, however, shook his head at him and cockily grinned, he was quite glad that he had made a few new techniques with Harry Sensei's help, though when he showed him what he was planning to name them Harry slapped him in the back of the head. He didn't understand at first why Harry didn't want him to use Smash anymore but then Harry explained that he has to let go of his obsession with everything All Might related, he has to make his own path and he can't do that if he's clinging to his quirks past. One for all is his now and he has to make it his own, he can't do that if he's always copying All Might's moves, harsh but Harry did make a good point so Izuka with Harry's help began to create his own set of special moves. 
This is one of them, lightning cannon is just a fully powered flick engulfed in his green bioelectricity and air pressure, depending on how much power he uses on this special move the bigger and more damage he can cause to his targets, he can even shoot bullet size lightning cannons thanks to his perfect control over one for all. The best thing about this technique is that it has a shocking effect that causes temporary paralysis which is great for capturing villains. It is a great long distance attack that quickly became one of his favorite moves to use so he was quite proud that he was able to push Shoto away with it. Eri brightly smiled and clapped excitedly about how cool her big brother Izuku's special move is that's awesome. Daddy did you see that? Harry nodded and smiled at Eri I sure did, Izuku practiced quite a lot to get that move just right though it did surprise us when we saw the effect. Eri nodded and went back to watching the cool battle going on while cheering for her friends, Hermione, however, hummed what effect. Harry smiled at his girlfriend knowing that she was very curious about Izuku's new technique it has a paralyzing effect, it seems like his bioelectricity targets the nervous system causing it to go numb, just look at Shoto, he can't move and he won't be able to for a while. The girls turned to look toward where Shoto's team was standing and saw him struggling to move while his teammates were trying to keep him up, Susan then said I see, what a useful technique for law enforcement, how long does the paralysis last? Harry looked up in thought hmm I think around 2 or 3 minutes though we did test it on Denki Kaminari and it only brought him down for less than a minute. Susan nodded while Luna then spoke up oh, so it's affected by natural resistances to lightning or electric attacks, can we learn it? Harry nodded I already did it using magic, it is a simple attack though we have to be careful when we use it, overpowering would make the technique cause by Juodama levels of destruction. The girls nodded while Himiko just looked a little confused but she got some of what they were talking about, she didn't have much talent with magic so she was often lost in conversations like these. But she was a genius in the assassination and ninja arts, in fact, she was better than even Toro and she can turn invisible. At first she was a bit sad that she wasn't that good with magic but Harry told her that everyone had their own talents and hers were just different from the rest. So she felt a little bit better afterward, though she still practices magic so she could be better. She might not be able to use most of the spells that Harry and Hermione were teaching her but she was good at a good few, like buffs and debuffs spells and even status effect spells, even though they weren't as flashy as using fire or lightning she is happy with what she can do with them. Time was running out and the contestants began to scramble to get any headbands they could. Shoto's team was forced to forego going after Izuko's or Toru's group and began to attack the rest. Meanwhile, Harry's students felt they had enough points and just continued to play defensively while covering each other's backs. Eventually, time ran out and Midnight loudly cracked her whip and loudly announced the end of the second event while the public loudly cheered and time's up. Well done everyone, you were all very passionate and I love it. Now give us a minute to get the results in. Okako put down her entire team and tiredly sighed, Izuku jumped down and patted her back great job Okako, how are you feeling? Okako turned towards Izuku and gave him a smile I'm fine just a little tired, Harry sensei's modifications to my quirk got rid of the nausea I used to get so no more puking my guts out. Izuku sweat dropped at the casual way Okako just mentioned the way she used to get when she overuse her quirk, Momo and Tsuyo smiled at their friend. Toru, Mina, Eijiro and Mei walked up to them, Toru excitedly began to speak guys, we did it, that was an awesome plan Izuku. Izuko nervously smiled but nodded at his friend while Mei was bothering Momo about her thruster gauntlets and boots but Momo dismissed them and refused to say anything. She had promised Tony Stark that she wouldn't reveal anything she learned from him and Harry modified her quirk so she could destroy anything she created with just a thought, it wouldn't be good if anything she created somewhat landed on the wrong hands after all. Ibera, Kainoko and Pony joined their friends and began to excitedly speak amongst each other while they waited for the results. It didn't take long for Midnight to announce who had moved on to the next round ok, we have the winners. First is Toru Hagakure with 10 million points, and her team Mina Ashido, Eijiro Kirishima, and Mei Hatsum, next is Izuku Midoriya, and his team Okako Yurika, Suyu Aizui, Momo Yeo Ruzu, and then Ibarashi Ozaki, with her team Kainoko Komori, and Pony Tsunatri. Everyone in the stadium cheered loudly for these young heroes in training while Midnight continued next is Shoto Todoroki, and his team Tokoyami Fumikage, Ida Tinya, and Siro Hanta, and in a weird twist of events after his entire team refused to move on to the next round for some reason, the last one moving on is Shinso Hitashi. Now, this last announcement surprised Izuku and his friends not understanding why anyone would choose not to go on so everyone turned around and stared at Hitashi who gave them all a creepy smile. Izuku then turned towards Shinso's teammates who were Yuga, Masharao, and Nairanjiki who looked confused and angry for some reason just what happened to them. I'm going to have to speak with one of them, there's something I don't like about all of this. The second event of the sports festival is over and the third is about to begin but what's going on with Hitashi? And will happen next? Chapter 75, Chapter 75 After announcing who will be moving on to the next event midnight then loudly let everyone know that there will be a 30 minute break before she announces the next event to allow the competitors to rest and for the public should take advantage of this break to go buy something to eat, which a lot of people did so. Izuku and their friends were glad for the break, all of that action made them all super hungry and so all of them decided to go and get something to eat together. However, Shoto stopped Izuku and told him that he wanted to talk to him about something, Izuku frowned but decided to hear him out. 
Okako and the rest told him to hurry up and catch up since they were going to order something for him to which Izuku smiled and nodded at them. Shoto then took him to an empty hallway and stared at Izuku for a long minute. Izuku not liking the fact that Shoto was wasting his time decided to speak up Hey, if you're not going to talk then I'm leaving. Shoto frowned but nodded you made me use his fire. You overpowered me so much that I broke my pledge not to use that side of my power. Izuku frowned because he knew of the fact that Shoto doesn't use his fire and the reason why he was present when Luna was giving Nizo her report on the Todoroki family. After all, he knew how much both Shoto and Miss Rei had suffered. Still Izuku couldn't help to think that Shoto was being too naive for holding back when everyone in their class and in class 1B was giving their all. Shoto went on your quirk is very similar to All Might's and he himself seems to be very interested in everything you do, are you his illegitimate child? If Izuku was the same guy he was before his two weeks of training he might have panicked and probably made a fool of himself but Harry's influence has changed him a lot and that's why he reacted very differently from how his past self would have. So Izuku raised an eyebrow and then started to loudly laugh ha ha ha, I wish, it's true that my quirk is similar to All Might's and that's the reason I approached him, as you know I'm a late bloomer and I had a hard time controlling my quirk, you saw how badly I hurt myself when I used it, so he's been giving me tips and training methods but that's it, Harry sensei is the one who's been helping me the most. Shoto frowned and narrowed his eyes, what Izuku just told him made perfect sense, and right now he didn't even know what to say to Izuku next, his response sort of caught him off guard. Izuku then shrugged and shook his head don't compare me to All Might, we're completely different people, I know of your father Todoroki, and his rivalry with All Might but that has nothing to do with me, don't drag me into things that I quite frankly don't care about. Shoto's eyes widen and just gaped at Izuku after being berated by him, Izuku turned around and began to walk away but then stopped and turned his head towards Shoto you should stop holding back because when you face one of us who have been training with Harry sensei we're not going to show you any leniency, we're going to come at you with everything we have. With that said Izuku walked away from Shoto and went back to his friends to eat something, Shoto however just stood there seething in both anger and disbelief at what Izuku just said to him. In one of the empty hallways, Endeavor was walking around trying to find Shoto to speak to him but to his surprise he found All Might instead. However something in the number one hero's eyes just made him feel nervous for some reason. All Might stared at Endeavor and then spoke up it's been a while, 10 years I believe, how about we have some tea? Endeavor frowned and scoffed at him don't act like we're friends. I don't have time to waste on your nonsense. Endeavor moved to leave but All Might spoke up Engie, we know what you did to your son Toya and your wife Rei. That made Endeavor stop in his tracks, he slowly turned around and stared at All Might with wide eyes full of shock and a bit of fear. All Might narrowed his eyes at Endeavor I can't touch you because of your reputation, trust me I tried to do something about this but you did a good job covering your tracks, Nizo was going to do something about it but someone else decided to deal with you instead. Endeavor glared at All Might but inwardly he was panicking, he was right to think that Nizo had something to do about Arii's disappearance and Shoto's move to the UA dorms but to think that the reason for it was the things he tried to hide for so long. All Might just tiredly sighed and then calmly said Engie, give yourself up to the authorities and confess your crimes otherwise something really terrible will befall you, the person who decided to deal with you can't be bought, can't be reasoned with, he will come for you and make sure you pay for everything you have done, make things easier for yourself before he comes for you. The way and seriousness with which All Might just told him all that made Endeavor begin to nervously sweat, in the end however he's arrogance won and he scoffed, he soon left in a hurry. All Might just stared at him leave and sadly shook his head in disappointment he then spoke out I'm sorry Harry, I just had to try. Harry appeared out of nowhere showing that he was there the entire time under his invisibility cloak it's fine all might, this shows just how much he really cares, either way now I know how he looks, I'll be keeping an eye on him and then deal with him today. All might nodded, he already tried to help Endeavor but now all he could do is let Harry deal with him, it was really too bad, Angie had always had a bad attitude and quite the disregard for public safety but he was also a great hero. Izuku caught up to everyone, he ate and spoke with his friends and fellow trainees about everything they did in the sports festival so far. Sometime after Himiko who was carrying Eri on her shoulders joined them, everyone smiled at the bundle of cuteness who immediately wanted to give everyone a hug for the great job they did during the two first events. Everyone was happy to get a hug from Eri and together they all ate and spoke with Eri about all the cool things they did. Inwardly Izuka was worried about Todoroki and what he might do with that weird and negative mentality he seems to have plus he was also keeping an eye to see if he caught sight of any of Hitashi's teammates, he was still curious to know why they choose not to move forward in the competition. Inko Midoriya was very proud at this moment and happy for her son, he has reached the final event of the sports festival one of the biggest televised events in Japan, and her son has made it to the third event. Throughout the entire thing she had been on the edge of her seat in worry for her son's safety, she knows she was being silly since she was aware of what Izuka was capable of now but as a mother, she couldn't help but worry about him. Though in hindsight she was probably the only one besides Harry who knew what her son was capable of, her son would always show off to her everything he could do, so she was aware of his multiple quirks and techniques. She still doesn't know how and why her son has multiple quirks or why none of them had any resemblance to hers or his father's but she was glad that it awakened, late but awakened. Perhaps the reason it took a while to awaken was that he had multiple ones, it certainly makes sense if she thinks about it like that.
In any case, it didn't matter, right now she was more focused on cheering on her son, all she had to do now was wait for the third event to begin so she could continue to watch Izuko fulfill his dream. Nizu was extremely happy with Harry's students and their improvement, not only with their quirks and tactics but because they seem so confident as well. It's too bad not many took the offer to take Harry's extra lessons, he can see that his students are not only going to be powerful but kind and caring heroes. He can already see how the public and some important heroes were already very interested in them, this was great because he now has the hope that these young heroes in training might just inspire the next generation to be the best they can be. After a while, Izuka and friends walked back to the, the stadium to hear the announcement after making sure that Himiko took Eri back to Harry and the girls, along the way however they were stopped by Nieto Minoma along with a few members of Class 1B, who was complaining about how Class 1A were just a bunch of show-offs and the only reason they made it so far was because they got help from Harry. But Izuko and his friends just ignored him, to them Minoma was just an idiot that hated them for no good reason and they really didn't want to deal with his nonsense. Even Ibera, Kainoko, and Pony didn't want to get involved with him and his hatred towards class 1A especially since they're good friends with some of the students of that class. Momo however got tired of Minoma always provoking them and just running his mouth off so she did what she thinks Harry sensei would have done in her place. She punched Minoma in the face so hard that he actually twirled in midair a couple of times and then dropped to the ground unconscious. Her fellow trainees gaped at her in shock while Momo just huffed and then spoke loudly to everyone else who was supporting Minoma enough. I'm tired of hearing complaints and whining from all of you. Harry sensei offered his extra lessons to everyone. So don't come crying to us now. You never even tried to ask him for some advice or even tips. Everyone looked down not having a response to the scolding Momo was giving them, but Momo was on a roll and just went on and all of this aggression and hate towards my classmates and me make no sense. We didn't ask to be attacked by villains. Some of us almost died that day and it's only because Harry sensei saved us that we got out of that horrible situation safely, but I don't understand why most of class 1B hates us, it just doesn't make any sense why Minoma and some of you just continue to antagonize us. Momo just shook her head and glared at the ones who stood behind Minoma grow up, you're trying to become heroes and this is not how heroes act. With that said Momo walked out and her fellow trainees followed her, leaving Minoma on the floor unconscious, the few students who actually supported him just stood there stunned and surprised by her outburst but right now all they could think about was on Momo's words and how true they are. After a few more minutes all the students who made it to the third event gathered to hear Midnight announce the third event and explain what was going to happen next the next event has been decided and we're having a full-on tournament. The public cheered loudly while Izuka's and his friends smiled maliciously which made most of the students and even Midnight nervously sweat. Harry maliciously smiled as well knowing that the third event was going to be super fun, Harry tilted her head not knowing why her daddy seemed to be very happy right but she just shrugged and went back to eating some candy Izuku and his friends bought her. Luna, Susan, and Hermione smiled as they grew excited about their friends upcoming fights. With Shota and Hisashi, Hisashi loudly said and the third event is a tournament? An epic struggle between rivals, friends, and enemies? This promises to be very interesting. Shota just sighed and then sighed well Cementos is sure going to earn his check during this event. Hisashi sweat dropped. Why would you think that? Shota shook his head and then said Harry's students are bound to be very destructive. As a matter of fact, Harry, do something about the ring so we don't have to keep fixing it. Harry chuckled and nodded, he then flew up off his seat and floated down towards the ring. It didn't take him long to arrive on top of the ring where Midnight was standing. The R-rated hero grinned at Harry hello they're handsome here to work your magic. Harry rolled his eyes, which caused Midnight to giggle hello Namuri you seem to be having fun, and yes I might as well make sure my kids don't break the ring too easily. Midnight nodded and grinned, Harry then bent on one knee and placed a hand on top of the ring, suddenly the ring glowed white for a few seconds and then stopped. Harry nodded to himself and then stood up alright, now this ring is self-repairing and extra resistant so there shouldn't be any problems. Midnight nodded and Harry then began to fly up, Cementos suddenly yelled thanks Harry. Harry nodded at Cementos and then waved at Midnight who winked at him causing Harry to just shake his head in amusement. Midnight was definitely a fun woman and one that liked to flirt a lot, the funny thing is that she will flirt with anyone to who she took a liking to, when Harry and the girls met her she flirted with Luna who just smiled and let it happen. She then flirted with Susan who just laughed and told her that she was hot but not that hot and that she wouldn't cheat on Harry, Midnight called Harry a lucky bastard for that one. Then she flirted with Hermione who blushed and got all nervous which made Midnight try even harder, she even flirted with Mr. Goop who just smiled at her in amusement. But besides that, she was a good and caring woman, one that has become a good friend to them even if she was always flirting with them. After Harry went back to his seat Namuri then announced the pairings for the tournament alright everyone, here's the pairings. First we have Izuko Midoriya vs Shinso Hitashi, then Shoto Todoroki vs Siro Hanta, Ibarashi Ozaki vs Toru Hegakure, Idatina vs Mei Hatsum. The public was very excited and kept loudly cheering every time Midnight announced a pairing while Midnight went on then we have Mina Ashido vs Kaino Kokomori, Momo Yeo Ruzu vs Tokoyami Fumikage, Eijiro Kiri's Hima vs Tsuyu Ajui and finally Okako Yurika vs Pony Tsunatri. Izuku and his friends turned their heads to each other and grinned at the same time, they have never had the chance to face each other in battle and this is the perfect chance to do so. 
Izuku nodded and then spoke, All right, let's do our best, and give it our all, I want to see one of us win this whole thing. Every member of Harry's students fist pumped and roared in excitement, they all wanted to prove themselves, and what better way than to face each other in this tournament. Soon after everyone was then taken to a bunch of stands on the side of the ring and were told to wait a few minutes to get everything ready. While they waited the students who didn't make it past the first and second events were given a chance to participate in a bunch of game-like events in order to at least get some offers from hero agencies. Masharao took advantage of this short break to approach Izuko to talk to him Midoriya be careful with Shinzo, don't respond to any questions, as a matter of fact, don't talk to him. Izuko nodded I see. I wanted to talk to you guys about what happened but I didn't see you or anyone else in his team during the break, what happened Ajiro? Masharao frowned and looked down we don't know, everything during the second event is just a big blank, that's why we decided to not go on forwards it just didn't seem right, during the second event I bumped into someone and I sort of snapped out of it but that's it, I don't remember anything after answering a question Hitashi had. Izuku nodded to Masharao understanding that his decision came from his sense of pride, Harry had taught all of them to be proud of themselves and everything they had accomplished so he can understand where Masharao was coming from okay, I'll be careful, thank you Ajiro. Masharao nodded and went back to his seat but then stopped and turned his head Midoriya please do your best for me too Izuku smiled and nodded to Ajiro who smiled and then began to walk back to his seat again while Izuku began to think what could have happened to Masharao and the rest of his team this sounds like Hitashi has some sort of mind manipulation. Ajiro said not to talk to him, maybe his quirk activates upon the target speaking to the user. But Izuku didn't have any more time to ponder because Midnight called him and Shinzo to come up to the ring to have their match. Soon everything was set up and ready for the tournament, Hisashi then began to cheerfully announce for the third event ladies and gentlemen, the third event is about to begin with the first match. Shona nodded and then spoke, this match promises to be an interesting one but I do feel bad for Shinzo, he has zero chance of winning. Hisashi, the public, and Hitashi sweat dropped at how bluntly Shota had said that, Hisashi recovered and then spoke up air, in any case, the first match is between the mysterious and quite frankly freaky Hitashi Shinzo, against the green-haired tactician and monster Izuku Midoriya. Both Izuku and Hitashi walked up to the ring from opposite sides of the stadium, Izuku has an excited grin on his face while Hitashi had a frown on his. Midnight then spoke up as soon as both young teens reached the middle of the ring OK boys I want to see a clean fight? Go all out and show the world what you can do, me and Cementos will stop the match if it gets too out of hand. Cementos waved and then said, yes, don't worry and give it your all, we'll be here to make sure nothing too bad happens. Both Izuku and Shinso nodded and then Midnight raised her whip and swung it down causing it to loudly crack indicating the start of the match then begin. Izuku stared at Shinso and was about to go on the offensive when suddenly Shinso spoke up I can't believe your friend is such an idiot to waste this chance on something so foolish as pride, we have to be willing to do anything to fulfill our dreams right. Izuku's eyes widened and then he scowled the moment Shinso spoke ill of Masharao, the way Shinso just insulted Masharao's pride like that, Izuku couldn't help but feel angry what did you just say, Shinso glared and maliciously smiled, Masharao groaned and then said that idiot, I even went through all that trouble to warn him, however, something was wrong, very wrong and Hitashi noticed right away when he saw that Izuku was still glaring at him w what, that's impossible, the public was confused, no one knew what was going on, and all they could see was that Izuku was very angry, Hisashi was confused and didn't know what to say but then Shota sighed this is why I keep saying that the entrance exam is illogical. Shinso's quirk is perfect for hero work but because it isn't a battle quirk he wasn't able to make it to the hero course, it really is too bad his first fight is against Midoriya. Hisashi didn't really understand but nodded at the fact that the entrance exam has to be updated or changed since even he himself had seen how unfair it was to certain types of quirks. Thinking that it was a fluke or something Hitashi decided to try to use his quirk one more time you're lucky that you've been blessed Izuku Midoriya. But Izuku just continued to glare at Hitashi which began to make the purple hair student very nervous, Izuku then spoke I see, your quirk activates when someone responds to you right. Hitashi began to panic and lose his cool since Izuku figure out his quirk you shouldn't be able to move, what did you do? Izuku frowned, I and the rest of Harry's students are immune to mental attacks, it's something Harry sensei gave us in order to prevent something or someone from brainwashing us or taking control of us, especially with how powerful we have become. Everyone in the stadium gaped, and Hisashi loudly exclaimed ah, damn it Harry? Just what are you expecting your students to be doing in the future? Shota chuckled well, it is a very logical thing to do Harry is just making sure to both help his students and to make sure they're safe, he's doing his outmost best to prepare his students for anything. Nizu once again cackled in glee liking the way in which Harry was preparing his students for the future, he can just imagine how nervous so many villains are getting about these future heroes. All Might and Nana grinned and sent a thumbs up to Harry in thanks for always helping Izuku and his friends be the best they can be. Harry of course just chuckled, he promised that his kids were going to be the best heroes they could be and like always he always keeps his promises. Shinso gaped for a second and then glared at Izuku you're truly lucky Midoriya, you have a perfect quirk and a good teacher, well my quirk just makes everyone consider me a villain in the making. Life is just unfair to people like me. Izuku narrowed his eyes as he listened to Shinso rant.
He knew how blessed he was to have the support of so many but Harry Sensei had also made him understand that he deserves that support, that he can be proud of everything he had done and endured to this point. So Izuku didn't like what Shinso just said to him shut up. Don't speak to me like you understand everything about me, you don't know me, you don't know what I've been through, how hard I trained to get to this point. Shinso took a step back from the sheer intensity of Izuku's words while Izuku went on. Don't come crying to me about how unfair your life is, do something about it instead and, don't ever insult one of my friends again. Izuku then activated his quirk and a shockwave of energy and green lightning burst out of his body causing Shinso, Midnight, and Cementos to cover their eyes. Izuku then crouched low and got in position to use a technique that Harry Sensei taught him, the green lightning engulfing his body then began to lash out as he then pushed himself forward. As his foot pushed him forward the ring actually cracked from the force of his push and he actually disappeared in a blur. Shinso uncovered his eyes and wildly began to look around only for his eyes to widen in astonishment when Izuku reappeared right in front of him crouching. Izuku then swiftly kicked Shinso on the chin so hard that he was actually sent flying upwards and unable to even move, the only thing he could do is grunt in pain. Izuku then jumped after Shinso and appeared in a blur right behind him, suddenly Izuku activated Black Whip and wraps Shinso tightly with his quirk, and as soon as Shinso's trajectory slowed down and began to fall Izuku then began to spin him at high speed Black Omote Range, Black Front Lotus. Harry watching his student use his version of the Omote Range snapped his fingers and made the ring soft so Izuku wouldn't accidentally kill Shinso. Though he doesn't blame him for being angry, he himself was upset with Shinso's words, still, he's going to have to talk with Izuku about using techniques like these out of anger. To everyone's surprise and shock Izuku and Shinso had become a black drill of sorts and were heading head first into the ground at high speed, just when everyone thought that they would crash, Izuku deactivated Black Whip and jumped away from Shinso who ended up crashing against the ground. Izuku span on the air for a bit and then softly landed on the ring and turned around to see the aftermath of his technique while the public stayed silent. Shinso was on the floor, laying on his back breathing hard and in so much pain, he was barely conscious, suddenly he coughed some blood and groaned. Izuku walked up to Shinso and instantly recognized what had happened, he looked over the stands where Harry was sitting and nodded at him in thanks knowing that Shinso was only alive because Harry had done something, Harry smiled at Izuku and nodded at him. Izuku sighed and then turned toward Midnight who nodded at him and walked up to take a look at Shinso the moment she saw how hurt he was she made a decision right away participant Hitashi Shinso can no longer continue. The winner is Izuku Midoriya. The public then exploded and cheered, Izuku however just glared at Shinso who was just looking up at the sky in silence and reminiscing about his past, and how everyone around him treated him like a villain in the making, Izuku walked up to Shinso and then said, I hope you get a spot in the hero course, you might be an asshole with a massive chip on your shoulders but your quirk is amazing. With that said Izuku walked away from Shinso leaving him to the assistant bots to pick him up and take him away to recovery girls infirmary. Meanwhile, Hisashi was loudly commentating what an amazing technique used by Midoriya. I've never seen such power, skill, and speed being put into use. Shoto nodded yes, to be able to pull off such an attack at that speed and to be able to maneuver in the air like, that is not an easy feat, the amount of training Midoriya must have done to be able to time this technique to such a skill level is sure impressive. Hisashi nodded in agreement and then said it seems that Shinso's usual method of making use of his quirk backfired when Midoriya instead reacted in anger. Shoto sighed and then said, yes, I admit making an opponent angry is usually a good method to get inside an opponent's mind but it can also make them unpredictable and occasionally react extremely aggressively, Shinso just got a bit too cocky and ended up angering the wrong opponent, it's never a good idea to underestimate your opponent especially if you don't know if he's immune or resistance to your quirk. Many heroes watching the sports festival nodded in agreement but some of them were very interested in Shinso's quirk and its practical uses in hero work. After Izuku went back to the lower stands and smiled at his friends, he then sat with them, meanwhile, the ring immediately began to repair itself from the damage it got from Izuku's quirk and technique. Midnight and Cementos watched in odd interest how stone and cement healed in front of their very eyes. Shoto who knew he was meant to go next, silently got up and began to head to the tunnel leading to the ring to come out as soon as he was called out however on the way there he was stopped by someone standing in his way. Endeavor knowing that his son would fight next decided to wait for him in the tunnel he was supposed to be coming out of to talk to him, Shoto narrowed his eyes at him and tried to just walk ahead of his father and ignore him. But Endeavor decided to speak up I'm disappointed in you Shoto, why are you holding back? Stop this rebellious attitude of yours and use your fire, stop playing around you have to surpass all might. But Shoto just turned his head and stared at his dad I will never use my left side, I'll win this tournament using my mother's ice. Endeavor frowned that tactic will only work while you're still in high school but out there in the real world you will be forced at some point to escock. However, to Shoto's shock, Endeavor didn't get to finish his sentence because Harry appeared behind him and held Endeavor up by the throat with telekinesis. Harry then moved his gaze towards Shoto and the young teen took a step back in fear from the glowing green eyes on Harry's face Shoto go, leave your father to me, it's time for him to pay for his crimes. Shoto gulped but nodded, he was actually happy that Harry sensei was going to do something about his father, so he turned around and began to walk but Harry said one more thing that made him stop Shoto, your mom is watching the sports festival, make her proud, dot. 
Shoto turned around and stared at Harry who grinned and nodded at him. Shoto for the first time in a long time smiled and nodded to Harry. The young hero in training then walked away since it was almost time for him to be called for his match meanwhile Harry slammed Endeavor on the ground causing him to grunt in pain. Harry then stomped on his chest I've been waiting to get my hands on you Ng Todoroki, I hope all the suffering you put your family through was worth it because after today I'll make sure you regret it for the rest of your life. Endeavor looked up at Harry and glared at him, the number 2 hero then made his quirk hellfire, flare as hard as he could to try to turn Harry into ash but to his astonishment, Harry was completely unaffected by his fire. Harry grinned at Endeavor you call that flames? I'll show you real flames but first, let's go somewhere else I rather not have innocence get hurt by our battle. After having said that, Harry then teleported himself and Endeavor into his home's training room. Harry then stepped back, Endeavor got up and growled in anger but Harry glared at him, Endeavor then decided to talk do you have any idea who I am? Harry chuckled which caused Endeavor to get even angrier I know who you are Mr. Number 2 hero, I just don't care. Endeavor gritted his teeth and then flared his fire you picked the wrong person to mess with. I'll make sure to destroy you. Harry shook his head you're quite arrogant aren't you, right now Nizu is releasing all the information and evidence we gathered of what happened to your son Toya Todoroki, your wife Rei Todoroki and Shoto, your so called reputation won't matter, you won't be able to hide behind your title as hero Endeavor, by the time I'm done with you, every news network and the authorities will know everything you've done, Endeavor took a step back and began to profusely sweat, he couldn't believe this was happening to him right now, just who was this young man. Enji Todoroki had no way of knowing how much his actions had angered Harry, the number 2 hero just was not ready to deal with a pissed off dragon god and after today he will regret every bad choice he has ever made. Chapter 76, Chapter 76 Nizo was enjoying some cheese while he waited for the second match to begin but suddenly a dark corridor sprouted from the ground beside Nizo's seat and Luna stepped out of it. Nizo stopped eating and turned towards Luna, Luna nodded at him Harry took off with Endeavor, he should be dealing with him right now. Nisa sighed but nodded all right then I'll release everything you found out to the media and the authorities, this will make sure that Endeavor can't escape justice. Luna nodded and then began to walk away while reopening a dark corridor, Nisa took out a tablet and began to send all the information Luna gathered to all news networks and the police, but then Nisa stopped and turned towards Luna is Harry going to kill him. Luna stopped midway inside the dark corridor and turned her head towards Nisa no, but he's going to wish he was dead by the time Harry is done with him. Nisa nodded and Luna stepped inside the dark corridor which dissipated soon after. Meanwhile, all over Musodafu, many news channels began to receive a disturbing amount of recorded conversations of Endeavor harshly training or downright abusing some children which going by the hair color these children have, were his sons. Among all that evidence they even found out how and why he sent his own wife to a mental institution and left her to rot there for many years. All of this information would have been disregarded at first glance but everything they got was signed by the principal of UA Niza and All Might. They couldn't push this news aside even if they wanted to and instead, they immediately began to announce this news all over Japan. Even with the sports festival going full swing the news was still being spread around to the shock of civilians and heroes alike. The only ones completely unaware of what was going on right now were the participants of the sports festival since they were too distracted by the upcoming third event. In one of the alleys of Musudafu, Toya Todoroki now known as Dabi was messing around with his phone bored out of his mind, when the news about Endeavor's many crimes hit the media. Dabi's eyes widened in both shock and disbelief as he watched everything his father has ever done being revealed, even his supposed death was televised, though he was confused as to how that was possible. At that time when his quirk evolved, he was alone and he was sure there were no cameras around so he didn't understand how someone had footage of his death. But Endeavor's crimes were being aired, he's gotten his revenge on his father and he didn't have to even lift a finger. However, Dabi frowned when what had happened to her mother and Shoto was also televised, Dabi hadn't known that his mother was sent to a mental institute and locked in there for so many years much less the abuse his younger brother Shoto had to suffer under their father. He still remembers how envious of Shoto he felt when his father began to ignore him and pay more attention to his younger brother and the hate he felt at that moment and the regret. It seems like his father didn't have any mercy on his younger brother either mom. Dabi looked up at the sky feeling a little lost, with this news moving around the media Endeavor's reputation will be utterly destroyed so right now he didn't have a goal anymore. So what should he do now, was the question running through his mind right now as he stared at the clouds slowly moving with the wind. Fuyamai and Natsuo Todoroki gaped at the news they were watching on TV, they had been watching the sports festival for a while now since their younger brother was on it but while they waited for their little brother's match to begin they decided to channel surf for a bit. Only to be caught by surprise when the news of their father's crimes hit the media, they stared at the TV in disbelief at what they were watching. Fuyamai's face had fat tears coming down her face, she had always had faith that their family might be able to someday be a real family but with this news hitting the media, that hope had died. There's no way her father will be able to recover from all of this and more than likely he will end up in jail for many years, especially for what he had done to Shoto and her mother. Natsuo though, was content and happy for the first time in many years, never in his wildest dreams would he ever think that his father would finally pay for what he had done. Though he moved his gaze toward his sister and felt bad for her, he was aware that she had always wanted everyone in the Todoroki family to finally be a real family. 
But it just wasn't possible not after everything that had happened it's going to be okay Fuyamai. At least we should be able to see mom now. Fuyamai nodded but continued to cry however they suddenly received a text message and both of them read it. To their surprise, it was Principal Nizo who had sent it to inform them that their mother had been living in UA for protection and now that Endeavor will pay for his crime they were allowed to visit her at any time. Both Fuyamai and Natsuo turned to look at each other and stared at one another for a few seconds before nodding at each other. Right then and there both of them decided to go see their mother together and see how she was, so both elder Todoroki siblings got up and immediately left to go to UA. REI stared at the news which was reporting everything her so-called husband had done but no matter how she tried she couldn't feel guilty about it. A part of her was even glad that Enji was going to pay for what he had done to her children. When she received a text from Hermione telling her that Harry grabbed Enji and was going to deal with him, she actually breathed in relief. She was very happy that Harry was able to use the Akashic record or whatever it was called to get actual recordings of what had happened. She didn't understand everything Luna and Hermione had explained about these records but she did understand that it was something really amazing that Harry was able to use it. Still, she was a bit in shock at how everything had happened, and even though she still had a lot of healing to do she was now ready to see her children. Perhaps all of them would like to move in with her in Harry's house and work for UA, she was rather fond of the atmosphere and this house so she wanted to stay here, Shoto already lived in the UA dorms too. So maybe she can convince them to live here, Harry's house does have a lot of rooms, she'll talk about it with Harry when he comes back. She knows she was being a little selfish but both Luna and Harry had told her that it was fine to be selfish and that she shouldn't hold back, especially when it came to the things she loves. So this time REI was going to be a little selfish though the thought of doing this made her giggle feeling a little rebellious for the first time ever. Mr. Goop just wobbled watching REI seems so happy right now so he just stood there with his silly smile while REI giggled herself silly. What REI wasn't aware of was that at this moment both Harry and Endeavor were currently underneath her, in the massive training Harry built under the house. Endeavor however was inwardly having a panic attack, this young man had not only kidnapped him but also informed him of so much bad news that Endeavor just didn't know how to react. Right now his reputation was being destroyed if everything that this guy just told was true and this was something Endeavor has always feared. Harry however continued to glare at Endeavor Humph. It seems that I left you speechless huh? So much for the number 2 hero. Endeavor's eyes widened in pure unadulterated rage, his quirk reacted to his anger and his flames flare to life shut up? Who do you think you are to talk to me like this? Flash fire fist. Hell spider. Endeavor raised a fist and his flames coalesced to it, he then swung his entire arm towards Harry while opening his hand wide, and five heat rays shot out of his finger and headed straight to Harry at high speed. However, Harry summoned Oathkeeper to his hand and easily baited the beams of plasma away from him, shocking Endeavor with the ease with which Harry dealt with one of his super moves. Endeavor gritted his teeth and growled, just who the hell are you? Why are you getting involved in family matters that don't concern you? Why do you even care what happens to strangers? Harry tiredly sighed I'm Harry Potter and I care because I hate child abuse, you have no idea how much I hate the idea of someone hurting a poor kid who can't defend him or herself. As Harry spoke the ground beneath him cracked from his energy lashing out because of his emotions running wild, Harry went on I know how it feels to feel defenseless, weak, the doubts and the fear when an adult hurts you, in the end, you don't understand why. Why would someone who is supposed to protect you, hurt you? Endeavor's eyes widened in shock, finding out that the young man currently glaring at him was the Harry Potter, the man who had trained the kids currently bulldozing their way through the sports festival was something that Endeavor never expected. But that didn't matter, he wasn't about to let some no-name punk talk to him like that, much less ridicule him shut up? What do you know? I just wanted Shoto to surpass me and All Might. So I trained him to be the best. So what if I was too harsh? In the end, he would have been the most powerful hero in the world? Flash Fire Fist, Hell Spider. Endeavor used his super move one more time, this time however he used both hands resulting in 10 heat rays shooting out towards Harry intending to cut him in pieces. But Harry narrowed his eyes and simply said Refliga, a barrier of light surrounded Harry's entire body and as soon as the heat rays hit it, not only did they bounce off but shot back to Endeavor who wasn't expecting such a counterattack and was hit by his own attack engulfing him in fire and the light from the barrier. Endeavor screamed in pain as he was blasted off his feet into the air, he then used his flames-like propulsion to stay in the air shit, if that barrier had bounced my heat rays in their original form I might have been sliced to pieces instead of blowing up, still that hurt a lot, just what is his quirk, first telekinesis, then teleportation, that weird key-like weapon, and now barriers, star. Harry just looked up at Endeavor and suddenly began to float up surprising Endeavor even more you can fly to, just what are you? Harry however just grinned and pointed at him with Oathkeeper just a friendly teacher helping a student and his mother have peace of mind. Endeavor roared in anger and then engulfed his entire body in fire, to Harry it seemed like he had become a mini-sun but to the dragon god, fire like that was nothing to him. From Endeavor's abdomen, a giant heat ray shot out towards Harry prominence burn. Harry then narrowed his eyes and gathered holy fire on Oathkeeper's tip and fired a giant beam of white flames which instantly overcame Endeavor's prominence burn and headed straight into him what? It was only Endeavor's vast experience in battle that saved his life as he used his propulsion to send himself flying to the side. However, Endeavor wasn't fast enough to avoid the beam of white fire and was severely burned on one side of his body causing him to scream in pain. 
Endeavor not able to handle the pain from Harry's white flames drop from high in the air to the ground and crashed back first into the floor, the number two hero grunted from the impact and tried to quickly get up but then his arm and leg along his chest and abdomen suddenly lit up in pain. Harry landed on the ground beside Endeavor and looked down at him my white flames are holy in nature, the more darkness in a person's heart the more pain it causes, you who has done nothing but obsess with power, who in pursuit of that power caused your oldest son to mentally break down and die, you whose actions and attitude cause your wife to break down and lash out at your youngest son has a heart full of darkness that's why my white flames are hurting you even now. Endeavor growled not only in anger but because Harry's words were hitting him hard, Harry did not care and just went on somewhere along the way you forgot what a hero should be, instead you only brought fear, despair, and misfortune on your loved ones. Harry sadly shook his head and then said family always comes first. Endeavor couldn't take it any longer and in one last attempt in trying to shut up Harry, he flared his flames as high as he could engulfing Harry in flames, the power of the flames was so high that the ground underneath both Endeavor and Harry began to melt and turned into lava. But Harry just stood there completely unaffected by Endeavor's flames, Enji Todoroki roared and continued to flare his flames more and more I just wanted to be the best, I just wanted to surpass the man I admired but I couldn't, no matter how hard I try I could never reach all might. Harry silently listened as the power of Endeavor's quirk continued to raise, to the point of the air pressure began to blast everything around them and the heat began to burn and melt the entire area. Harry sighed it's a shame, there's nothing wrong with trying your best, to reach out for a goal but you took it far, what's the point of fulfilling your dream if, in the end, everyone you care about hates you. Endeavor's eyes widen in realization but his pride wouldn't let him end like this, not now, not ever and so his power rose even more shut up and be gone. Prominence burn. A massive beam of heat and flames shot out of Endeavor and hit Harry full on, while the number two hero screamed and released everything he had, intent on turning Harry into ash. But suddenly, within the giant heat ray, a massive roar blew Endeavor's super move away revealing an enormous gold and silver dragon. Endeavor's eyes widen in both shock and fear as Harry in his dragon god form reared his head back and released a roar that echoed through the entire area. Without any hesitation Harry then stomped on Endeavor's body with his foot, the dragon god knowing that Endeavor was out for the count turned back into his human form and looked down towards Endeavor who was barely conscious and frowning in pain as his entire body was broken from Harry's stomp. Harry then floated down and landed right beside Endeavor and then without saying anything he plunged his hand into the number two hero's chest and then just as quickly pulled it out. Endeavor gasped in pain, while Harry looked down at his hand and saw a glowing orange orb, Harry then put the skill orb containing Endeavor's quirk into his inventory and turned to look at the broken form of the number two hero your lucky REI didn't want you dead, she just wanted you to feel what you put her and her children through, how did it feel to be burned like Toya did when he died, or how does it feel to be stumped around as you did to Shoto? How did it feel to be mentally broken like REI was after everything you did? Enji Todoroki, in pain, and without his quirk began to cry for the first time in a very long time just, stop. I get it. Harry frowned but nodded, he then snapped his fingers and teleported Endeavor into the room prepared by Nizo where a detective was already waiting to arrest and take Endeavor to a hospital as soon as he appeared. Harry then tiredly sighed and looked up as he relaxed. Well now, I hope REI and her children can find some peace now. Harry then waved his hand and opened a dark corridor. He immediately stepped inside, he had to be there to cheer for his students after all, to him right now, that was more important. As Harry got back to the stadium he immediately gaped at the giant iceberg that had appeared in the arena what the hell. Luna heard him and giggled Shoto seemed oddly motivated when his match began and ended up overpowering his quirk on poor Siro. Harry sighed and waved a hand vanishing the entire iceberg to the shock of Shoto who was thawing Siro out, inwardly Harry was glad that he had taken Endeavor into the training room, with the time dilation there he was able to be back in time to not miss his students matches. Midnight saw the iceberg disappear and grinned knowing who did it, she then cracked her whip and loudly said and the winner of the second match is Shoto Todoroki. Shoto sighed and frowned, he really didn't want to go this hard against his fellow classmates but it seems like meeting his father riled him up more than he thought. He then looked down towards Siro I'm, sorry. Siro just grinned and shook his head nah man, you have nothing to apologize for, this is a tournament after all. Shoto nodded and then walked away, in his mind he was wondering what had happened to Endeavor after he left him and Harry Sensei behind before his match. As he walked through the tunnel to go back to the side stands with the rest of his classmates he wondered what his mother would think of him right now. Midnight seeing that they could go on with the next match thanks to Harry for getting rid of the giant iceberg that Shoto created, cracked her whip, and then announced that the next match will begin in a few minutes. Shota and Hisashi watched Midnight announce that the next match will begin shortly, Hisashi then loudly exclaimed and the third match is soon to begin. We have the shining star of this year's sports festival Toro Hegakure. Everyone cheered for Toro the moment Hazashi announced that she was fighting next, Toro who had heard Midnight announce that the match would begin shortly had already reached the tunnel leading to the ring and cheerfully walked out while waving at the public with a big smile on her face. Hisashi then went on to announce Toro's opponent going against her is the heavenly messenger, Ibara Shiozaki. Ibara came out of the tunnel looking all prim and proper but with a soft and kind smile on her face, she waved at the public who were also excited to see her, many were very impressed and interested in her abilities. Harry sweat dropped and turned towards Hermione where did those titles even come from? 
Hermione giggled and shook her head Nisa came up with them after the first event, he said that it would hype the people up and get the kids more attention from hero agencies. Harry nodded but shook his head Nizo is always doing something weird, but oh well I can't really say anything about it since I myself do things like these often enough. The girls smugly smiled at Harry who just rolled his eyes and grinned at them Eri and Himiko were too busy cheering for Toro and Ibera so they missed the whole conversation. In the ring both Ibera and Toro were facing each other while smiling, Toro looked around and then spoke I never thought that I would be cheered on like this, honestly it all seems like a dream. Ibera softly smiled and nodded I know what you mean but Toro this isn't a dream and you worked really hard to reach this point, we all did, it's thanks to Lord Harry that we have been able to reach this height of power and skill. Toro sweat dropped but giggled at the way Ibera addresses Harry, most have gotten used to her acting like Harry is a creator god which he is but everyone knows that Harry isn't a fan of being treated like that. But there were moments where everyone thinks that Ibera is just messing with Harry, like right now when Toro can see the small and amused smile on Ibera's face sigh. Ibera you know Harry sensei doesn't like to be called lord. Ibera just giggled and seemed to be having fun which in turn made Toro and Harry who were listening sweat drop even more. Suddenly Midnight cracked her whip loudly and loudly declared let the third match begin. The public cheered loudly but Ibera and Toro stood there standing staring at each other, Ibera then spoke up I'm usually not one for conflict or fighting but I must admit that I find myself excited to face off against one of my fellow students. Tora grinned and nodded me too. I blame Harry Sensei that we all became sort of battle crazy or like Ajiro would say, manly. Ajiro grinned proudly while Harry chuckled at Toro blaming him for their competitive natures. Suddenly Toro disappeared in a flash of light but Ibera immediately reacted and whipped her vines all over the ring, Toro not having any other choice but to stop and create a barrier of light around herself to prevent the vine from hitting her. Ibera smiled and then stomped the ground sending a wave of rock and earth from around the ring toward Toro who narrowed her eyes and jumped up to avoid it. Ibera immediately sent her vines to catch Toru in midair knowing that she wouldn't be able to avoid them while she was in the air. Toru's eyes widened when she saw Ibera's vines head her way but then she grinned and loudly said shining wings. Using her light manipulation Toru created wings of light from her back and with one flap of her new white and shining wings she avoided Ibera's vines. Ibera's eyes widened in surprise and awe upon seeing one of Toru's super moves, the public gawked at Toru as she stayed high in the air with her white light wings shining under sun's rays. Eri was awed as she watched Toru's pretty wings but then she noticed something about them. Oh? They look like daddy's wings when he's a dragon. Luna, Hermione, and Susan narrowed their eyes and took a closer look at Tora's wings. Luna hummed you're right sweetie, they look exactly like Harry's wings. Harry chuckled and then shook his head ah so that's why Toru kept asking me to see my wings, she must have been working on creating them using mine as a base. Everyone nodded and smiled at what Toro had accomplished all by herself, Harry was definitely flattered and proud of her. Tora spread her wings wide and then flapped them towards Ibera. From her wings multiple rays of white light shot out at high speed towards Ibera who raised her arms and the earth and stone around the ring reacted and formed an earthen barrier around them. The rays of light crashed against Ibera's earth and stone barrier and engulfed it in a barrage of explosions that shook the arena. Midnight and Cementos scream in fright from the blasts, Toru however dropped back to the ring and then vanished from sight. Ibera as soon as she stopped sensing rays of light hitting her barrier let it down and looked around with a frown oh no, she turned invisible. But Ibera didn't have time to think or do anything because she was forced to quickly raise a pillar of earth to block multiple shurikens of light heading for her. She wasn't fast enough to block them all and she was cut by some that were able to reach her. Ibera not wanting to be caught by surprise again raised a hand and then waved it causing a wave of dust and dirt to fly up. The wave of dust however also hit Toro and covered her in dirt which revealed her location to Ibera who immediately sent her vines towards Toro who was too busy coughing from the dust and ended up being whipped all over her body. Toro screamed in pain from the whipping she got from Ibera's vines but recovered quickly and waved both arms towards Ibera sending multiple kunao towards Ibera. Ibera quickly batted them away with her vines and then stomped the ground sending multiple spikes of earth and stone to move through the ground toward Toro. But Toro clapped her hand together and then spread her arms wide open, in her hands, she created two windmill shurikens with light and began to spin them so fast that they looked like propellers. Before the spike of earth and stone could reach Toro, the light user jumped back and threw the windmill shurikens as hard as she could. The earth and stone spike were instantly sliced and cut by Tora's light windmill shurikens and headed towards Ibera who frowned and then pointed both hands towards the windmill shurikens heading her way. An enormous amount of earth and stone suddenly coalesce in front of Ibera as she created an enormous arm and hand which not only stopped the windmill shurikens but also crushed them as well with its hand. As everyone in the stadium was gaping at the amazing battle going on between Ibera and Toro Hisashi just threw his hands up I give up? Just what is this? What is Harry teaching these kids that they can do all of this in their first year of hero schooling? Shota grinned at his friend's exasperation whatever it is, it's doing wonders on his kids, honestly, everything I've seen so far has been amazing. Hazashi was growling and grabbing his head not believing all of this craziness but everyone ignored him in favor of watching the incredible battle going in in the arena right now. Toru frowned when she saw Ibera stop her attack but then her eyes widened in surprise when Ibera suddenly clapped her hands and then created a bunch of golems from the earth she collected so far. Toru sighed and created a pair of blunt katanas with light and disappeared in a flash of light, Ibera watched as Toru moved at incredible speed and destroyed her golem army with ease. 
Toru headed straight toward Ibera destroying any golem heading her way. Soon she appeared in front of Ibera and swung at her with the light katanas. She was able to hit her shoulders which made Ibera grunt in pain but at that moment she stopped from further hitting Ibera as the earth user used her vines and wrapped them around Toru tightly. Ibera dropped to her knees breathing hard from the pain she was feeling in her shoulders but didn't let go of Toru who she began to squeeze with her vines. Toru screamed in pain as she was being crushed. Ibera slowly raised an arm groaning in pain and then waved it towards Toru, the earth and stone around them gathered and created a bunch of small balls which immediately began to shoot forward toward Toru and hit her hard. Toru growled and gritted her teeth in pain no, I can't lose yet. Not when I made it this far, mgrrr, I won't lose here. Toru's body began to release an enormous amount of light which created a giant spiraling pillar of light that instantly burned away the vines and earth bullets, Ibera covered her eyes to protect them from the intense light coming from Toru. Toru was now free from Ibera's vines and with a roar of defiance she let out a massive shockwave of light and heat off. Ibera not expecting such an attack and being already too injured could not stop herself from being sent flying out of the ring and harshly crashing against the wall. Midnight and Cementos held on for dear life as they were being pushed away by Toru's light shockwave. Harry waved a hand and created a barrier to protect the public who screamed in panic. The pillar of light and the shockwave soon subsided and allowed them to see the state in which the participants found themselves. Toru was standing in the ring breathing hard but smiling towards Ibera who was outside the ring and completely driven inside a wall, Toru breathed out and then said, H how did you like my luck so lease, shine of the sun. Ibera just groaned and then dropped to the ground, Midnight who finally recovered from almost being sent away flying, loudly announced the winner from the third match is Toru Hagakure. Midnight then dropped on her butt and then dropped on her back, the public stayed silent for a few seconds but then exploded in celebration. Hazashi loudly began to speak up there you have it, listeners. Toru Hagakure the Shining Star is moving on to the next round. Shota nodded proud at his students' skill and ability. She certainly impressed everyone here today. Back in the arena Toru smiled and nodded oh good I won, but I think I'm going to take a nap, everything hurts, a lot. With that said Toru dropped to the ground face first from the amount of energy she used and the damage Ibera put her through. However before the service bots could pick her and Ibera up, Harry suddenly appeared in the arena. He then gently floated his students up with telekinesis and then turned towards Cementos and said I'll take care of them, you guys can relax. Cementos just waved Harry away still a bit rattled from that crazy super move Toru just pulled off. Harry chuckled at his friend and then floated both Ibera and Toru to his sides as he began to walk towards the tunnel. However Ibera opened her eyes and looked at Harry, she suddenly smiled oh, is that you lord? Am I going to heave Kaya? She was cut off from what she was saying because Harry's poked her very injured shoulder, Harry chuckled and shook his head quiet you. Ibera despite being in pain giggled what a cruel and uncaring lord, whatever has a devoted believer as myself done to deserve such punishment. Harry rolled his eyes at Ibera's drama but gave her a grin which made Ibera giggle in amusement, Harry then gently said you did good Ibera, I'm proud of how far you've come in these past two weeks. Ibera blushed but smiled it's all thanks to you Harry sensei, thank you, Harry smiled and patted Ibera's head as he continued to walk towards the infirmary to heal both of his students you were the ones who put in the effort, all of you did, be proud of what you accomplished. Ibera nodded and smiled, the rest of the way was spent messing around with her sensei while her friend was passed out, Ibera couldn't help to think how fun these past two weeks have been with her new friends and sensei. Meanwhile in an ambulance surrounded by police cars lay a very injured Endeavor, after Harry had beaten him within an inch of his life and taken away his quirk, Endeavor couldn't do anything but reflect on his past. As soon as he was teleported away from wherever Harry had taken him he was immediately arrested and put in an ambulance while a detective told him his rights and the crimes he had committed. Endeavor was being treated like any other villain and he hated the feeling, he a hero, treated like he would treat those he captured, it was absurd but it did show him how far he had fallen because of his ambitions. He had never stopped to think how his actions would have been perceived by others much less his family, now having gotten told all of his crime by a detective struck him deeply. It made it all so much more real and for the first time in his life Endeavor couldn't help but feel disgusted with himself, he was no better than the villains he had sent to prison himself and now he was paying the consequences of his actions. He no longer had his power, he was about to lose his hero agency and he's lost his family, no he had lost his family a long time ago, he was no longer Endeavor. He was just Enji Todoroki the criminal, his life had changed in a matter of minutes and he had no one to blame but himself. So as Enji was being transported to the hospital chapter 77, chapter 77, Harry took the girls to the infirmary and healed them of all their injuries, he then gave them a pineapple gel so they could recover all of their spent energy. Recovery girls was certainly impressed with Harry's talents in healing and medicine and even asked how he learned all of that, Harry just told her that he had good teachers and family who were doctors. After that he left the girls to rest and went back to his seat where the girls, Himiko and Eri were waiting for him, Eri immediately asked him if Toru and Ibera were okay. Harry smiled at his daughter and then patted her head, he then told her that they were fine and that he had healed them up, which made Eri very happy. A few minutes later the fourth match between Ida Tinya and May Hatsum began, to Harry's amusement May just proceeded to use Ida as a test dummy to showcase her inventions. He was definitely impressed with what she had created and she even reminded him a bit of Tony, just not as accident prone as May. 
In the end though, after Mei had shown all of her inventions and all of their functions she then forfeited the match to Ida and left the ring with a proud and mischievous smile on her face. Which of course made Harry chuckle, especially when he stared at the face of disbelief and betrayal that Ida had, that boy needed a good dose of common sense. Harry enjoyed the show and found it funny, Himiko was laughing her butt off at Ida's misfortune while Luna and Susan giggled at the shenanigans of May but Hermione had a very interested look in her eyes and Harry knew that she would be approaching May in the future. After a few minutes of break, the fifth match was called and Hisishi and Shota loudly announced the next participants of the tournament. Hisishi just finished having a good chuckle after watching Ida's misfortune of being used by May while Shota just shook his head and sighed, Hisishi then composed himself and began to announce the fifth match alright listeners, let's get the fifth match started? We have the acidic dancer Mina Ashido versus the mushroom princess Kainoko Komori. The public loudly cheered while Shota began to speak these two girls are also personal students of Harry so expect another amazing match. Hisishi nodded that's right. Having watched some of his students already fight I can honestly say that I'm excited to see what the two girls can do. Everyone in the stadium began to chant the girl's name and as soon as they stepped out of the tunnel the public exploded in excitement. Both Mina and Kainoko got up to the ring and stared at each other but they couldn't help but blush from all the attention they were getting, Mina giggled and then looked around. This is certainly amazing huh? Kainoko nodded and looked around as well, the public was still chanting their names and even though she felt a little embarrassed she was also very excited yeah, I never thought I would be cheered on like this, I was fully aware how my quirk wasn't as impressive as others so I had already accepted that I was never going to amount to much as a hero but this. Mina nodded yeah me too, I didn't think I would get any attention, my quirk is dangerous and it makes people nervous, they try to hide it but even I could tell my family was always a little cautious about me and what I was doing, at some point I just accepted the fact that perhaps I wouldn't be a very famous hero but I at least wanted to show the world that I wasn't dangerous. Kainoko nodded, it seems that everyone had insecurities and fears, so she wasn't the only one, something that Harry has always told them was that with every person you meet there's always a long and complicated story behind them and that if they wanted to be heroes they have to be open-minded and understanding of the people. Kainoko giggled and then said, Harry-sensei has certainly changed us a lot. Mina nodded and then turned her head to where Harry was sitting with his family, Mina grinned and then cheerfully waved at him which Harry returned with a smile on his face yeah but I like to believe he changed us for the better, what do you think Kainoko? Kainoko also waved at her sensei and got a wave in return as well definitely, Harry sensei is the best teacher ever, I like to think we all became better people too. Mina smiled and nodded to Kainoko, Midnight who was listening to everything the girls were saying smiled happy to see these young women grow before her very eyes but she had a tournament to start and so she cracked her whip letting the girls know to get ready. Both Mina and Kainoko got ready and Midnight then cracked her whip one more time begin. The girls immediately exploded into action, Mina skated herself with acid on her feet at full speed towards Kainoko who waved her hand and released a big number of spores and spread them with wind. Suddenly the spore grew to giant mushrooms which headed straight towards Mina who just began to swipe her arms and throw acid towards the big mushrooms and melted them into nothing on the spot. Kainoko frowned watching her mushroom barrage melt so fast and how fast Mina was closing the gap between them, to prevent Mina from reaching her and engaging her in close quarters combat, Kainoko pointed her fingers at Mina air bullets. From Kainoko's ten fingers shot out multiple bullets made out of condensed air and headed straight toward Mina whose eyes widened but she quickly danced around the bullets without even missing a beat. However, some of the air bullets still grazed her cutting her arms and legs a little, which made her grunt in pain ouch, those air bullets are super sharp, if they hit me full on they'll go straight through me, though she's only aiming at my legs and arms, she's trying to slow me down and weaken me before I could get to her. That was Kainoko's plan, she knew that Mina was among the best in hand-to-hand -hand combat and she didn't want to trade fists with her knowing she would be at a disadvantage, so she was trying to keep her away and caused her enough damage to slow her down and weaken her as much as possible before she got to her. But Mina was also very good at dodging and moving, she has amazing flexibility and dexterity, everyone knew that she would be hard to catch and even if you did she would just splash acid at your face for trying to. So Kainoko wasn't surprised when she saw Mina reach her, frustrated? Yes, but not surprised, Mina as soon as she got Kainoko within her range she tried to grab hold of her and take her down with a submission hold. However, Kainoko knowing exactly what Mina was planning of doing to her, spread her arms and a burst of wind suddenly flared out of her body sending Mina flying away from her. Mina artfully spined around a couple of times in midair until she softly landed on her hands and feet like a cat, she then looked up and narrowed her eyes towards Kainoko, who was nervously sweating with how close she came to being taken down by Mina. Luna hummed and then turned towards Harry who was intently watching his students Harry, did you ever give an extra ability to Mina and Ajiro? If I remember correctly you didn't do it right away because you weren't sure what to give them right. Harry turned his head towards Luna and nodded oh, well after the first week of training I gave them an extra skill, they wanted to keep it a secret for the sports festival. Luna nodded but Himiko who was cheering loudly suddenly spoke up huh, you gave something to Mina and Ajiro and you didn't tell us? How could you Harry sensei? Harry chuckled and patted Himiko's head causing her to actually purr sorry Himiko but they wanted to surprise everyone. Himiko pouted at Harry but nodded in understanding, Hermione, curious as to what he had given to Mina and Ajiro decided to ask so, what did you give to Mina? Harry turned his head towards Hermione and smiled well. 
Mina then clapped her hands together and took a big breath, she then breathed out a purple poison cloud towards Kainoko. Kainoko's eyes widened in surprise and tried in panic to blow the poisonous cloud away with a wave of wind but she just ended up just stirring it around the ring for a bit before she dissipated it with another gust of wind. Kainoko began to cough and sway around a bit as she breathed in some of the poison. What was that? Cough, cough. Mina smiled and then stood up that's my poison manipulation skill. Harry sensei gave it to me after I finished my physical training. With it I can eat or drink any poison, toxin, or chemical and my body would not only become immune to it but it would also be able to naturally produce it and Harry sensei has all kinds of poisons from different places so I'm quite well equipped FYI I can also add poison to my acid. Everyone in the stadium sweat dropped upon hearing Mina's explanation of her new ability and the cheerful way she just explained that she could poison anyone with pretty much all kinds of toxins. Hermione gaped at Harry who just shrugged and grinned at her showing he had no regrets about giving Mina such a skill. His ishi just loudly sighed dang it Harry. Why would you turn your student into a biochemical bomb? Use some common sense. Suddenly Shota who just deadpanned towards the ring and the girls got a text message, so he took out his phone and read it well, I just got a text from Harry saying and I quote common sense? What's that? Can I eat it? His ishi groaned while the public sweat dropped about Harry's response to all of this, Shota then shrugged in any case, that ability matches Miss Ashido quite well and it will help her a lot in her hero work. Midnight's eyes sparkled in interest as she heard Mina explain her new ability, it was very similar to her so perhaps she could take Mina under her wing and teach her how to be a hero. Kainoko coughed a few more times while her eyesight became blurry, still she pouted towards Mina even though she was feeling rather sick not fair cough, you totally caught me by surprise, sigh, looks like I'll have to try and finish this with one move. Mina raised an eyebrow towards Kainoko who then pointed both hands towards Mina and then activated both her quirk and her wind manipulation skill and then shot a massive twister with a bunch of massive mushrooms flying inside the tornado towards Mina. The mushroom-filled twister headed straight toward Mina who was so surprised by the sudden unexpected attack that she wasn't able to dodge AHH. I have to do something? Think, think, think. Oh, that might work. The twister seemingly reached Mina and engulfed her in a windstorm and giant mushrooms. Everyone watched intently trying to see where Mina was within the wind but no one could see anything. Eventually Kainoko couldn't keep up her attack and she let it dissipated but the poison had finally done enough damage to her and she dropped on her knees and hands while sweating profusely. She was breathing very hard and fast but she continued to look ahead to see where Mina was. She was sure she hit her so she just wanted to confirm that she was out. But to Kainoko's and then everyone in the stadium's surprise Mina suddenly came out of a hole in the ring and then threw herself to the side, her gym uniform was in tatters, and on her skin, she had purple bruises and cuts that were bleeding all over the place. She then sat up and slowly began to stand up, everyone turned to look at the hole in surprise and watched as it quickly began to close up and repair itself. Everyone was confused but Shota seemed to understand what she did oh, she melted a hole through the ring and took refuge underground though it seems she wasn't fast enough and was still hit by Kainoko's sharp wind and giant mushrooms. His as she whistled what an impressive show of fast thinking, if she hadn't done that she would have been knocked out of bounds and more than likely crashed against the wall of the stadium. Shota nodded not only that, to be able to make her acid strong enough to melt cement and keep doing it fast enough to prevent the same cement from repairing itself over her head was an excellent show of skill over her quirk. Mina grinned but winced in pain from all the wounds on her body, Kainoko sighed hat, you got me good Mina, next time I'll beat you? Mina smiled at Kainoko and nodded, she knew that if she hadn't taken Kainoko by surprise with her new ability she might have lost, Kainoko's wind ability is the perfect counter against someone like her who relies a lot on hand to hand combat. Kainoko finally succumbed to the poison and passed out face first against the ground which made Mina cringe since that must have hurt a lot. Midnight seeing that Kainoko couldn't continue cracked her whip and loudly announced the winner of this match the winner is Mina Ashido. Mina sighed and then dropped on her butt, she was in a lot of pain and she was bleeding all over the place but she was happy that she won her match, suddenly her sensei appeared beside Kainoko and used a spell to cure her from her poison state. He then made her unconscious body float up and followed him as he walked over to her once he reached her he got on one knee and patted her head which made Mina blush deep purple you did good Ashido, quick thinking, it seems like yours and Ajiro's plan paid off too. Mina smiled at her sensei and nodded, it certainly helped to keep her new ability a secret till now was that very ninja of me sensei. Harry chuckled and healed Mina of all her injuries while also making her tired body float up yup. That was very ninja of you Ashido. Mina shakily fist pumps yay, ugh, I'm very tired sensei. Harry nodded I know, you overworked your quirk melting that hole open in the ring plus you kept it on so the hole wouldn't close on you, of course, you would feel tired but don't worry I'll give you a pineapple gel in a bit and you'll be as good as new plus you'll get to rest until it's your turn to fight again. Mina nodded and smiled at her sensei as he took her and Kainoko into the infirmary to rest and a nap doesn't sound too bad right now and with that Mina closed her eyes and fell asleep. Midnight watched on with a smile on her face as Harry took his students to the infirmary after healing them and making sure they were alright. The reason she and Cementos weren't too worried about Harry's students going all out like this was that they knew that Harry was there to make sure nothing escalated too high. Nizu had told them ahead of time not to interfere too much in the fights of Harry's students and they haven't, still, Midnight thought it was sweet that Harry cared about his students this much. 
Midnight giggled and then shook her hand, cracking her whip she announced a five minute break so the ring could repair itself completely and so the next contestants can get ready. Momo smiled and then got up knowing she was next and after waving at her friends she walked away to head towards the ring. Tokoyami was quite scared of facing Momo in battle, by now everyone in class 1A and 1B were all aware of how strong Harry's students are, so no one wanted to face any of them. When Harry sensei had tested everyone in battle and the ease with which he had beaten all of them had hit everyone pretty hard, some sought to prove Harry wrong and grow strong enough to beat him on their own. Others just didn't care enough and just did the minimum even when Harry would give them a lesson or a lecture these young heroes in training did not try hard enough. Some let their pride dictate their actions and sought to ignore Harry's words or his help but then there were those that were inspired and took his hand when he offered his help in training them. Boy was everyone regretting not taking Harry's hand when he offered his help to them, now they can clearly see the results of his training in the small group that chose to accept his help. It was nothing short of extraordinary how much this small group of students has improved not only with their quirks but with their skills as well. Nonetheless, Tokoyami still wanted to give it his all, even if he was bound to lose he will still try his best and hoped that a hero gets interested in him enough to get an offer to intern at a hero agency. So Tokoyami nodded to himself and stood up, he then left towards the tunnel leading to the other side of the ring to face Momo in battle. Everyone in class 1A watched him leave with worried faces hoping that he will be able to put up a good fight against Momo. Soon both Momo and Tokoyami began to walk out of the tunnels and head towards the ring while Hazashi began to loudly announce ladies and gentlemen the sixth match is about to begin. We have the Dark Knight Tokoyami Fumikage, and the Goddess of Creation Momo Yeo Ruzu. Momo blushed as soon as she heard the title she was given she felt a bit embarrassed to be called a goddess like that but the public seemed to like it with how loud they cheered for her. Tokoyami nodded in approval liking his title and slightly smiled as he walked forward towards the ring. Soon both contestants met in the middle of the ring and stared at each other ready for their upcoming battle. Midnight grinned noticing how eager both of them seemed. Not wanting to keep Momo, Tokoyami, and the public waiting Midnight cracked her whip and loudly said begin. Tokoyami immediately moved to attack Momo with Dark Shadow, the bird-like being created by darkness launched itself toward Momo and clawed at her. But Momo easily dodged every attack sent her way while she began to create a few things to quickly take down Tokoyami and his quirk. Tokoyami narrowed his eyes at the ease with which Momo was dodging Dark Shadow's attacks but then his eyes widened when Momo suddenly made a shotgun and pointed at him. In a panic, he recalled Dark Shadow and made it shield him from the shotgun but Momo smiled and then threw a flashbang she had made toward both Tokoyami and Dark Shadow. Both looked down and stared at the flashbang in disbelief while Momo put on a pair of sunglasses and then smiled while softly saying boom. The flashbang detonated loudly and released a bright flash of light causing both Dark Shadow and Tokoyami to scream in pain. Dark Shadow unable to to take the brightness of the attack immediately went inside Tokoyami. Now blinded and unable to defend himself Momo then began to shoot Tokoyami with her shotgun. Each shot hit Tokoyami head on and pushed him back as Momo continued to shoot and walked forward, thankfully she was using beanbags as ammunition. Still, they hurt like hell, and Tokoyami would scream or grunt in pain every time he was hit, unluckily for him thanks to Momo having better control of her quirk she can create ammunition directly into the shotgun's chamber. This way Momo quite literally has infinite ammo and she had no reason to let up her attack on poor Tokoyami who was pushed all the way to the end of the ring where Momo had finally reached him. Tokoyami by now was still blinded and quite hurt but he was still able to hear Momo and he knew that he had lost this match, Momo smiled and then pointed her shotgun towards Tokoyama's forehead sorry fumikage but Harry sensei always told us to show no mercy, good luck next year. With that said Momo pulled the trigger and Tokoyami was hit in the forehead by a beanbag and sent flying backward and out of bounds, Momo sighed and then dismissed her weapon. Midnight gaped at Momo, Cementos as well gaped at her. Hizashi and Shota also gaped at her not knowing what to say at the sheer savagery and mercilessness of this young hero in training. Even the public was gaping at Momo not being able to believe what they saw Momo just do. All Might and Nana gaped as well in disbelief, what they just saw was ruthlessness of the highest order and they honestly didn't know what to say about it. Nizu who was sitting beside them was loudly cackling in glee, he certainly found it entertaining the ease with which Momo dismantled Tokoyami. The villains watching the sports festival suddenly paled not wanting to ever come across this little lady, even Tamira shivered a bit in horror not wanting to be shot like that. All for one was even gaping at what he just heard and saw what is this Harry Potter teachings these kids? No mercy? Just what kind of hero teaches this kind of thing to his students? Poor all for one, he had no way of knowing that Harry wasn't training them to be just heroes but how to survive and win against any opponent, he was utterly unprepared for this type of hero, something that will later prove to be his downfall. However Harry chuckled and nodded, he was certainly proud of Momo, out of everyone training under him, she might seem the most kind and gentle but in reality, she had become the most ruthless of all of his students. Especially since Harry had trained her in all kinds of tactics and weapons use, he had made sure that Momo had the right type of mentality and the knowledge to be a walking armory. The fact that he had forced her to constantly think on her feet and react rather than wait and plan made her a very dangerous opponent and this match proved it to the world. Mom had become someone who is efficient in the art of combat, she is now a battle machine that only someone like his students have the possibility to take down, others just didn't have the strength and ability to even pose a threat towards Momo. 
Luna and Susan giggled as they watched Momo take down Tokoyami in a matter of seconds while Hermione sighed and facepalmed at the fact that her boyfriend had corrupted another person. Eri was cheerfully clapping for Momo happy that another one of her friends had won her match, Himiko, however, was laughing, she always found it funny to see Momo be this ruthless, for some reason she found it hilarious. Momo watched as the aid bots picked Tokoyama's unconscious body up and took him to the infirmary, she then turned her head towards Midnight and tilted her head in confusion. She didn't understand why Midnight hasn't announced that she had won so she stood there and stared at Midnight waiting for her to announce she had won. However, Midnight was too busy gaping at what she had just witnessed so Harry took it upon himself to do her job for now. Harry stood up and then projected his voice to the entire stadium ladies and gentlemen, the winner of the sixth match is the goddess of creation Momo Yeo Ruzu. Harry's voice seemed to help everyone snap out of whatever state they were in, the first to react was the public who began to loudly cheer and applaud Momo who blushed and waved at everyone with a big smile on her face. Both Hisashi and Shota snapped out of it as well, Hisashi was the first to speak air right. There you have it folk. The winner of the sixth match is Momo Yeo Ruzu, boy is that girl scary. Shota nodded and then no doubt. I sort of feel sorry for any villains that might cross her path in the future. Hisashi nodded and then spoke up again that's right. To all villains out there watching the sports festival, please just surrender when you see Miss Yeo Ruzu. We don't want to have to clean up a big mess. Many villains in Japan actually nodded in agreement. Momo was not someone they ever want to face that's for sure. Midnight sighed and shook her head. She cracked her whip and then said all right everyone let's take 10 minutes before the seventh match begins. I think a lot of us need some time to compose ourselves. Momo nodded and walked back towards the tunnel to go meet her friends, Kainoko and Mina were already back from the infirmary and smiled at her the moment they saw her. All of Harry's students were together and talking to each other about their matches, even though some of them hadn't won they were still pretty happy with their performance and very proud of how far they have come. Meanwhile, their fellow classmates stared at them with a bit of jealousy, however, they weren't brave enough to say or do anything knowing that these fellow classmates weren't pushovers and more than like they would hit back. Meanwhile, in the Potter home REI was sweat dropping. Having known Momo for a while now she was still surprised whenever she sees this merciless side of her. You would never guess that she was this ruthless by just looking at her and it was still hard to believe that Harry had turned a sweet and caring girl like Momo into a ruthless fighter. Suddenly Mr. Goop wobble a bit and turned to look towards the front door which caught Rei's attention. Suddenly there was a knock at the front door which surprised Rei a bit. No one was supposed to visit Harry today so she was a bit nervous and scared of who it might be but thankfully a dark corridor erupted from the ground by the front door and Harry stepped out of it. The dark corridor instantly dissipated as Harry stepped through it and the dragon god looked around for a bit until he saw Rei and Mr. Goop looking at him. Harry smiled at them and gave them a wave, Rei blushed a bit and returned it while Mr. Goop just continued to smile and wobble, Harry then turned towards the door and opened it. To Rei's shock, on the other side of the front door stood her daughter Fuyamai and son Natsuo, Rei stood up from the couch and stared at her oldest children, as she watched her son and daughter she began to tear up they're so big now, I've missed a lot. Fuyamai and Natsuo looked at Harry first but then noticed their mother standing and staring at them with wide and wet eyes, Fuyamai covered her mouth and sobbed the moment she saw her mother and how well she seemed. Natsuo teared up as well as he stared at his mother, Harry smiled and moved out of the way, and both Fuyamai and Natsuo took off running and hugged their mother tightly while crying. They couldn't believe she was out of that awful lonely room in the psychiatrist's ward and that she looked so calm and well. Rei cried and sobbed while she held her oldest children, she began to continuously apologize to them for everything they had to endure but both Fuyamai and Natsuo shook their heads and just held on to her tightly. Harry walked up to Mr. Goop and watched Rei finally have her children in her arms this is a big step for her, now all that she has to do is forgive herself though that's going to be the hardest step to take. Harry looked out of a window and towards the sky, there was a time in his life when he blamed himself for the deaths of his parents, there was a part of him that always believed that both his mom and his dad would have lived long happy lives if he was never born. Both of his parents gave him an ass whopping and a big talk when he met them in the afterlife when he died the first time, they didn't agree with Harry's sentiment at all. In fact, they were eternally grateful that he was born, it took a while but he was able to move on and accept his parents' deaths, he was able to forgive himself and continue living. So Harry is well aware that Rei still had a long road towards recovery, not just mentally but spiritually as well, thankfully her children seemed to be willing to be there for her and Harry was happy for Rei. Harry felt Mr. Goop move and turned to see what the giant mass of metal slime was doing, to his surprise he watched as Mr. Good joined in the group hug. Harry sweat dropped as he watched Rei, Natsuo, and Fuyamai unable to sustain Mr. Goop's weight and fall down on the ground as a result. Natsuo suddenly shouted, whoa, what the hell is this? Rei then shouted as well ahh, Mr. Goop, you're too heavy. Fuyamai however was distracted by something else what an impressive manly mustache. Harry couldn't help it and laughed as he watched the three white-haired Todorokis on the floor struggle to get out from under Mr. Goop, Rei looked up at Harry and pouted at him Harry, don't just stand there and laugh, get him off us. Harry grinned but nodded at Rei he then walked up to Mr. Goop and lifted him off the Todorokis, Rei got up and dusted herself, she then crossed her arms under her bust and huffed at Harry. 
Harry just continued to grin at REI while putting Mr. Goop down at his side. REI then sighed and shook her head. You're so mean, Harry. You just stood there and laughed at us. Harry chuckled and rose his hands in surrender. Sorry, but you have to admit it was funny, REI. REI rolled her eyes but smiled at Harry. Meanwhile, her son and daughter stared at her and smiled. Watching her being lively and having fun made them very happy. Fuyamai then smiled and decided to introduce herself to this young man that seems to be very friendly with her mom. Hello there, I'm Fuyamai Todoroki. It's nice to meet a friend of my mom. Harry smiled at Fuyamai while she continued on while pointing at Natsuo and this is Natsuo Todoroki. He's one of my younger brothers. Natsuo grinned and nodded towards Harry who nodded back at him and smiled well. I'm Harry Potter and it's very nice to finally meet you both. I guess Nisa let you know where REI is huh? Fuyamai and Natsuo's eyes widen in surprise. They didn't think they would meet the man who had trained the group that was devastating the sports festival they've been watching. REI giggled at the faces her children were making but then turned towards Harry so if Nisa told Fuyamai and Natsuo where I am then that means Enji has been arrested right? Harry nodded and both Fuyamai and Natsuo turned towards their mother and stared at her in confusion. Harry then began to explain Endeavor actually confronted Shoto before his match, that's where I caught him and took him downstairs. Right now he's not only arrested but in the hospital and quirkless as well, with his reputation also destroyed he won't ever bother you or your children again REI. Both Natsuo and Fuyamai stared at Harry with eyes wide and full of shock while REI suddenly hugged Harry tightly thank you, you made him pay right? You made him feel what Toya went through right? Fuyamai and Natsuo looked down in sadness at the reminder of their dead brother, Harry, however, nodded yes, I made him pay for everything he did, you can now rest easy REI, REI sobbed while Harry hold her, the dragon god then turned towards both Fuyamai and Natsuo I think I owe you guys an explanation right, why don't we all sit in the living room and he'll serve us a mean cup of coffee, and I really do mean mean, REI giggled while she had her face on Harry's chest, it was a very wet sounding giggle it really is mean, I don't how Luna makes it but be prepared to be roasted and insulted. Both Fuyamai and Natsuo looked confused but nodded, Harry then spent the next few minutes explaining everything that had happened to Endeavor while REI, Natsuo, and Fuyamai drank their coffee which kept insulting them every time they took a sip. In all honesty, they found it very funny and when they asked Harry how it was made Harry just shrugged his shoulders and told them that he didn't know, that it was one of his girlfriends who made it but that he suspects that the beans are the culprit. Nonetheless from now on the Todorokis can now live in peace and try to move on with their lives and as time went on both Harry and REI told Fuyamai and Natsuo everything about Harry and the girls. Needless to say that both of them were very surprised was an understatement, Natsuo thought that everything Harry had seen and the world he lives in, is super cool and wants to visit. While Fuyamai was very interested in all the magic and supernatural beings Harry has met, she was also very interested in Harry since she had noticed how her mother seemed very attached to him and how she spoke so fondly of his girlfriends. Harems in this world were somewhat common so she wasn't surprised he had one but the fact that Hid was so diverse and big was a surprise and that made her very curious about him, so both of young Todoroki's decided to move in with their mother in the potter's home. Not only to be with their mother but to learn more about Harry and his family, now all that was missing was for Shoto to join and they can finally try to live like a normal family. Who would have thought that a dragon god would be the one to answer Fuyamai's prayers, that thought made her giggle out loud which confused everyone, especially Harry who felt like she was laughing at him for some reason. But the face he was giving Fuyamai just made her laugh more. REI smiled watching her daughter have fun and she even got an idea of what had made her daughter laugh. Harry just tilted his head in confusion and turned towards Natsuo with a raised eyebrow but he just shrugged and shook his head don't look at me, women are still a mystery to me, if anyone knows them better is you. Harry huffed because even if he had so many girlfriends he was nowhere close to understanding women in general but his expression just made both REI and Fuyamai laugh. Which in turn made Harry smile seeing them happy and having fun after having lived such a hard life up until now, it was certainly something to be glad about that they were still able to smile. Chapter 78, Chapter 78 The 10 minute break had passed by really fast for everyone in the stadium and all of them present in the stadium prepared themselves both physically and mentally knowing that two more students of Harry Potter were next to fight in the tournament. Midnight sighed and tiredly rubbed her eyes, it has been a very long day today and it was not even halfway done, she knew she had to start the next match but she was really scared about what Harry's students could do next. So far they have been very brutal and destructive, sure they were showing off and that is the reason the sports festival was created but these kids take it to a whole other level, still, she couldn't make everyone wait any longer and so she cracked her whip signaling the next contestants to step into the ring. Hizashi was just tired of everything and glared at Shota who was perfectly fine and drinking a cup of coffee that was surprisingly cursing him out something Hazashi was trying really hard to ignore, he knew that asking would lead to some sort of crazy shenanigans. So Hazashi tiredly sighed and decided to get things started, no amount of time will prepare him for what he was about to witness and so he accepted that simple fact alright ladies and gentlemen, the seventh match is about to begin, we have the manliest of men, Ajiro Kiri's Hima versus the maiden of water Tsuyu Ajui, Shota put down his cup of coffee which was still cursing at him and then spoke these two are also Harry's students so everyone get ready to see something amazing once again, Hazashi glared at Shota who just grinned at him in response while the public cheered loudly for the next contestants. 
Suyu and Eijiro waved at the public who were loudly cheering for them. Eventually, they reached the ring and once they were in the middle, they face each other. Eijiro grinned at Suyu and spoke this is very manly. I've been wanting to test my abilities against one of us for the longest. Suyu tilted her head and deadpanned Kuro. Me too, I'm pretty sure Harry sensei didn't let us spar so we could keep our progress a secret for the sports festival Kuro. Eijiro nodded and turned his head towards where Harry should be sitting but he didn't see him there but he did give Eri a thumbs up when he saw that she noticed him and waved at him. Eijiro then chuckled in amusement Harry sensei really does prepare us for everything. Suyu nodded and then put a finger by her lower lip Kuro. If Mina received a new ability during her training then you also got one too right Eijiro? Kuro. Eijiro chuckled and nodded well since Mina revealed hers then I suppose I don't have to keep mine a secret anymore but yes Harry sensei also gave me a new ability. Suyu nodded having already suspected as much, she's going to have to be very careful so she doesn't get caught by surprise like Kainoko. Hermione sighed and then turned to look up towards the sky while on her lap sat Eri who was enjoying a candy apple with a big smile on her face I wonder what sort of powerful and potentially dangerous ability did Harry give to Eijiro. Himiko who drinking soda out of a giant cup bigger than herself stopped drinking from her straw and turned towards Hermione curious as to what Harry gave to her friend. Susan who was gaping at the massive cup of soda also turned towards Hermione and began to think about what sort of power he could have given to Eijiro, while Luna who was eating some gummy worms, though everyone around her was staring at her since she had animated the gummy worms with magic and made them crawl over her arm and towards her open mouth began to speak, more than likely it's something really flashy if I remember correctly Eijiro wanted to be noticed. Hermione turned towards Luna and groaned I was afraid of that, damn it, Harry. Eri giggled at Hermione's annoyance while Himiko, Susan, and Luna grinned at her causing Hermione's eyebrow to twitch. Midnight sighed not liking what Eijiro just confirmed and just shook her head, she then raised her whip and whipped it down making it crack loudly let the seventh match begin. Suyu didn't waste any time and engulfed her entire body in a torrent of rapidly moving water and then waved her arms towards Eijiro sending two waves of highly pressurized water heading straight to him. Eijiro covered himself with his arms and activated his quirk hardening his body, the water waves hit him on his arms but weren't able to cut through his quirk, they did, however, push him back. Eijiro growled as he felt himself being pushed away closer and closer to the edge of the ring, seeing no other choice but to use his new ability, he roared and activated his new ability. His new sacred gear reacted to his call and detonated his entire body in a massive explosion destroying the water waves and pushing Tsuyu back a bit, Midnight and Cementa screamed in fright at the massive explosion. Suddenly the explosion dissipated and Tsuyu looked up to Eijiro and frowned when he saw him standing a few steps away from a ring out, his body was glowing with a strange orange glow Kuro. Is that Bakugo's quirk? Kuro. Eijiro shook his head and stared at his hands no, this is something Harry sensei calls a sacred gear it's a type of mystical creation of a god or something like that, I really didn't pay attention to what Harry sensei was saying at the time, its name is variant detonation and it allows me to generate explosions on everything I touch. Suyu sweat dropped, that ability was undoubtedly very powerful and dangerous Kuro. That sounds way too dangerous Kuro. Eijiro nodded in agreement oh I know but Harry like everyone else in our group also gave me the skill of perfect control with that skill I can control the size of the explosion, the intensity, and even the time it takes for it to explode plus with my quirk hardening I can resist my explosions so this sacred gear is a good match for me. Hermione groaned as she face palms, the fact that Harry gave Eijiro a sacred gear no less but one that can make anything he touches into a bomb was very nerve wracking. Meanwhile, Susan and Luna grinned at how frustrated Hermione seemed while Himiko and Eri were loudly cheering for their friends, both of them thought that their new abilities were really cool. Hisashi closed his eyes and took a big breath seriously, Harry just made Eijiro a walking bomb. How is that safe? How does that ability help with hero work? Arg. By now it was very evident that Hisashi was reaching a breaking point with all of these crazy surprises a fact that Shota was enjoying a little too much. So being the greatest of friends that he is, he decided to twist the knife well that sort of ability can come in handy in search and rescue operations, he can perfectly control the explosions and get rid of debris or safely destroy all sorts of things that might get in the way of other heroes, it certainly is a useful ability, if you have the skills and abilities to put it to use. Hisashi glared at Shota who just shrugged and grinned at him. Suyu just deadpanned at Eijiro and shook her head, her sensei was a caring and loving man but he was a bit crazy and this proved it, Eijiro then got ready and launched himself towards Suyu at high speed and tried to punch her. However her veil of water stopped his attack but Suyu's eyes widened when Eijiro grinned at her, knowing exactly what he was planning she quickly jumped out of the water veil which then exploded and sent her flying. Suyu spun around in midair and quickly righted herself, she then softly landed on the ring and frowned towards Eijiro Kuro. I can't touch him, and my attacks bounce off of him thanks to his quirk Kuro. He's quite literally a living tank now. Eijiro didn't give her any more time to think by launching himself once again towards her at high speed and tried to elbow her in her face but she ducked down to avoid the strike. She then had to jump to the side to dodge a knee towards her abdomen, she rolled on the ground and then jumped high into the air to dodge a punch to the back of her head. Once on the high in the air she pointed her hand towards Eijiro raging water drills, Kuro. Behind her, a massive amount of water quickly gathered and then formed four streams of highly pressurized rotating water two of which shot forward toward Eijiro. 
Eijiro's eyes widen in surprise as he looked up towards Tsuyu and covered himself with his arms, two water drills hit his arm but then Tsuyu moved her hand and the other two water drills followed her movements and headed for his body from opposite directions. Eijiro grunted in pain and saw the other two drills heading his way, he couldn't dodge since two of Tsuyu's water drills had him busy trying to stop them from hitting his face. The other two water drills hit him dead on, Eijiro screamed in pain as his quirk was being drilled by the four water drills, he immediately made them detonate and explode. Tsuyu pushed herself away in midair with a water blast and landed a distance away from Eijiro and immediately looked towards him waiting to see if her attacks had any effect. The explosion and smoke cleared out and everyone could see Eijiro standing there, his skin was cracked and pieces of his hard skin was falling off however Eijiro just grinned at Tsuyu Ugh. That was close, I can't believe your water attacks broke through my quirk cough. Eijiro coughed some blood and Tsuyu frowned, she was hoping to push him out of the ring or at least cause more damage water jets have been known to be able to cut steel Kuro. Though it's hard to maintain that level of high pressure and speed Kuro. Eijiro nodded and wiped his mouth from the blood he looked down and saw that his body was cracked damn, she did quite the number on me, if I hadn't detonated those drills they might have gone through my body and ripped me apart, so you isn't playing around ha. Eijiro then stood up straight causing even more of his hard skin to chip away but he didn't pay it any mind I wanted to save this for a later match but you're not holding back at all, alright then let's see how you handle this Tsuchan, balance breaker. The orange aura around Eijiro exploded quite literally, Tsuyu's eyes widened and then she protected herself with a water veil, while Midnight and Cementos screamed and were blown away by the release of Eijiro's sacred gear. Hermione just shook her head he already unlocked his balance breaker. Luna waved her hand and caught both Midnight and Cementos with magic and sat them with the public while Susan also waved a hand and created a barrier around the public to avoid hurting anyone. Eri tilted her head in confusion not knowing what anything Hermione had been saying meant, she turned towards Luna who smiled at her and began to explain a sacred gear is an item that can bestow humans a power, it was created by God, the most powerful ability a sacred gear might have is called balance breaker a forbidden ability that evolves the sacred gear to the point of being able to use all of its power. Eri nodded and then hummed and she thought about everything she just heard. Can daddy make sacred gears? You said God created them but daddy is a dragon god so he should be able to write. Luna stared at her daughter in silence for a few seconds since that was a good question, she had never thought of asking Harry if he could create sacred gears, he can take them, bestow them, modify them, and even change them completely as he had with the boosted gear but to create one? Honestly sweetie? I don't know, we can ask him when he returns and see if he can okay. Eri smiled at Luna and nodded, meanwhile Hermione was shivering, Susan noticed and decided to ask her what's wrong Hermione. Hermione turned her head towards Susan and frowned the thought of Harry being able to create sacred gears terrifies me. Luna and Susan laughed at their friend, Hermione has always been the logical one and the one who takes a while to accept the chaos that Harry brings, even to this date after living with him and being in a relationship with him as well, she was still able to be surprised by Harry's craziness but everyone loves her for that. Plus her expressions are always funny which is why both Susan and Luna were laughing at her right now while Hermione glared at them. Back in the ring Eijiro now stood tall, his quirk seemed to have changed, now his skin was grey-black and had spikes coming out of his shoulders, back, and even on his head. He also seemed to have spikes growing out of his knuckles, forearms, and elbows, his quirk and sacred gear had merged together to create a whole new ability, Eijiro grinned widely showing off his fangs balance breaker. Ballistic Assault Rampage. Tsuyu sweat dropped at the name and sighed Kuro, boys, still, if I had to guess this gives you long range capabilities right? Kuro. Eijiro just dropped on his hands and feet and suddenly the spikes on his back shot out and headed towards Tsuyu whose eyes widened in surprise. She immediately engulfed herself in her water veil and began to dodge the missiles while swimming at high speed within the water veil, the missiles exploded aggressively on contact with anything. But Tsuyu continued to dodge and dodge Kuro, those spikes keep regrowing as soon as he fires them Kuro, and I don't think he'll run out anytime soon Kuro. The public was watching everything going on in this battle with wide eyes in awe, all they could see is Tsuyu dodging so fast that all they could see is a blue blur moving everywhere while explosions were going off all over the place. Suddenly the water veil around Tsuyu began to grow and grow until giant tentacles began to grow out of it, the water tentacles began to slap the missiles out of the way as Tsuyu began to move towards Eijiro. Eijiro grinned and then pointed his knuckles towards Tsuyu, the spikes on his knuckles fired off and shot forward towards Tsuyu. Tsuyu frowned at the eight small missiles heading her way at high speed but she jumped over them and continued running forward. The little missiles immediately turned and headed back towards Tsuyu's back while Eijiro roared I got you now. With that roar, Eijiro fired the spikes on his shoulders and more from his back towards Tsuyu who continued moving at full speed towards Eijiro who watched intently as his missiles were heading towards Tsuyu's back, front and from above. The missiles almost reached Tsuyu who just kept moving forward and everyone in the stadium watched while unconsciously holding their breath in anticipation but then something amazing happened before everyone's eyes. Tsuyu herself turned into water and easily dodged her way through the missiles and to the shock of everyone watching this match she turned back to normal while all the water she had gathered coalesced and compacted itself in the form of an orb on her open palm. She then reached Eijiro who stared at her in disbelief as she pointed her open palm towards his head and jabbed the water orb on Eijiro's face typhoon. Water Vortex. 
Suya's technique exploded in a massive orb of fast-moving streams of water. Eijiro unable to even scream since he was trapped inside Suya's technique was then launched back along with the water technique. The technique then hit the wall and detonated on impact sending water all over the place. Thankfully the magical barrier protected the public from getting wet, leaving Eijiro in the air with his hardened skin and sacred gear damaged beyond belief. Suddenly his sacred gear and quirk deactivated as he dropped to the ground unconscious, Midnight who was watching everything from where she was sitting with the public gaped but soon snapped out of it and whipped her whip loudly the winner by ring out is Tsuyu Ajui. The whole stadium exploded in cheer and excitement, this match was another exciting one and everyone was amazed by it. Tsuyu tiredly sighed and then sat on her knees I'm so tired Kuro, turning into water still tires me out too much Kuro, I have to train more. Suddenly Harry appeared one more time to take care of his students, he had been watching the match from his living room with the Todorokis and had witnessed Eijiro and Tsuyo give it their all. With a proud smile on his face he telekinetically lifted Eijiro and floated him towards him, he then turned towards Tsuyo and was about to do the same with Tsuyo but she shook her head carry me sensei Kuro. Harry stared at Tsuyo in silence for a few seconds while she just deadpanned at him, eventually Harry shook his head and sighed and then walked up to Tsuyo and picked her in a princess carry. Tsuyu blushed a bit but had a small smile on her face while Harry carried her out of the ring and towards the infirmary. Harry grinned at Tsuyu you certainly like to be spoiled Hatsu-chan. Tsuyu looked up at him and gave him the most serious nod he had ever received in his life only from a few people Harry Sensei Kuro. Harry chuckled, Tsuyu was as blunt as always, not that he minded since most of his family are blunt individuals, so with a grin on his face he carried Tsuyu in his arms while floating an unconscious Eijiro towards the infirmary to heal them. Hizashi was too busy gaping at the fact that Tsuyu had turned into water and then blasted Eijiro with a literal maelstrom of water, he honestly didn't know what to say and quite frankly wished the day would be over. Shota seeing as his friend wasn't in any mental condition to announce anything, decided to do it for him ladies and gentlemen, Tsuyu Ajui is moving to the next round, what an amazing fight we have seen here today the amount of speed, skill, and ability to dodge a barrage of missiles that Miss Ajui has showcased today was nothing short of extraordinary. The public agreed with Shota since the entire stadium began to chant Tsuyu's name, Shota softly smiled and continued announcing but let's not forget the efforts of Mr. Kiri's Hima, a budding demolition expert with enough firepower to stop a war, let's also give him a round of applause for the amazing show of power he has shown here today. The public responded by also chanting Eijiro's name, he really did amaze everyone here as well, this match was a close one, any of the two could have won at any time but their training had allowed them to think and react on the spot. In the end, Tsuyu's new ability to turn into water caught Eijiro by surprise which gave Tsuyu the opportunity she needed to win, and everyone in the stadium could see that. Hisashi stared at Shota in surprise since when can you announce like that? Shota just moved his gaze toward Hisashi and sighed I have a podcast about cat care, so I have experience with things like this. Hisashi just shook his head, he wasn't even aware that his friend had a podcast, and wasn't that a surprise still this day has just been full of surprises. Midnight announced a 10 minute break so everyone can compose themselves from being blown away or rather so she could from being almost caught by an explosion, who knew this job was more dangerous than hero work. Tsuyu was healed and sent to the stands while Harry healed Eijiro who had suffered quite a lot of damage, not only had his skin cracked and shattered but he almost drowned as well, thankfully his quirk held strong enough to prevent internal damage. So Harry had to take his time healing Eijiro's skin and slowly regenerate it, a process recovery girl was taking notes of, in fact, she had taken notes on how Harry has been healing his students. From crushed bones, to burns, to poisoning, and even destroyed skin, it certainly has been fascinating watching Harry work, who knew the dragon god was as good at healing as he is at causing destruction and chaos. Eventually, 10 minutes passed by but Midnight really didn't want to start the next match, she knew that the next contestants were also Harry's students and she just wanted the madness to stop but she also knew that she couldn't just stop the sports festival. So with great reluctance, she announced the next match ladies and gentlemen, next we have the master of gravity Okako Yurika, versus the cutie pie pony Tsunatri. The public began to once again loudly cheered excited to see the 8th match begin, the cheering increased as soon as both Okako and Pony stepped into the arena both girls were happily waving at everyone. Hisashi having recovered a bit decided to share in the excitement and we have the next contestants, and the two cutest girls of class 1A and 1B, I honestly don't know who to cheer for. Shota scoffed and shook his head keep it professional, but don't let these girls cuteness fool you, both Yurika and Sanatri are also members of Harry's students. Hisashi groaned and looked down in horror why, not these two cuties. Harry you're a monster if you corrupted these two girls. Harry who was finishing healing Eijiro chuckled while recovery girl just shook her head, so what if the girls were cute, they can be powerful too? Good job on Harry to train the girls to show everyone how cuteness can be dangerous too. Okako and Pony blushed while nervously fidgeting, being called cute multiple times was embarrassing especially since they rather be considered dangerous and powerful women. Okako then awkwardly chuckled and scratched the back of her head he 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 it feels weird to be called cute, especially with how hard we train right Pony. Pony nodded and began to fidget around a bit yup. Doesn't feel bad though but I kinda wish everyone would take us more seriously. Okako nodded and looked around yeah but don't worry, we'll show everyone what we're capable of now. Pony nodded and then looked up while humming hey Okako. Okako raised an eyebrow at Pony wondering what she wanted to ask yes. 
Pony moved her gaze towards Okako and tilted her head. Do you like Midoriya? Okako blushed and began to panic while Izuko who was drinking some water suddenly did a spit take right into Ida's face who was gaping at what Pony so bluntly asked. Okako recovered a bit but was still blushing red. I I, why do you want to know? Pony blushed but then she took a big breath and then exhaled well. I like him, he's so cool and smart plus he's adorable when he starts muttering like he's reciting ancient and evil curses. Okako gaped at Pony while Izuko who tried to drink water again did another spit take and began to actually choke while Ido was desperately slapping his back. In the Midoriya household, Inko was excitedly cheering and fist pumping in celebration, she was already imagining cute blonde babies with green eyes or brown haired babies as well. Okako narrowed her eyes and shook her head Pony aren't you being too bold? You're on public TV. Pony tilted her head but Luna said that when you're dealing with a dense boy like Izuku, it's best to be bold, like a lion going straight to the jugular otherwise you might miss your chance, she also told me that if you like a boy you shouldn't let embarrassments stop you. Okako and well practically everyone in the stadium turned to look at Luna who was busy eating animated gummy worms until she felt everyone's stares, which made her turn and looked around what? Hermione sighed while Susan giggled, they really couldn't say anything about the way Luna's mind worked since they knew she and the others just basically forced themselves into Harry's harem especially since Milim, Fu, and Jessica didn't mind sharing. Okako stared at Luna who seems very confused at the moment, she then turned towards Pony and pouted inflating her cheeks. I also like Izuku. Poor Izuku had become catatonic at this point and Ida was shaking him trying to get him to respond even though the rest of Harry's students were trying different ways to snap him out of it. Inko at this point was already crying rivers of tears in happiness since her plan to have lots and lots of grandchildren had already started yes, yes, yes. The Midoriya's neighbors were surprised and a little concerned about Inko since she had never been this loud as far as they knew her. Pony happily clapped and brightly smiled that's great, then we can work together and get Midoriya's heart. Just like Harry sensei's girls did for him. Okako sweat dropped because she had never thought of sharing Izuko but watching how Susan, Hermione, and Luna get along and how much Harry loved them made her think that it wasn't a bad idea. In fact, it might be fun to have a big family like the one Harry sensei has, so Okako smiled and nodded to the happiness of Pony. Izuku was practically half dead by now, his little soul was coming out of his mouth as all his friends were desperately trying to grab the little soul to shove it back down his throat. Nizo was cackling loudly enjoying the chaos Pony just brought to the stadium while All Might clapped his hand and prayed for his student well-being. Nana was grinning enjoying how bold Pony was, she has to agreed with her, if you want something then go for it. Still, she prayed a little bit for Izuku, that boy just didn't know what was coming his way. Harry was now laughing while recovery girl shook her head and watched Harry laugh himself silly. Midnight grinned while thinking how much fun she was going to have teasing Izuku while his ishi whistled I don't know if I should envy Midoriya or pray for his well-being. Shota sighed and shook his head I'd say pray for his well-being. The men in the stadium nodded in agreement however the women among the public took offense to this single sign of solidarity between men and proceeded to physically punish them all. Pony then grinned and nodded all right, then whoever wins this match will be the head girlfriend. Okako narrowed her eyes and a dark aura began to spread around her I'm not going to lose then. Midnight grinned and nodded how passionate, a battle between two maidens in love for the head spot in a harem, I'm all hot and bothered now, let the eighth match begin. Everyone sweat dropped to Midnight's words but then snapped out of it when Midnight cracked her whip. Pony immediately leaned her head towards Okako and shot a barrage of her horns towards her. Okako just raised her open palm and repelled the horns with her control over gravity. The horns bounced off the increased force around Okako but then the horns began to float up again and began to constantly try to hit Okako. Okako however stood there calmly as she watched the horns constantly bounce off because of the repulsive force she was exerting around her. When Harry improved her quirk not only did he increase its power he also gave her control over repulsive and attractive forces as well. Harry then spent a lot of time teaching her how to control these new abilities. Harry had helped Okako replicate the techniques of the Rinnegan or more precisely the Deva path, something that Okako seemed to have a talent for. Pony was a very bold girl even more so that she can now talk and understand everyone and this surprised everyone the first time they noticed it, it seems like she was just shy at first because she couldn't speak the language at first. But now that she can, she sort of let loose, not that anyone minded since she was still a dear friend to everyone but she did just lit a fire under Okako's butt. Knowing that she couldn't lose this match because not only does she want to be Izuka's first for everything, but she also wanted to be the head girlfriend something that Pony seems to be after. All of this caught Okako by surprise never expecting this sort of situation to land on her lap but like all of Harry's students, she was already used to surprises and challenges, like any other one of her fellow students. She was ready to face this challenge head on and win, so Okako clapped her hands and gathered all her energy Shinra Tensei. And then there was only destruction and screams everywhere as Okako used one of the techniques that Harry had taught her, a technique only reserved for those considered gods in the shinobi world. Everything around Okako was suddenly destroyed and a giant crater expanded from the ground underneath her. Pony not expecting such a powerful technique widened her eyes in shock while the ground and air shook. Lucky for the public, Midnight and Cementos the barrier Susan raised was still in place and protected them from the force behind Okako's technique. Pony snapped out of it and moved to dodge as fast as she could while the destruction spread dust, debris, and dirt which flew everywhere. 
A few seconds later everything calmed down and the dust and dirt dissipated, everyone slowly turned towards the ring only to gape at the giant and deep crater that Okako just created with her technique. Everything inside the arena was gone and it was only thanks to the barrier that the destruction didn't spread further out. Okako herself was floating in the air while calmly looking up, everyone grew curious as to what she was watching so they all look up as well only to widen their eyes in surprise as they watched Pony flying high in the air by holding a pair of her horns with her hands. Pony looked down and frowned alright, so you're not playing around. But could you have not destroyed the ring? Okako grinned and shrugged it doesn't matter if I do, look it's already repairing itself. Pony and the public looked towards the ring and confirmed that indeed the ring was already fixing itself at an impressive speed. Whatever Harry had done to it sure worked wonders if it was able to fix itself after Okako had blasted it to oblivion. Still, to think that Okako had that kind of firepower, Pony was beginning to think that perhaps she shouldn't have challenged Okako for the head girlfriend's spot especially since she was grinning at her rather maliciously right now. Hisashi sighed you know what? I don't care anymore. Harry is obviously creating weapons of mass destruction and not heroes. Shota chuckled which made Hazashi glare at him I think Harry is just trying to prepare them for anything that they might face in their careers as heroes, we both know how dangerous this sort of work is and how easily can everything turn sideways. Hizashi frowned and nodded skin agreement okay, I understand that much but what sort of situation would need this level of power and destruction? Shota shook his head you're missing the point, the first and second events showed that Harry's students were capable of perfectly controlling their power and abilities, they also showed they can think outside the box and be creative when it comes to solving problems while minimizing damages. Hazashi turned his gaze toward Shota and paid attention while Shota continued but this third event showcases their sheer destructive power, as well as their skill in battle, all of them, are using the third event to make a statement. Hizashi frowned and stared at Okako and Pony who just grinned at each other and got ready to fight again and what is that statement? And to who? Shota turned his head towards Hizashi and creepily smiled while his eyes glowed ominously to every villain and evildoer out there, to all the citizens and all of the heroes as well, the statement is quite simple I am here. That statement from Shota resonated to everyone watching the sports festival, most criminals shook in fear while Tamura and all for one frowned. Meanwhile many heroes who has been watching the sports festival in interest grinned and smiled in excitement, many began to fill out the forms to request these young heroes to come and work for them for their internships. While all the citizens watching the sports festival excitedly smiled and cheered excited for these strong and reliable young heroes in training. This world was already changing and even though Harry was at the center of this change it would be his students who would bring that change forth in the future but before all of that can happen they still have to finish this tournament first. Chapter 79, Chapter 79 Pony sighed and looked down towards Okako who was lazily floating up just above where the ring used to be, out of everyone in their group known as Harry's students, Okako was the least expected to be this powerful but Pony knew better. In fact, everyone in the group knew better, Okako despite being all smiles and giggles had one of the most powerful and versatile quirks amongst them, especially since Harry upgraded and modified it. Okako now has complete and total control over gravity and force, and she just showed the world what she was capable of and the worst thing is, that Okako was still holding back, Harry had told them and even warned them about her new abilities, to have control of a concept like gravity means having godlike power over the world. Okako could become capable of increasing the gravity pull of the entire world someday in the future and as she grows more powerful, she could even pull the moon and have it crash against earth if she so chooses. Technically Okako had a terrifying amount of power in her hand and it was only because she was a kind and caring person that everyone was at ease with the fact she could destroy the planet on a whim if she wanted to do so. So in hindsight, she shouldn't have provoked her butt in Pony's mind, she wanted to at least try to earn the head girlfriend spot. She liked Izuku a lot, especially since she found him funny and adorable but she didn't want to make her friends sad or hate her so she sought out advice from Luna, who told her all about Harry Sensei's harem and how everything worked out in the end, the fact that Luna smiled as she described with care and love how everyone treated each other like a big and albeit crazy family made her want that. She wanted to have a big family as well, to be with her Izuku, Okako, and whoever else she can convince to join because she was going to go all out in on this? Luna told her if you want something then go for it the fact that Luna had decided at a very young age that Harry was going to be her future husband and she went for it just inspired Pony to do the same. So she decided to go for it and confess her love for Izuku on public TV and then convince Okako to share as well and it worked out, even though she was a bit worried about Izuku who she could see was having a panic attack as of right now, but since she already decided to do this she might as well go in and so Pony fired two more horns which flew around and then she let go of the two she was holding with her hands. She landed standing right on top of the two new horns and began to skate around at high speed while Okako stared at her intrigued. As she flew around Okako she began to fire multiple horns at her, the horns actually began to rotate like drills, and then shot forwards toward Okako. Okako spread her arms and the horn drills crashed against her repulsive force field but this time they didn't bounce off, instead, they continued to push forward while more and more horns began to crash against her force field. Okako grimaced at the force being exerted against her and eventually her power was being overwhelmed, she had perfect control of her ability and it was very powerful. 
But her new power over force uses a lot of energy, and most of her techniques were very energy extensive. It was something Harry worked on with her a lot during her training but there was only so much he and her could do to increase her energy reserves. He did tell her that as she grew her body would adapt and grow more energy reserves as she grew older but for now she had to work with what she got. She was brought out her thoughts when one of the horns broke through and flew towards her face, luckily Okako was able to react in time and lean her face away from the drilling horn but it did manage to cut her cheek. She then waved but arms and used her power to blast the horns away from her, Pony narrowed her eyes as she watched Okako suddenly point a hand towards her Bancho Tenin. Universal pull. Pony suddenly froze and her eyes widened when she suddenly felt herself get aggressively pulled towards Okako, she was so caught off guard that she didn't even have time to try and do something as she flew towards Okako at high speed. Okako as soon as she saw Pony get within her range of attack she then began to open palm strike Pony as she flew past her, Pony screamed in pain as she felt her nerves lit up in pain. Okako then increased the gravity in Pony's body which caused her to fall towards the ground and harshly crashed against the ring. Okako looked down and stared at Pony who was struggling to get up from the increased gravity on her body and the pain from Okako's open palm strikes. Okako smiled proudly, the modified Jukin that Harry sensei taught her was the most difficult thing she had ever tried to learn, not only did she have to study and memorize the nerve system she had to endure Harry's hard training to make her body flexible and strong enough in order to make use of the fighting style. He had explained that this version of the style was one her created by watching Hinata and Hanabi Hayaga who he considers his sister's train but instead of aiming for the chakra system it instead targets the nerves making this style an extremely painful one. To make it more effective it also numbs whatever it's struck by the fighting style making the target unable to move whatever the technique hit. So Okako floated down right in front of Pony who was groaning in pain you should give up Pony, I don't want to hurt you too much. It was true Okako didn't want to hurt her friend but she also didn't want to lose, Pony grinned and looked up hee hee you're really too nice Okako, but I still have one more trick up my sleeve, ha. Huh. Okako's eyes widened when she saw every horn that Pony had fired suddenly float up and lit on blue fire while also rotating at high speed, Pony then yelled out soul fire, comet rain. The drilling horns engulfed in blue fire shot forwards toward Okako, to the public, it looked like a star shower was heading straight to Okako whose eyes widened in shock and quickly rose a force field of repulsive force to protect herself. The flaming horn drills crashed against Okako and a massive explosion engulfed the ring, Pony who was on the ground used two of her horns and stabbed them on the ground so she wouldn't be sent flying. The entire ring was engulfed in an explosion of blue fire and everyone in the arena covered their eyes to protect them from the light, it really was a good thing there was as a barrier to protect the public. Suddenly Okako came out flying from the explosion and crashed against the ground where she bounced off the ground once but she was able to stop herself by manipulating and increasing her own gravity to prevent herself from being sent out of the ring by anchoring herself to the ground. The explosion subsided and Okako looked up from the ground toward Pony who was grinning at her, Okako grunted and flinched in pain, her entire body was severely hurt and she was having a hard time even breathing. Her gym uniform was heavily damaged and her body was full of burns but right now she was more worried about the pain she was feeling all over her body and inside. She knew what soul fire is, in fact, everyone in their little group does, Harry explained that soul fire was a special kind of flame that can not only physically burn but also burn souls. If she was honest with herself, the fact that soul fire can burn the soul terrified her and she can feel it now somehow, some way she feels her soul burn in pain. It certainly is an odd feeling but she couldn't help but grin back at Pony Ugg, ouchie, that almost got me Pony. Since when can you use soul fire? Pony sighed and explained Harry Sensei gave me the ability when I asked him to give me something to be able to fight with you guys. I didn't want to be left behind so I wanted to get stronger, especially since everyone was already amazing, to begin with. Harry Sensei then gave me soul fire manipulation and trained me for the last three days before the sports festival. I'm still not that good at controlling yet but I have enough power and control to do all of this. Okako nodded and slowly got up I can tell. I was only able to stop the horn drills but once they all exploded I couldn't hold on to the force field any longer. I was engulfed in blue fire and sent flying, not a bad last attack pony, but I'm getting that head girlfriend position. Pony nodded and then tried to get up but her body was still numb and her fall had caused a lot of damage to her body as well, she was pretty sure she had a few broken bones now I'm not done yet. Okako smiled and shook her head you're pretty tenacious pony, I will be counting on you to keep Deku in line. With that said Okako shakily lifted her hand and pointed at Pony Shinra Tensei. Poor Pony was too weakened and hurt to even try to dodge and was sent flying back quite violently until she crashed into a stadium wall and then fell down face first unconscious. Midnight shook her head and sighed, these young people were too wild sometimes and it was her who was saying that the winner of the 8th match is Okako Yurika. The crowd cheered and screamed Okako's name, who smiled and then fell down back first unconscious, the soul fire had done enough damage to her body and soul so she couldn't stay conscious anymore, thankfully Harry appeared and immediately healed her completely. He then lifted Okako's body telekinetically and walked towards Pony, once he reached her he also healed her completely and lifted her as well what a handful you girls are, I feel sorry for Izuko Hihi. With that said Harry immediately teleported himself and the girls to the infirmary so the girls could rest. Hisashi just sighed but happily smiled well it was just blue fire this time, nothing too crazy or out of this world, fire manipulation is a very common quirk. 
Shota stared at Hisashi and wondered if he should destroy his good cheer. It didn't take long for him to decide that yes he should destroy it for all the time he didn't let him sleep in peace, Shota began to explain that wasn't normal fire. Harry had explained to me and Principal Nizo about a blue fire he can use called soul fire. Hisashi turned towards Shota and frowned please don't say it. Don't do this to me, we've been friends for years, at the very least give me tea dash. But it didn't matter how much Hisashi pleaded. Shota just continued on with his explanation soul fire is a special type of flame, Harry said and I quote soul fire is a type of spiritual flame that can cause damage to the soul of your target, not only causing a lot of pain but also weaken your opponent it really is a very dangerous type of flames and I feel bad for all the villains who are foolish enough to not take mists and not re seriously. Hisashi groaned and held his head, he really was hating Shota for doing this to him. You're a monster, you know that. Shota just grinned at him which served to make Hisashi even angrier, meanwhile, Midnight decided to give herself and the public a 30 minute break, she certainly needed one before the second round can begin, otherwise, she might just die of a heart attack with all the craziness that's bound to happen next rounds. While Harry was keeping an eye on Okako and Pony while they rested, all of his students suddenly burst into the infirmary dragging a catatonic Izuko inside. Harry raised an eyebrow and then chuckled at how pale Izuko looked looks like the news of two girls liking him hit him hard. Everyone nodded and then threw Izuku into an empty bed, Toro then spoke we all knew that Okako and Deko liked each other but Pony caught everyone by surprise with her sudden confession, who knew she had it in her. Momo shook her head it must be Luna's influence, I got to admit though, I do agree with her way of thinking. Harry shook his head and grinned at his students I don't think anyone knew, even I didn't have a clue about Pony's crush on Izuku but boy do I feel bad for Izuku, those two are going to eat him alive. Everyone laughed, recovery girl step inside and then raised an eyebrow at the fact that everyone was laughing in her infirmary, she then turns to look toward Izuku and saw him being catatonic. She giggled and shook her when she realized why Izuku was in that condition and quite laughed while walking away, luckily for the boy he has half an hour to recover. Ten minutes later both Okako and Pony woke up and then slapped Izuku silly to snap him out of his catatonic state while everyone left the room to give them some privacy so they can talk. Harry went back to the house to keep the Todoroki's company and get to know them better since they will be living with him and his family from now on. Nizu had already hired movers that had already gone to go pack and move everything Fuyamai and Natsuo owned in what was their home with Endeavor. Natsuo and Fuyamai quite liked Harry since to them he seemed like a fun and caring guy who can make their mother laugh and smile as they have never seen before plus the fact that he was a cool dragon god of immense power made everything extra exciting for them. Rei, however, was a little anxious and Harry noticed what's wrong Rei, you seem a little nervous. Rei turned towards Harry and softly smiled I'm just worried about Shoto, he's fighting Izuka next, and well, he's not going to win, especially since he's not fighting with his full power. Fuyamai and Natsuo looked down in concern they knew about Shoto's issues but they couldn't help him with them all, Fuyamai tried to talk to him and let him understand that his quirk is his not their father's but he wouldn't listen. Natsuo tried to support him but he really couldn't tell him to not hate the fire half of his quirk especially since he understood why Shoto hates that part of his quirk. Harry nodded and hummed well I think he's going to find himself being forced to use the fire half of his quirk especially since Izuku is not going to hold back at all, you know how strong he is REI. REI nodded and sighed I know, I've seen Izuku spar with you, after all, I just wish I could cheer for him, let him know that it's okay, that he can be a kind and caring hero unlike his father, I wish I could tell him that his fire is his not his father's, I want to make up for what I did to him. Harry softly smiled at REI and then gave her a head pat which made her blush well then how about you tell him personally? I think I have a good idea as to how to do it too. Rei, Fuyamai, and Natsuo looked at Harry in curiosity while Harry just gave them a mischievous smile. The 30 minutes break passed by and the next participants were fully rested and ready for the next round, the public was hyped up as they all cheered and yelled in excitement. Midnight and Cementos opted to still sit with the public behind the barriers that hasn't dissipated yet, which they were very thankful for, being blown away all the time by the super powerful students of Harry Potter was getting old. Midnight stood up and sexily posed giving the men behind her an eyeful which in turn got them physical abuse from the woman around them, Midnight unaware of the pain she just caused to the men behind her cracked her whip loudly it's time to begin the second round of the tournament event of the sports festival. It certainly has been exciting and full of surprises, but without any further ado let begin. Everyone in the stadium cheered loudly as Midnight grinned widely and winked at everyone, the 30 minute break did wonders for her nerves and now she was ready for what was to come let's begin the second round with the first match the green strategist? Izuka Midoriya vs the cold as the Arctic Shoto Todoroki. The public roared in excitement and began to chant both Izuka's and Shoto's names as both contestants walked up to the ring. Izuka smiled and waved at everyone as he stepped into the ring, he looked a bit tired but happy though many had their suspension as to why and turning to see Okako and Pony who had crimson red blushes and were brightly smiling made everyone understood that Izuka now had a couple of ladies love in his life. Shoto just quietly walked towards the ring with a frown on his face as he stared at Izuka. Hisashi and Shota watched both students stop in the middle of the ring and stared at each other, Hisashi didn't waste any time and began to commentate and ladies and gentlemen, the first match of the second round is about to begin between two of the strongest and most skillful students of 1A, 
Shoda nodded in agreement yes, we have Izuku Midoriya a student of Harry Potter who surprisingly has amazed everyone here with his performance, his abilities to analyze and act in a second has shown his abilities as a strategist and then we have Shoto Todoroki a very talented student with an impressive quirk, this match promises to be an amazing one. Hisashi grinned and loudly began to speak that's right everyone. Both of these students have not only shown their power but their intelligence as well, I for one can't wait for this match to begin. Midnight watching that both of these young men didn't seem interested in speaking to each other right now, decided to start the match, so she raised her whip high in the air and then loudly cracked it begin. Shoto immediately stomped the ground and sent a wave of cold air and ice spikes toward Izuku who just narrowed his eyes and activated one for all engulfing his entire body in energy and green bioelectricity. As the ice spikes approached closer to him, Izuku just waved his hand and unleashed a blast of pressurized air that not only blew the cold air away but also destroyed the ice and pushed Shoto back. Shoto surprised by Izuku's attack grunted and then created an ice pillar behind him to stop himself as he watched his attack being easily destroyed. The air blast subsided and Shoto glared at Izuku who glared back at him are you done playing around? By now you should know that an attack like that wasn't going to work on me. Todoroki there's a clear difference between being stubborn and being stupid, you aren't stupid so, what exactly are you doing? Shoto growled not liking what Izuku just said to him right now, he knew that he was referring to him just using his ice against him but he couldn't help but feel enraged did my father convince you to say all of that? Are you working for him? Izuku frowned and glared at Shoto. He then clapped his hands together hard causing a shockwave of air and green bioelectricity to head towards Shoto whose eyes widened and immediately waved his hand to create a massive wall of ice to block the, the incoming shockwave. However the shockwave instantly shattered and destroyed the ice wall and the shards began to fly back and hit Shoto all over his body. Shoto covered his face and body with his arms but the shards still hit him hard and cut his skin. While Shoto was busy protecting himself Izuku used another one of his quirks smokescreen covering the entire ring in a thick and white haze obscuring everyone's sight. Inside the smoke, Shoto looked around with a frown on his face, his body was hurt but otherwise he was okay but right now he couldn't see anything and that made him anxious about a surprise attack. On the other side of the ring, Izuku disappeared in a blur and appeared behind Shoto you could have melted those ice shards before they could reach you, and yet you chose to take the hit instead of using your fire. Shoto's eyes widened in surprise and out of instinct he stumped the ground hard causing multiple giant ice spikes to grow out of the ground all around him, they would have skewered Izuku but another quirk of his prevent that, this quirk's name is Danger Sense. This quirk allowed him to easily avoid the ice spikes by jumping and spinning like a top not only dodging the ice spikes but also helping him build momentum to hit Shoto in the chest with a flying spinning kick. Shoto was sent flying back once again and bounced against the floor a couple of times before he was able to stop himself by creating a few ice pillars to stop his momentum, still the impacts hurt him quite a bit. But he didn't get time to rest, despite being unable to see Izuku he can still hear him moving towards him at high speed and immediately rolled out of the way only to see Izuku slam his feet with an axe kick that cracked the floor. Todoroki growled and then waved his arm widely not only blowing away the smokescreen with his quirk but sending a massive ice wave at Izuku. The public now able to see what was going looked on in amazement as a massive wave of ice headed towards Izuku who only stared at it with a glare on his face. I told you to stop playing around Todoroki. Izuku activated the max amount of one for all power that he can control and began to kick fast, his leg catches fire and then he jumps, once in the air he kicks down hard toward the ground roaring blaze gale. As soon as Izuku feet collide against the ground the fire bursts outwards and destroys the ice wave and hits Shoto who grunts a bit from the flame but quickly uses his ice quirk to protect himself, the blast, however, pushes him back a fair distance away from Izuku. The fire dissipated soon after and Shoto looked up to Izuku in surprise you can use fire too. Just how many quirks do you have? Izuku just scoffed and shook his head it's just one quirk I just use it in different ways and I don't see why I should tell you anything but if you must know that was me just kicking fast enough to create fire through friction. It's a technique taught to me by Harry Sensei, lighting is my specialty though. With that said Izuku gathered energy flared up and green bioelectricity began to lash out and destroy everything around him, a maelstrom of energy and green electricity began to spin around him picking up speed. Shoto then stomped the ground and sent multiple ice pillars to stop whatever Izuku was planning on doing but the maelstrom of energy and green lightning destroyed the ice almost instantly and then Izuku roared to the sky lighting impulse. The energy and green lightning suddenly exploded outwards from Izuku destroying everything around him, a giant twister of energy and electricity formed around him and rose up towards the sky. Shoto created a thick barrier of ice to protect himself but he was forced to constantly create more ice and reinforce it with even more, since Izuku's attacks were easily destroying it. Shoto began to roar as he overworked his quirk trying not to lose against Izuku, the public watched amazed at the terrifying power displayed by Izuku and the immovable will of Shoto. As Hisashi and Shoto watched this amazing display of power, Hisashi frowned amazing, he literally created a lightning storm. Shoto looked up and saw black clouds gathering around the twister created by Izuku and the same green lightning began dancing around the black clouds. Shoto narrowed his eyes towards the sky it seems like Midoriya is also planning something. Hisashi turned his gaze towards Shota and noticed he was looking towards the sky, curious about what his friend was staring at so intently deciding to take a look only to frown when he saw the dark and ominous black sky. 
Harry who had been watching the match between Izuko and Shoto with the Todorokis in his living room suddenly stood up and turned towards REI it's almost time. REI looked down for a second, she then turned towards Natsuo and Fuyamai who smiled at her and have her a nod of encouragement, so she sighed and then steeled herself I'm ready, let's go. Harry smiled at her and gave her a nod, he then waved a hand and opened a dark corridor, REI stared at it for a few seconds before nodding and walking through it, both Fuyamai and Natsuo followed soon after while Harry watched on. Harry then turned towards Mr. Goop and grinned at him I'll leave the TV on Mr. Goop, so keep an eye out on the house okay. Mr. Goop wobbled and nodded at Harry, the dragon god then smiled and walked through the dark corridor which dissipated soon after, leaving Mr. Goop by himself who turned around to watch the TV good luck REI slurp. The enormous storm of energy and green lightning finally calmed down and Shoto was able to let down his almost destroyed ice shield and looked at Izuko who was standing there glaring at him. Shoto was cold, he had overused his quirk and he could already feel his body suffering from hypothermia. He let out a breath and only white vapor came out of his mouth, Izuko scoffed even now you refuse to take this seriously. Do you think this is a joke? Do I look like I'm playing around with you? Shoto narrowed his eyes and frowned at Izuko I won't use his power. I will prove to him that I can win and be the best with only my mother's quirk. Izuka sighed and shook his head you're an idiot Todoroki. Shoto didn't appreciate Izuka's words and ran towards him but Izuka immediately noticed how slow and clumsy he was now moving. Shoto reached him and tried to punch Izuka but he blocked his fist and counterattacked with a jumping knee to Shoto's chin. The blow made Shoto's head whip back from the force but he recovered quickly and waved his hand at Izuka but only some ice and cold air launched itself at him. Izuka flicked the blast of ice and cold air away, his flick was still strong enough to send Shoto flying through the air and crashing on the ground, with a grunt of pain Shoto quickly got up ready for any attack coming his way by Izuka, but to his surprise Izuka just stood there and didn't move to attack him, instead, he looked up at the black sky and watched as green lightning began to flash and rumble in the black clouds, your attitude is really starting to annoy me, Shoto tired of listening to Izuka berate him yelled out and what do you care, what does it matter if I only use one half of my quirk. Izuka huffed and turned his gaze you half-assing this tournament is an insult to all of us who worked hard and trained like no tomorrow, everyone here is doing their very best and you just stand there and only use half of your power, how can you be a hero if you're not even going try to do your best? What are you going to do if you could save someone's life by using your fire? Are you just going to let that person die because you refuse to use your flames? Shoto flinched and tightened his fist in anger, he understands what Izuko is trying to tell him, he knows, but the hate he has for his father just doesn't allow him to use the other part of his quirk I won't use his quirk? I refuse to be like him. Play my hero academia oast go beyond. Shoto. The sudden scream stopped everything in the arena but the most surprised was Shoto who somehow recognized that voice he turned around and looked up at the stands. There standing beside Harry sensei was his mother waving at him. Shoto's eyes widened as he watched his mother smile at him. Izuka smiled and sighed he decided to let Shoto have this and thus he silently watched on. REI smiled at her son and then turned towards Harry who smiled at her and nodded, she took a big breath and then began to speak to her son, the words she has been wanting to say to him all this time and with Harry projecting her voice with magic she will make sure her son can hear her and so she spoke up Shoto, fight with everything you got, don't hold back anymore, you're not your father, you will never become him, I'm so sorry my actions made you think so, but I love you, and I know you can be a cool hero, so go and show the world who Shoto Todoroki is, I'm cheering for you, we all are. Fuyamai and Natsuo waved at Shoto and began to yell at him to give it his all, Shoto teared up and looked down for a second, Izuka saw tears fall down to the ground but didn't say anything. But then his eyes widened in surprise when the tears suddenly began to evaporate, he then turned to look at Shoto and watched as flames began to dance around one half of his body. Shoto looked up and roared as he activated both halves of his quirk and got ready to fight Izuka with everything he had but the soft small smile on his face showed how happy he was right now. REI teared up and smiled as she watched her son use his full power and then the public began to chant Shoto's name loudly which made the tears in REI's face finally begin to fall, Harry seeing this patted her head. REI turned to look at Harry and saw him smiling at her, she sniffed once and then wiped her tears away with her sleeve, she then turned and began to loudly cheer for her son with Fuyamai and Natsuo. Izuka smiled at Shoto that's better, I like that look in your eyes Todoroki, it looks like we can finally have a good fight but how about we decided this match with one last move. Shoto shook his head and softly chuckled your weird Midoriya, who would want to help his opponent. Don't think I didn't notice why you were saying all of that? Izuka chuckled ah, you caught me but, it's a hero's job to help those that need it right? All of us wanted to help you no matter how much of a butthole you can be at times. Shoto laughed out loud for the first time in a long time I see but I can't afford to lose now, my mother is here cheering for me and I can't let her see me losing. Izuka grinned and nodded I can't lose either if I do Harry sensei would only double my training and that's not something anyone wants. Plus my girlfriends would be disappointed if I don't move on to the next round. Pony and Okako blushed when everyone turned towards them, while Shoto nodded and smiled suddenly his quirk flared out in both fire and ice. Izuka nodded and activated one for all and suddenly the lightning rumbling and flashing in the black clouds began to rain down on Izuka who instead of being heard by the electricity he instead absorbed it. 
Shoto huffed and nodded to Izuku. All right, let's end this in one last move. It's all I have left in me right now anyways. Hey, ah. Shoto spread his arms wide open and fire and ice began to spread out of both sides of his body while the lightning around Izuku began to surge and take in the shape of a roaring dragon, Izuku crouched down and gritted his teeth as he began to gather as much energy from one for all as his body can handle I haven't mastered this technique yet, but I based it on one of Harry sensei teachers, the most powerful Tejutsu master in the world, burst. The dragon's head around Izuku's body roared and then Izuku took off running at high speed toward Shoto. Shoto pointed both of his hands toward Izuko and fired a blast of ice and fire towards the approaching Izuko who narrowed his eyes as the blast headed his way. Harry smiled at Izuku. This was a technique he didn't teach to Izuko but rather it was something he told him about when he was explaining to Izuko who was the man who taught him the strong fist style. Never in his life would he have guessed that Izuko would have sought to replicate the same technique that had made Madara Uchiha recognized Gai Sensei as the strongest Teijetsu master. Of course, Izuko's technique wasn't anywhere close to the level of Gai Sensei but it was impressive nonetheless. Izuku before the blast of ice and fire could reach him suddenly jumped and kicked as hard as he could with one for all activated night, fury. The dragon head around Izuku roared one more time and then launched itself forward clashing against Shoto's attack, the move itself surprised everyone, even Harry was surprised. As a matter of fact, Harry actually gaped. He shot it, he turned the night guy into a long range technique, ha 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 ha, wait until I tell Lee and Guy sensei about this, Shoto tried. He really did but the dragon head made out of energy and green lightning was too powerful for him. Still the smile on his face never left I will get stronger, just you wait Midoriya, next time I'll give you a match that you will remember for the rest of your life. And then Izuku's night fury broke through Shoto's fire and ice wave and engulfed Shoto's body. The technique picked up Shoto off his feet and dragged him back while he was screaming in pain until the technique and Shoto crashed against the barrier and exploded in a storm of lightning and energy. Izuku landed on the ground but immediately dropped to one knee and held one of his legs tch. I think I broke my leg again sight, looks like I still have a ways to go before I can use Night Fury safely. The lightning storm subsided and Shoto fell down to the ground in a heap and unconscious, Midnight now a little bit used to this level of craziness sighed and then cracked her whip the winner of the first match of the second round is Izuku Midoriya. The public exploded in excitement and cheers and Izuko sighed and smiled at everyone, suddenly Harry and Rei appeared in the arena, Harry lifted Shoto's body off the ground with telekinesis and brought him to Rei. As Rei began to fuss over Shoto Harry quickly healed him, he then turned towards Izuko and healed him as well well done Izuko, you surprised me with that last technique, that's very hard to do you know. Izuko smiled and nodded happily to get praise from his sensei, Harry then patted his head and spoke now go with your girlfriends, I'm sure they want to congratulate you. Izuku blushed but nodded and then disappeared in a blur causing Rei to giggle at him, Harry then began to walk with Shoto's unconscious body floating behind him let's go Rei, let's take Shoto to the infirmary so he can rest, you can speak to him when he wakes up. Rei nodded and then rushed to catch up to Harry and walked by his side thank you, Harry, all of this helped Shoto. Harry shook his head all I did is allow a mother to cheer for her son and remind him of his dream. Rei giggled but then smiled at Harry thankful for the way Harry is with people. Hisashi nodded what a match everyone? A mother's love and support can certainly become a powerful motivator and Shoto Todoroki is a good example of this. Shoto nodded that last clash was stunning and showed how powerful the next generations of heroes are, better watch out villains, these are the future heroes you'll be facing someday. That was a clear message to every evildoer in the world and even all for one was beginning to get a bit nervous watching the power and skill these heroes in training possess. Chapter 80, Chapter 80 Shoto woke up and was immediately surprised that he wasn't feeling any pain, the last thing he remembers is Midoriya blasting his fire and ice blast away with a massive dragon head made of green lightning and energy plus lots of pain before he passed out. He tiredly sighed, Midoriya's last attack was the most amazing thing he had ever seen and he can quite honestly say that he didn't mind his loss against such impressive technique but his fight still left a bitter taste in his mouth. Shoto then looked around only for his eyes to widen when he caught sight of his mother sitting by his bead and speaking with Harry sensei he stared at her in disbelief for a few seconds. His mother must have felt him staring at her because Rei turned her head towards him and gave him a soft smile, Shoto then spoke unsure if he was still unconscious and dreaming or something like that mom. Rei nodded and then caress her son's face Shoto, you fought so valiantly, I'm very proud of you. Shoto held back a sob and desperately tried not to cry but Rei noticed and then hugged her son, it was at this moment that everything Shoto tried so hard to hold back came rushing out and he began to silently cry I'm sorry mom. But Rei shook her head and began to cry as well no, it's me who should apologize to you Shoto, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry for not being there, for not protecting you and I'm so sorry for what I did to you. Shoto just held his mother tighter as he silently continued to cry it wasn't your fault mom, stop apologizing so much. But Rei just continued to apologize, Harry and recovery girl who were present through this just smiled, both of them turned their head toward each other and then turned around. Both of them walked out of the infirmary and closed the door behind them, these two poor souls needed some space to talk, something both Harry and recovery girl were more than happy to provide. Once outside recovery left to make herself some tea while Harry teleported himself back to his seat in the stadium. 
Fuyamai was holding Eri in her arms like a stuffed animal and was happily talking to her while they watched the second match of the second round of the tournament. Eri had immediately stolen Fuyamai's heart from the moment the bundle of cuteness walked up to her and told her that she had pretty hair and from that moment on, Fuyamai held on to Eri and refused to let go. Natsuo was having fun watching Luna make all sorts of gummy candy march up to her mouth, the fact that she was doing it with magic just further impressed him. Susan and Hermione were watching Toro beat poor Ida around who was doing his best to dodge her light-based attacks but the glasses-wearing student wasn't able to move fast enough to dodge them. Himiko had gone to the bathroom since she had drank too much soda from her giant cup, it was here that Harry returned and everyone turned towards him. Harry waved at them and Fuyamai didn't waste any time asking about her mother and little brother Harry, how are mom and Shoto? Harry sat down next to Luna and smiled at Fuyamai Shoto is fine, I healed him completely so don't worry, and right now, he and Rei are reconnecting again so I gave them some privacy. Fuyamai nodded and Eri turned towards Harry daddy. Can you make sacred screws? Harry raised an eyebrow while Luna giggled she means sacred gears. Harry chuckled ah, I see, as a matter of fact, I already created one, or rather I helped create one. Eri smiled widely and cheered, while Susan and Hermione turned to look at him, Fuyamai tilted her head in confusion not knowing what they were talking about but still found it interesting. Luna hummed so you can make sacred gears, I wasn't sure but Eri asked and that made me wonder, what did you make? Harry smiled the mecha the boys and I are making is a sort of sacred gear or rather it will act as one once it's complete, it will merge with the soul of its wielder, grow and it will also evolve according to its wielder since the first one we're making is a prototype it will merge with me first and we will see how it grows then we will use it as a base to create a few more. Hermione gaped while Luna nodded that sounds cool, I'm not surprised though that mecha was created with some of the smartest people in the multiverse, I can't wait to see how it looks once it merges with you. Harry smiled while Eri looked excited, she didn't know what a mecha is but if her daddy helped make it, it must be amazing. Hermione however shook her head wait, 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 that thing you guys are making in the basement is a sacred gear. Harry nodded yes and a marvel of all kinds of technological and magical arts, why? Hermione took a big breath and then slowly began to speak Harry. That giant robot in the basement is a sacred gear. A magical divine object known to give humans power, power that can rival supernatural beings and what's worse. They possess a balance breaker, a technique so broken and powerful that some of them are known to be able to kill gods and you built a new one in our basement? Why? Harry smiled and patted Hermione's head who blushed a bit but still looked rather anxious we didn't want to just build any old mecha, we wanted it to be able to grow and evolve, at first, we were thinking about adding an AI but that could potentially be dangerous, then we thought about giving it a spirit like a Zenpakuto but the spirit might limit the mecha's growth out of spite or because the spirit isn't compatible with its wielder so we all got together and thought about how to go about allowing the mecha to be able to update itself. Hermione listened intently, she still wasn't okay with a massive mecha capable of killing gods being built in the basement of their home but she understood what Harry and the boys were thinking. Harry went on after thinking about it for a while we decided that the system built within the sacred gears would work the best and lucky for us I had a few sacred gear in my inventory that we could research to see how to add it to the mecha, took a while but Kisuk and I were able to find out that god used a very advanced form of soul magic which I was able to replicate and then we added the sacred gear system to the mecha, of course, I made sure that it wouldn't be added in god's system, it. Wouldn't be good for anyone if whatever we end up building ended up in the hands of a random human by mistake. Hermione sighed and then nodded all right, at least the boys and you are being careful, just try not to make more crazy things Harry. Harry chuckled sorry I can't promise you that Hermione, you know me, I like to mess around with things. Hermione groaned while Susan and Luna giggled at her in amusement, Harry grinned and gave her a small peck on her lips which made her smile, Harry looked very happy while Fuyamai just smiled watching the small show of affection. Natsuo however was very excited and his eyes were sparkling you're building a mecha? I want one. Fuyamai smiled at her brother and shook her head men and their toys. Luna, Susan, and Hermione nodded in agreement while Harry gave Natsuo a thumbs up which Natsuo returned. Himiko came back and looked at the ring, she was on time to see Toru blast Ida out of the ring with a massive orb of light that sent the glasses wearing boy flying through the air and smoking from Toru's intense light. Himiko flinched when she saw Ida land in a heap and bounce once on the ground before coming to a stop unconscious from the blast and impact ouch, he's going to be feeling that tomorrow. Everyone nodded and watched as Midnight announced Toro as the winner of the second match, Toro waved at the public as she walked away. Harry smiled at his student in pride they all have grown a lot, even Izuka has two girlfriends now, even I didn't see that coming. Everyone except Fuyamai and Natsuo laughed, though the two Todoroki siblings smiled watching this family laughing together, Fuyamai stared and thought how fun it would be to join in. A few minutes later in the participants waiting room, Izuko was sitting between Okako and Pony who were happily holding both of his hands, the poor boy was blushing so hard that his face was literally glowing red, suddenly he got a text, letting go of Pony's hand who pouted at him he checked the text only to gulp when he saw it was from his mother, nervously he opened it and gaped when he saw the short and simple text his mother had sent bring your girlfriends for dinner soon Izuko, I want to meet them dash, Izuko then sighed, he was sure his mother was going to make a big deal out of his relationship with Okako and Pony but he couldn't refuse her, so with a smile, he responded with a simple okay and put the phone away, Pony immediately grabbed his hand again. 
He smiled at her but then from the corner of his eyes he saw Ida who was healed immediately by recovery girl and given an apple gel and then sent into the waiting room take out his phone and walked out of the waiting room talking with someone. A few minutes later he came back and looked rather worried and angry for some reason. Izuku looked at his friend in worry and wondered what had happened but decided to leave him be. But looking around a bit he saw that all of his fellow trainees had noticed Ida's change of mood and all of them worried for him. At the same time, hiding in a dark alley stood a dark figure, this person was maliciously smiling, and in his hand was a jagged katana dripping blood on the floor while this mysterious individual began to walk away and then disappeared into the darkness of the alley. Siren and the sounds of heroes running around everywhere could be heard but no one saw or even heard the mysterious individual leave. Meanwhile back in the stadium midnight cracked her whip bringing everyone's attention Toru Hegakure moves on to the next round, and next we have the third match between the goddess of creation Momo Yeorizu versus the acidic dancer Mina Ashido. Hizashi and Shota watched the girls come out of the tunnels on each side of the ring, Hizashi then began to speak well ladies and gentlemen we have already watched these two girls fight and it was amazing. I can't wait to see more. Shota then spoke up yes? In their previous matches, these two girls showed us their skill and ability to surprise their opponents, as we know these two are students of Harry Potter so this promised to be a very exciting match. Both girls stepped up to the ring and cheerfully waved at the public until they reached the middle of the ring, Mina grinned at Momo hey yo Momo, you're not going to shoot me right. Momo sweetly smiled of course I am, with lots and lots of bullets, and explosives, it will be fun. Mina just continued to smile while everyone in the stadium sweat dropped and gaped at the way Momo just casually threatened Mina. Mina couldn't help but giggle sounds like a fun time, then show me what you can do yeo Momo. Momo nodded and seeing that they were ready midnight loudly cracked her whip and loudly said begin. Mina immediately launched a wave of acid towards Momo who in response waved an arm and created a wall of metal that blocked the acid and hit her from Mina's sight. Mina raised an eyebrow when she saw that her acid didn't melt the metal and frowned what? What kind of metal is that? I used my strongest acid. However she was snapped out of her thoughts when Momo suddenly threw a bunch of grenades over her wall of metal, Mina's eyes widen in surprise, and she then skated herself away to dodge and watched as the grenades exploded and froze everything around them. Mina sweat dropped really? Did you just throw cryo grenades at me yeo Momo? Are you crazy? That would have killed me, dot. Momo, however, threw more grenades over the wall which forced Mina to dodge as fast as she could, Momo suddenly spoke up from behind her metal wall don't worry Mina, Harry sensei can fix everything trust me I know. Mina sweat dropped just what did Harry sensei do to you that first day yeo Momo, he can't fix what's dead. Momo however just giggled and continued to throw grenades over her metal wall while Mina desperately tried to dodge the explosions, getting tired of being on the defensive she breathed out a massive cloud of purple poisonous smoke that covered the entire ring. Mina grinned thinking she got Momo but suddenly Momo appeared in front of her on her feet were the booster greaves she had on during the first event of the sports festival which explained the unexpected burst of speed, Mina growled and tried to jump back to avoid Momo's attack who now had a taser on her hand, she noticed that Momo also had a respirator mask on her face as well tch, so that's what you were doing behind that wall, but as Mina stepped back she slid on the frozen floor and fell on her bat, Momo who was already on her took advantage of this opening and jabbed the taser onto Mina's chest kyaaaaaaa. Mina screamed in pain as she was shocked by 50,000 volts of electricity but she gritted her teeth and somehow managed to kick Momo away hard enough to send her flying. Momo flipped her body in midair while creating something with her quirk, Mina noticed this and struggled to create a wall of acid, she barely made it in time as Momo pointed a machine gun at her and began to shoot her. Lucky the acid was strong and viscous enough to stop and melt the bullets almost instantly, Mina frowned at being cornered like this, she slowly stood up and sighed when she recovered from the shock she got from Momo boy I'm glad for Harry sensei's blessing, otherwise I would have probably been turned into Swiss cheese. Momo seeing as her machine gun wasn't working jumped back and waved an arm towards Mina, a bunch of kunao with explosive tags flew and hit right in front of Mina's acid barrier, Mina recognized them since Harry sensei liked to use them against them ah, uh, shit, dot. The explosive tags exploded and sent Mina flying back screaming in pain while the purple poison cloud in the arena was blown away, Momo then created a whip and rushed forward to catch up to Mina, Midnight's eyes sparkled and grinned at the fact that someone else knew how to use a whip too. Hermione tilted her head and spoke up huh, how can Momo create explosive tags, doesn't she need to know Funjutsu first? Harry nodded she took an interest in it when she saw me use it while we created her new uniform and I taught her, it is actually a great skill for her to have since she can put away anything she creates for later use, in fact, she has a few seals tattooed to her wrists though she did say that her mom almost had a heart attack when she saw them. Hermione shook her head I feel bad for Momo's mom, her once sweet and diligent daughter is becoming a delinquent because her teacher is a bad influence. Harry gasped and dramatically held his chest in pain how can you say that my own, I'm not a bad influence. Hermione just rolled her eyes but smiled whatever helps you sleep at night Harry. Harry grinned at her and Susan then spoke how good is she in Funjutsu? I've seen you do some crazy stuff with it so I know it's a very useful skill. Harry nodded she's a beginner but with the way she absorbs everything I teach her she might become a master soon. Honestly it's almost as if she was an Uzumaki and that's terrifying. The fact that she can create the paper, ink, and seals within seconds with her quirk is scary enough. 
Luna, Hermione, and Susan nodded in understanding knowing how Funjutsu could be a very powerful art, especially since its only limit is a person's imagination. Momo swung her whip and wrapped it around Mina's ankle while she was flying through the air and then swung her around to slam her into the ground, the air in Mina's lungs was pushed out from her from the impact act. Dazed and in pain Mina couldn't avoid Momo's next attack, Momo ran towards where Mina was laying on the ground and groaning in pain, she then slammed her hand right on top of Mina's abdomen Funjutsu, paralysis seal jutsu. Mina's body tensed up as ink began to spread out of Momo's hand and take the form of an intricate seal, Mina then felt her muscles cramp up as she screamed in pain once again Kaiaaaa. Unable to move and in pain Mina couldn't do anything other than watch Momo send a kick to her head and then she only saw darkness. Midnight cracked her whip loudly and then said and the winner by knockout? The goddess of creation Momo Yeo Ruzo. This time everyone was better prepared for Momo's brutality and so the public immediately exploded in cheer as Momo sat on her knees, sighed and frowned I'm so hungry now, I created too many things at once. Hizashi loudly began to announce another display of merciless brutality from Yeo Ruzo. She didn't even let Ashido do much, and had her on the defensive for most of the match. Shoda nodded indeed the turning point of this match was when Yeo Ruzo created that respirator mask successfully nullifying Mina's second ability, it seems that revealing her new ability early in the tournament backfired on her. Hizashi nodded true. Also that metal that Yeo Ruzo created was strong enough to not melt under Ashido's acid quirk. I wonder what kind of metal is that? I've seen her acid melt steel quite easily. Shoda grunted who knows? Having a teacher like Harry Potter gives her access to all sorts of materials and information, more than likely it's a metal compound only known to him, in any case, Ashido's attempts were good but her opponent had already prepared for her ahead of time though she did good fighting back as much as she did. Momo began to make everything she created disintegrate when Harry appeared in the ring and walked up to Mina, he got on one knee and saw the big purple bruise on her cheek from Momo's kick air, that looks like a nasty injury. Momo having walked over tilted her head and then suddenly jumped in surprise ah, I forgot I had the booster boots on when I kicked Mina in the face. Harry sweat dropped and then silently healed Mina somehow I feel like I should apologize to Mina later. Harry then stood up and then picked Mina's unconscious body off the ground with telekinesis come on yeo Momo, the infirmary is busy right now so let's take her to the waiting room and let her rest. Momo nodded, and both she and Harry began to walk to the tunnel suddenly Momo decided to ask Harry something sensei by any chance do you have any food with you? Harry nodded and to the shock of everyone watching them walk to the tunnel leading to the waiting room, Harry took out a massive cheeseburger out of his pocket and then a big cup of soda and gave them to Momo who brightly smiled and took them. She began to eat and squealed in joy at how tasty it is while Harry just smiled at her and patted her head while she ate and walked, soon both of them disappeared into the tunnel. Midnight sweat dropped having watched all of that happen but recovered quickly and cracked her whip loudly the next match will begin in 5 minutes. Meanwhile, while everyone was enjoying the 5 minutes break Harry was already back in the stands with his family and friends this time however both REI and Shoto had joined everyone. Though Shoto felt a bit awkward at first but watching his mom smile and have fun while talking to Harry sensei and his girlfriends put his mind at ease, the fact that Natsuo and Fuyamai were also here made things better. However, Eri stared at Shoto with a small frown on her face, at first he thought that perhaps Eri didn't like him but the sadness in her eyes let him know that wasn't the case. Eri continued to stare at Shoto until she wiggled her way out of Fuyamai's arms and walked up to him, she then reached up to his face and gently rubbed his scar. This surprised Shoto but he silently watched her, Rei sadly looked down feeling ashamed of the mark she had left on her son's face, Luna saw that and grabbed her hand to support her, Harry gently patted her back knowing that she must be feeling horrible at the reminder of her mental breakdown. Both Fuyamai and Natsuo sadly watched as well unsure if they should say anything, while Eri suddenly spoke does it hurt. Shoto shook his head no not anymore. He turned his gaze towards her mother and smiled at her when she looked up to him, letting her know that he didn't hate her for it. Rei teared up a bit while Eri nodded I had a lot of scars, they hurt all the time but daddy healed them and made them go away, do you want yours to go away too? Shoto raised an eyebrow, he was aware of Eri's circumstances since he had heard Izuko and his friends speak about her having a hard life before living with Harry. Shoto looked down and thought about it. At first, he kept the scar as a reminder, as a way to make his father know how much he hated him but now, his father is in jail and his mother was back in his life, he no longer needs to keep this painful reminder of his hate and sadness anymore. Yeah, I don't need this scar anymore. Eri smiled while everyone watched as a small smile appeared on Shoto's face, Eri's little horn grew and began to glow as she used her quirk to get rid of his scar. This surprised Harry, Luna, Susan, Himiko, and Hermione. Eri has always been afraid of her quirk and even though she now has full control of it thanks to Harry's perks and blessings she was still very reluctant to use it until now that is. Harry stared at his daughter and then smiled she must have felt bad for Shoto, her having once had painful scars understood and empathized with Shoto, it seems like that was the push she needed to get rid of her fears. Soon Eri's horn stopped glowing and shrunk down, she pulled back her little hand and Rei, Natsuo, and Fuyamai stared at the now clear face of Shoto, his red scar was completely gone. Shoto raised a hand and tenderly touched the spot where he once had the rough skin of his scar and felt only smoothness, he then looked down at Eri who was smiling at him thank you. Eri nodded at him, happy to have been able to help someone just like she had been helped to, she then walked up back to Fuyamai and raised her hands at her letting her know to pick her up, 
Puyamai overcome by the cuteness immediately picked Ari up and held her against her chest like a stuffed animal again. Everyone smiled at how content the both of them looked right now. Rei turned towards Ari thank you, sweetie. Ari smiled and nodded you're very welcome Rei mama. Rei blushed and began to sputter while Fuyamai squealed yes. I finally have a little sister, boys are stinky, you and I are going to have a lot of fun together Ari we're going to go shopping, try on clothes, eat lots of ice cream. Ari cheered while Shoto and Natsuo deadpanned at their sisters, Natsuo then spoke up to Shoto hey little brother. Shoto turned towards Natsuo and tilted his head while Natsuo went on I somehow feel underappreciated all of the sudden. Shoto nodded in agreement while Harry chuckled at them and Luna and Susan were trying to help a panicking Rei calm down. Himiko was just laughing at the chaos that Eri accidentally brought, her new family was always a lot of fun to be around. Shoto then hummed which brought the attention of everyone if Eri is my new sister, is Harry my new dad. Natsuo began to rub his chin while he thought about it while Rei was sputtering once again well, anyone would be way better than Endeavor and Harry is a cool dragon god. So yeah, that sounds like fun. Natsuo nodded to himself and smiled that doesn't sound bad at all, right Fuyamai. Fuyamai who was grinning at her blushing mother who was looking at her with pleading eyes said Fuyamai Potter. Hmm I like how that sounds. Eri cheered while Rei got too embarrassed and began to create a snowstorm around her which just made everyone find it even more funny. Harry chuckled and shook his head, he then patted Rei's head which caused the small snowstorm stop. Rei looked up at Harry with a bright red blush on her cheeks but Harry just smiled at her which made her relax while everyone smiled at her. Niza who was anxiously waiting for the next match to begin suddenly got a phone call and immediately answered it. Both All Might and Nana who were sitting with him noticed right away how Niza's mood changed as they watched the principle of you. A frown I see. I think I can help him recover or rather I know of someone who can make sure he can continue to work as a hero, I'll ask him and let you know, keep me informed. Niza hung up and then looked down with a frown on his face, All Might worried for his old friend decide to ask what's wrong Nizu. Niza turned towards All Might and sighed Tensei Ida known as Ingenium was attacked by the hero killer and crippled. I was just informed of his condition. All Might frowned the hero killer is in the city. Niza nodded while Nana sighed we're going to have to keep an eye on Tinya Ida, he might do something reckless. Niza shook his head yes I agree, I'm thinking of asking Harry to help Tensei recover, hopefully, he will agree. Both All Might and Nana nodded, Nana then spoke I think he will, Harry is a nice guy after all. Well as long as you don't piss him off that is. Niza and All Might chuckled, Niza then stood up I'm going to go and make a few phone calls, we have to let everyone one know that the hero killer is in town, I want everyone prepared and ready to take him down. With that said Niza walked out of his booth and went to his office to make a few phone calls, inwardly he was very worried, the hero killer had been attacking and killing heroes for a long while and no one has been able to catch him yet. Meanwhile back to the ring Midnight stood up and cracked her whip loudly and then began to announce the next match is about to begin. We have the Maiden of Water Tsuyu Ajui versus the Master of Gravity Okako Yurika. Both girls immediately walked out of the tunnels on each opposite side of the ring while waving at the public who as always were loudly cheering for the girls. Hisashi then began to announce these two girls have already amazed us with their skills and abilities, we have the powerhouse Yuruka whose quirk has been shown to be able to cause enormous amounts of destruction. For such a cute girl she can be very scary, I feel sorry for Midoriya, Shoda nodded indeed. Ajui has also shown us that water can be dangerous, her skill with manipulating this element and even being able to turn into water herself shows the amount of skill and dedication she has for mastering her abilities. Hazashi then continued from there that's right, this is going to be a fight between two forces of nature, who will win? Water or gravity? Tsuyu and Okako met each other in the middle of the ring. Tsuyu tilted her head and put her pointer finger below her lower lip so Pony beat you to the punch. Huh Okako? Kuro. Okako flinched but nodded air. Well yes she did. She caught me by surprise with her confession but at least it helped Deko and us get together. Tsuyu nodded hmm we were all wondering when it would happen Kuro, but Pony caught everyone by surprise Kuro. Okako got nervous and began to fidget what do you mean by all? Tsuyu tilted her head we all knew you have a crush on Izuku. Okako blushed deep red eh? Everyone knew. Yes. Poor Okako jumped in fright when the teachers, the students of 1A and even Harry plus his family suddenly screamed yes at her at full volume, Okako then just stood there blushing. Tsuyu giggled and shook her head Izuku was the only one who didn't know but he's as dense as Osmium so we can forgive him for that Kuro. Izuku sweat dropped and slumped I'm embarrassment at being roasted by Tsuyu, while Pony giggled and gently patted his back. The rest of his fellow trainees just grinned at him in amusement since they knew about their crush on each other, thank goodness Pony pushed things forward otherwise it would have taken forever for these two to get together. Okako coughed in order to regain her composure and then sighed getting rid of her blush, she then stared into Tsuyu's eyes so you can turn into water huh? That's new. Tsuyu nodded I found that I can do that by mistake but it is fun. Okako smiled at her friend and nodded, Tsuyu nodded back, and then both of them got ready to battle. Midnight seeing as they were done speaking cracked her whip loudly and announced let the final match of the second round of this year's sports festival begin. Okako pointed her open palm towards Tsuyu, but the frog girl shot out her tongue at high speed forcing Okako to dodge since she was interrupted from using her power. Tsuyu immediately engulfed herself in water and launched herself towards Okako, the gravity manipulator narrowed her eyes at Tsuyu and then took off flying towards the sky. 
But Tsui waved her arms towards Okako and shot out a multitude of water bullets towards her. Okako easily dodged them all but then was caught by the ankle by Tsuyu's tongue and was pulled down so hard and fast she didn't have time for anything but scream off. While Tsuyu pulled her tongue she clapped her hands together and the water around her formed a bunch of tentacles and as soon as Okako got close all of them lashed out and whipped her around for a bit until she suddenly gritted her teeth and used her control over repulsive force to destroy the water tentacles and sent Tsuyu flying back. Tsuyu just landed softly on the ground and engulfed herself in water again and stared at Okako who was glaring at her for the thrashing she just got this won't be easy Kuro.